Yes, good morning guys to all of you. Please tell me am I properly audible and visible to all of you or not? And I welcome you all on this wonderful platform that is Baiju's exam prep. And today is a very very special class because today is the complete marathon of theory of machines. You know it is the second highest weighted subject. Tom plus vibration together come for 19 to 12 marks. Okay. And it takes half the time of production. So in that way it is going to be specifically of more marks. Yes, Kalyan, hi dear, Admira, good morning, Jabir, uh, hello, exam crack, hello, Amir, good morning, Jobin, good morning, Raghu, hi, Shashank, good morning, yes, please tell me, am I properly audible, properly visible, yes, Teju, uh, great, 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 Both badia, wonderful, 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 Ha, bilkul, 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 don't worry, slide ka color change kar dete hai. So this is some detail about me. So I feel uh, Kiran sir, this class you know, for first time. Yes, dear, you would be able to understand. Good morning, Shubham. SK, good morning. Okay. So guys, uh, there is a workshop on 15th of January. If any of you is preparing for gate 2024 at 12.30 p.m., this workshop is there on 15th of January. On 7th, success mantra from a beginner to be a topper in gate 24. It would be taken by Abhinav Negi sir. Okay. Bhomi, good morning. Venka Deshan, good morning. Ramesh Mohan, hi dear. So guys, just like and share the session. Uh, you can also appear for the scholarship test on 8th January at 12 p.m. You can get up to 90% scholarship for GATE and ESC 24 preparation programs. Aptitude session would be coming on YouTube soon by Rakesh Tadeja sir. 15 marks in 15 hours. So be ready for that. We have planned a lot for you. Shreyas, good morning. Bhomik, good morning. And then also uh, for mathematics, Rakesh sir and Ankit sir together would be coming for complete mathematics in two days. Okay. So you guys were asking sir, what is the plan of maths and apt? So I have told you the plan for maths and apt. So now are you ready guys? Shall we start Tom? Yes, Ajay, good morning. So quickly like and share the session guys. I want more and more student to live join today. Yes, Ajruddin, good morning bhai. Yes. So guys, now we are starting the session theory of machines and I would like to tell you first of all rule of the game. We are going to complete the theory of machines today except vibration part. Okay, because for, for vibration we have kept a separate session. Otherwise, you know vibration is a high weightage topic. So I don't want it to complete in less time. There we will give proper time with proper practice because six marks, four marks. That is the general weightage of vibrations. Okay. Okay. So my voice is low. Is it fine for everyone or not? Please tell me. Yes, Malesh, Ganesh, hi dear. Both badia. So guys, it is going to be a good revision for everyone. So we are starting the session. Please tell me voice is found fine or not. Great, 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 great. Okay. So let me check it. Uh, why voice is low? Hello, hello, hello. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. Is it clear, guys? Let me once again check it. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, hello, hello. Fine, 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 fine. So guys, now we are starting the session. Let us start. So guys, we are starting with the very first chapter, which you know is simple mechanism. Okay. The very first chapter is simple mechanism. And you know, simple mechanism is very, very important topic because every year one question is coming from simple mechanism. Every year one question. So now we are going to prepare for that one question that is nothing but it is coming for minimum two marks and, uh, and it may go up to three marks also. Yes. So now we are starting the session guys. So when we are talking about simple mechanism, the first thing is coming with the definition of kinematic link or element. So when we are talking about kinematic link or element, it is the basic part of a mechanism or a machine. And my dear, when we are talking about a basic part of a mechanism or a machine, but Every part like lathe bed is a part, like 
chuck is a part there are many parts in a machine so my dear what is the definition why when any part would be said to be a machine so that it should have it must have some kind of relative motion with respect to the other parts so my dear the first qualification to be a kinematic link is the relative motion so my dear when we say relative motion you must be aware that relative motion and absolute motion are two different things like if i am going to move if i am going to move with the velocity of 10 meter per second and you are at rest then according to you i am moving with 10 meter per second this is absolute motion because you are at rest you are looking at me manas good morning prince good morning but my dear if i if i am looking at you in reality you are at rest but according to me you will be in a motion in the opposite direction with the same velocity so whatever i am going to see because i am in motion i will not be able to see your absolute velocity whatever i will see is the relative motion so my dear yes if any part of a machine is having relative motion with respect to some other part we will be calling it as a kinematic link or element like if you say the lathe bed it is going to be stationary that's why machine is stable at one place chuck would be rotating many parts are moving but lathe bed is at rest but if you will see that lathe bed from the chuck you will feel that is also moving so lathe bed which is a fixed one can also be treated as a kinematic link or element yes jyoti prakash good morning dear so that is why is it clear thanks thanks friends for your wonderful words so guys one more thing generally students are getting confused with the word rigidity so i would like to say a kinematic link may or may not be rigid but it must be a resistant body so when we say it may or may not be rigid it must be resistant so there are two words which i am saying one is rigid other is resistant these are the words having different meanings so when we say rigid it means yes uh advaita good morning aditya good morning thanks dear for joining so guys when we are talking about rigid and resistant rigid means on application of forces if deformation is zero such body is said to be the rigid body and when we are saying resistant resistance means a body which is going to show some kind of resistance means what do you mean by resistant if you want to understand i would like to say let, let us say let us say let us say if we have a four bar mechanism i am going to apply some force or torque here i am going to give rotation to this then my dear if if this link if this link is able to transfer this motion here then we will be calling that this body is a resistant body so resistant means should be able to transfer the motion if you remember in the classes whenever i was teaching you this from basic on youtube also i was telling you so so kind of story there are three student but this is marathon so here i will not be repeating those stories because we need to save time as well so we would be going with a quick revision without stories otherwise stories will take a lot of time yes or no everybody is fine midun good morning dear how are you so guys when we are talking about this rigid it should not be it may be it may not be but resistant is the must because if resistant would not be there it would not be able to transmit the motion and machine means motion only so if it is not able to transmit the motion why we will be calling it machine yes vs kumar and a good morning dear so we are moving further we have seen the definition of kinematic link now my dear links are of three types one is said to be rigid link other is said to be flexible link third is said to be fluid link guys you will be getting the pdf of this session which would be acting like a short notes for you you would be getting this after the end of the two days session on my telegram channel you can see everything is shown by the diagrams you can just quickly understand what i want to say from the diagrams only so when we are talking about the rigid link they are the link for which they are the link for which deformation they are the link for which deformation is near to zero why i am saying near to zero because in this universe there is no body which is perfectly rigid so we would be saying deformation is nearly zero or very very less or negligible such links are said to be the rigid link the example for that is this slider example for that is the slider example for that is connecting rod example for that is crank example for that is cylinder 
so my dear all these kind of links are coming under the category of rigid link so my dear now we are moving about the flexible link so my dear these are the link for which deformation are there deformation are not zero they are there but they are in the permissible range permissible range means they would be there in 3 mm 5 mm 7 mm 9 mm like that it is not going to be uh, beyond that okay so it would be there the example for this is belt drive okay you know whenever you have belt drive one side is said to be the tight other side is said to be the slack so whenever you are going to give motion to the driver link then my dear first of all first of all okay 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 teju so first of all my dear what happened first of all what happened it is clear guys green is clear so first of all what happened first of all the first of all the slack side is becoming tight and after that it is given it is able to giving the motion it is transferring motion good morning umar welcome to the session so guys this is how the flexible links are working so flexible link are going to transfer the motion they are becoming resistant after some deformation so that is why they are coming under the category of flexible link then we are talking about the fluid link so my dear because of their property pressure because of their property pressure sometimes fluids can also act like a link so because of its property pressure sometimes fluid can also act like a link okay like here if you are going to give any force there any force there then my dear here that would be transferred because of pressure you know that at one at one section the pressure is going to be same and because of that we are even able to we are even able to lift the heavy heavy cars the heavy heavy cars or vehicle just by applying a small force why because you know force is pressure into area so if we are going to do some pressure here the same pressure would be present here but here area is less here area is more so because of that you would be able to create more forces so here motion is getting transferred in this way so we are calling the fluid which is capable of transferring the motion is acting like a link so this is the application of fluid link can you give some application of the fluid link guys very good bahut badhiya already maine pucha usse pehle aap logo ne de diya very good so guys the application for this is hydraulic brake hydraulic jack hydraulic ram hydraulic intensifier and guys i would like to say hydraulic turbine is not coming in this application list very good very good ragu so guys i would like to say today is going to be a very good revision for all of you because you have you are going to revise with me so everything would be covered in a nice manner and we will try to make you perfect in term today only okay wherever you find difficulty please ask me then my dear we are talking about the types of relative motion so my dear types of relative motion you already know for any kinematic link the first condition is relative motion the first condition is the relative motion and second condition was first condition was relative motion and second condition was the body should be resistant okay so when we are saying the relative motion and resistant these two are the important condition so now we will talk about those relative motion here you can see there are three types of relative motion one is one is one is one is yes 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 kalyan so one is completely constant motion second is successfully third is incompletely many student would be remembering the examples or the stories given by me at that instant today you will miss the story because we need to complete it in a nice manner okay so when we are talking about in these three types you can see there is a word coming every time that is constraint 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 so my dear whenever we are going to talk about constraint what is the meaning of constraint so constraint means constraint means restricted constraint means restricted so constraint motion is nothing but the restricted motion okay definitely 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 i will take it okay sure 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 guys great so guys when i am saying constraint means restricted so if you remember whenever we are going to have a desired output then we need to restrict our inputs like if you want to score good in gate if you want to get good rank in gate you are been restricted from various areas like 
today you are watching this tom lecture no you are not watching the shorts on the youtube you are not going to watch tv much to save your time you have restricted yourself to go for the movies so guys based on those restriction you are going to constrain your motion towards gate towards iit towards psus so my dear if we want a desired output we need to control over the inputs okay because output will be depending on the inputs so that is what is the meaning of constraint so guys now one by one we will see all the three types of motion very good dear fazal we will cover everything don't worry utkarsh good morning so first of all we are talking about completely constrained motion so my dear when we are saying completely constrained motion we will say the motion is becoming constrained because of the configuration of the system you must be knowing there are some peoples who don't even like to go for anything they just like to study there are some students to them we are keeping the spe special name also like in the three idiot movie you would be knowing a character everybody remember that what was the name of that character system configuration is not allowing to do anything else if you have made your target gate you are just going to study study and study even you are not having any mood to go for cricket to go for movie to go for match anything yes so i feel chatur very good chatur was the name of that person so that person's system was configured like that it was going to art study so guys if your motion is constrained in such a way that there there is no possibility of other type of motion then we will call it as completely constrained motion like you can say there is a road which is having square cross section so if you are going to have a square cross section road a square cross section road in a square hole then my dear a square shaft in a square hole cannot rotate it can only reciprocate so my dear only one possibility is there it can reciprocate no other possibility so we will be calling it as completely constrained motion yes great then my dear one more example for completely constrained motion is you can have a circular shaft but on this circular shaft if we are going to have some collars like this this is one collar this is another collar so my dear collar is just a welded part like if this is the shaft i am going to weld something on this this is collar weld something on this this is collar now my dear if we are going to have this shaft in a hole like this in a hole like this then my dear because of this collar this reciprocation is not possible because this collar will not allow much reciprocations but my dear this time you can rotate this shaft this time rotation is possible reciprocation is restricted and this is restricted not by us this is restricted by this is not restricted by us this is res restricted by by whom by the system configuration because collar are not allowing it and collar are the part of the system so we will call it as completely constrained motion yes very good ajay second is successfully constrained motion so when we are talking about successfully constrained motion here some external forces will not be allowing here some external forces will not be allowing the other motions we need sir definition repeat kar do na ek bar okay so my dear if system is becoming con sorry if motion is constrained due to system configuration we will call it completely constrained motion so the reason for that constraint is nothing but what system configuration even i am writing okay so if system configuration is the reason okay so we need i feel today you can get those notes for which you are asking okay system configuration is not allowing any other type of motion we will be calling it as completely constrained motion now my dear this time motion would be made constrained not by the system but by external loads like in our case when we were we were going for playing cricket watching television then our parents were coming for an emotional emotional you can say atyachar hota tha ek ki beta we are doing that much for you we are doing this much for you then by understanding listening to all this you were leaving the television leaving the cricket and start studying because of that you were able to reach to some good college okay so this is our case like we were having other things our system was not configured for study but forcefully we are made to study okay yes 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 uh, so guys for this the example is 
for successfully constrained motion is my dear first of all first of all for that i will give you an example of foot step bearing like like many students are writing also here foot step bearing yes emotional blackmail you can say so you can see this shaft inside the bearing can rotate like this can reciprocate like this but by applying this force reciprocation is restricted so my dear now you can only it can only rotate so my dear because of that this is successfully constrained motion okay then my dear the second example for this is if you are going to have a cylinder piston and connecting rod is attached piston in cylinder can rotate and can reciprocate but my dear because of this connecting rod rotation is prohibited it would be able to only reciprocate it is also successfully constrained motion uh ha shuru majburi mein kya tha ab maza aa raha hai bahut badhiya so guys now you tell me do you remember any other example i also give i also have given one more example many times injection injection yes ramesh mohan injection so in the childhood you were always given one more kind of blackmailing that if you will not be going as per i am saying father and mother were saying i will take you to doctor for an injection and in the injection also the same thing you know that in that injection also one shaft kind of thing was there reciprocation was possible rotation was possible but doctor was doing only and only reciprocation not rotation utkarsh why you are all the time saying hand pump <laughs> <laughs> yes that is also correct but why you are so much i am forced into that so now we are moving towards the incompletely constrained motion this motion is also said to be unconstrained unconstrained so my dear this is the thing which is saying that even if you apply external force motion will not be becoming constrained such motions are said to be unconstrained motion for this example is circular shaft in a circular hole it can rotate also it can reciprocate also okay so for such cases you cannot stop it it is always going to rotate or reciprocate or both so that is why this motion is unconstrained motion my dear for the timing you know why we need first of all i would be asking you whether we need constrained motion or unconstrained motion tell me that whether we need unconstrained motion or constrained motion whether we need constrained motion or unconstrained motion whether we need constrained motion or unconstrained motion which type of motion you are looking for constrained i am fine mayur late ho gaye aaj aap hai so be now be there in the class very good dear we always want constrained motion okay uh sujish actually when you are saying that connecting rod we are talking about the motion between cylinder and piston okay so what is going to happen uh, when we are talking about the connecting rod because of that so if you are talking about cylinder and piston as a system then it is coming from outside okay if you will be taking a connecting rod also the part of system then you can say it is also uh, system configuration but we are talking about cylinder and piston for that case that connecting rod is outsider that is why otherwise if you consider that then it will also become completely constrained okay that is the point so there do not get confused if we are having only cylinder piston as a system then connecting rod is outsider okay so this is the confusion in many of the student and it's fine it is coming yes so guys now we are talking about one thing that we always need the constrained motion we never want unconstrained motion why the reason my dear is when we are going for theory of machines why we are studying it we are studying it because tom will be giving us some motions for manufacturing because in manufacturing we have machines like lathe drilling milling many machines are there so in those machine we need some relative motion and for that relative motion my dear theory of machine is providing that so my dear in that we want if turning operation is going to happen this is the work piece would be rotating like this 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 and this is the tool will be coming like this so we know that tool will be coming in this direction and it would be rotating like this so my dear if tool is coming in this direction cutting will happen if tool is going in opposite direction cutting will not happen so my dear that is why there we need constrained directed desired motion we cannot have any motion because any motion 
will not be giving us the desired kind of cutting which we are looking for okay so that is why we are looking for constrained motion okay we are looking for constrained motion now my dear we are talking about the kinematic pair now we are talking about the kinematic pair so first of all we need to see the pair pair is something everybody know that okay because everybody is interested in pairing hai na from single to mingle so you always want to be uh, in a pair always okay whenever you going to college so when we are talking about the pair any connection between two links is always said to be a joint or a pair so any connection between two links either is said to be a joint or it is said to be a pair but my dear when this pair is having the constrained relative motion the constrained relative motion now when i am saying constrained relative motion i am not bother about whether it is successfully or forcefully now we are not bother about successfully or uh, you can say completely or successfully now we are not bother about whether you studied under the pressure of your parents or you wanted to study by your own we are not bother about that if you once reach to psu once you reach to iit once you reach to rit then we are not bother about that so my dear now we only want constrained it may be completely it may be successfully so you can say my dear if a pair is having the relative motion in such a way that the relative motions are constrained may be completely may be successfully then we will be calling it as kinematic pair so a pair will be converted into kinematic pair if relative motions are constrained every kinematic pair is a pair but every pair may or may not be kinematic yes bahut badhiya bahut badhiya so guys amir that's really great so i would like to say yes kalyan are you there or not so all kinematic pair are pair okay but all pairs may or may not be kinematic okay great 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 <laughs> jafir very good so moving further guys now we will see the classification of kinematic pairs so guys do like and share the session okay now we are talking about the classification of kinematic pair the first classification is according to the type of relative motion the first classification is according to the according to the relative motion so my dear in this the first thing is turning pair turning pair is also said to be revolute pair it is also said to be pin joint okay so this is the connection like this if one link is connected with second link with the help of a pin this is similar to if you say the example crank and connecting rod turning pair can also be shown like with slider and connecting rod both these are the example of turning pair and here the motion is pure rotation as i said this is a classification based on relative motion so my dear here relative motion uh thameen ansari sir will this video cover vibration so my dear for vibration we have one different session where i will be teaching you complete vibrations okay so vibration ke liye humne ek din pura reserve rakha hai because the weightage of vibrations is more even i am thinking of going for balancing plus vibration together because there you will get the feel how they are connected with each other okay so i am even planning for balancing plus vibration in one session because they are connected things also okay so now let us move further about the turning pair so my dear here the relative motion is going to be pure rotation so these two are the example of the turning pair you can see in our body also we have uh ganesh stop uh, wait for that we are coming on to that as well don't worry we are coming on to that as well okay so my dear if you see this connection in our body it is turning pair okay this connection in our body turning pair so god have given a lot of pairs in our body as well so this is the turning pair okay uh sir sim plus okay amir i will try for that and thanks for your love and support second type of pair is sliding pair which is also said to be prismatic pair second pair is said to be sliding pair which is also said to be prismatic pair so my dear for that example is cylinder piston for that example is cylinder piston so my dear this is said to be sliding pair or prismatic pair then my dear we are moving here the relative motion is pure translation so in the previous case the relative motion was pure rotation 
here the relative motion is pure translation okay so previous case it was pure rotation i am writing it because sometimes they are asking about relative motion also so this is pure rotation this is pure translation and now we are moving to the rolling pair yes bahut hi badhiya bahut hi badhiya guys now we are talking about the rolling pair majority of you would be knowing about that but this is very important and it would be helpful in tom and vibration both so i am telling you first of all we will call a pair to be a rolling pair if the relative motion between two links is pure rolling okay and when we are talking about pure rolling it is said to be the combination of two motion it is said to be the combination of pure translation and pure rotation so pure rolling is said to be a combination of pure translation and pure rotation now my dear pure translation pure translation have a definition that every point on the body will be having same linear velocity it means if you are saying that this block is in pure translation and you are saying this is moving with the velocity of 5 meter per second then my dear every point on this body then my dear every point on this body will be having the same velocity so velocity profile will be like that even if you say this disk is having a translation of 5 meter per second then my dear every point on this disk will also be having the same velocity so this velocity profile of irrespective of the shape of the body this is the definition of pure translation now we will see the definition of pure rotation two concentric cylinder will give sliding plus revolute pair sliding plus revolute pair ha you can say that uh, actually two concentric cylinder if you are going to have if the rotation is there you will say it revolute pair and if sliding is there then it is said to be a uh, yes, sliding pair okay both motions we are not talking about because we are talking about constrained motions right now so my dear now we are talking about pure translation we have seen what is pure rotation so my dear in pure translation every body have same linear velocity okay and in pure rotation everybody have same angular velocity so my dear when every but every point is having same angular velocity for the same body you know that linear velocity is given by r into omega are you getting it umar you got it please tell me if you have any doubt i'll help you further so for this center radius is zero velocity will be zero if it is rotating with omega every point will be having the same omega but linear velocity will be highest with this because linear velocity is r into omega so here it is r1 omega r2 omega r3 omega so this is how linearly velocity profile will vary and here it will go like this so this is the velocity profile for rotation so pure rotation omega is constant pure translation linear velocity is constant and my dear i am saying that pure rolling is the combination of these two so when we are talking about pure rolling it is combination of these two but with a condition if i will say this is combination of these two then you will say sir this is two motions and two motions cannot be a constrained motion are bhai if cutting tool is having a choice to go either in this direction or in that direction then this motion is not constrained constrained means single motion okay so many students are feeling that many students are feeling that this pure rolling motion is a combination of two motion it should be unconstrained motion okay 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 jabir i am showing you once again pure translation means every point will be having the same linear velocity so this would be the velocity profile for pure translation okay and pure rotation means omega is going to be constant so because of that this time the velocity profile will be coming like this velocity profile will be coming like this so this is going to be linearly varying okay like this is 5 5 at every point this is 5 3 1 0 -1 minus -3 minus minus 5 like that so my dear when we are saying pure rolling motion is the combination of translation and rotation with one condition that velocity of point of contact should be zero so if i am saying this is the body then this is the point of contact we will be calling it pure rolling only if the velocity of this point is zero so my dear velocity of this point can be zero only if this 5 and this minus 5 means magnitude of this translational velocity and magnitude of rotational velocity is same it means if velocity of translation is equals to the maximum velocity of rotation 
only for that case you will get pure rolling motion because if this is minus 5 this is plus 5 together they will give you 0 and overall velocity profile overall velocity profile will be coming like this overall velocity profile will be coming like this like this why 5 plus 5 is 10 then you would be having 9 8 7 6 5 3 2 1 0 like this so this is the condition of pure rolling this is the condition of pure rolling and my dear if this v of translation is not going to be the maximum of rotation then my dear you would never be getting zero velocity at the point of contact and if zero velocity is not there at the point of contact it means this point of contact would be sliding either this direction or that direction then this motion will be rolling plus sliding then this motion will be rolling plus sliding so this is said to be rolling plus sliding no 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 teju right now we have uh, not defined a general motion general motion we will define at the time of velocity analysis yes 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 uh, very good shrut so Mayuri is saying, sir, I couldn't get it. Can you please repeat it? Definitely, Mayur. Uh, Utkarsh, machine design is also in the list. I will teach you complete machine design. So I'm repeating it for you, Mayur. I said that if a body is in pure translation, then my dear, every point of the body will be having the same velocity. Means every point will be moving with 5 meter per second. If you want to feel it, let us say this is the roller which I am showing. If it is sliding like this, sometime you have seen in the time of rains, sometime your car is getting skid like that. It is just going, your wheels are not rotating. Rotation is not there, it is just skidding like that. This is the pure translation. And sometime whenever your wheels are stuck into the sand, stuck into the sand, you have seen in the movies. For such cases, it would be rotating, wheel would be rotating. But the gadi, the car is not moving in the direction. So this is the example of pure rotation and when both the motions are going to combine your real car wheel motion is the pure rolling motion. It is having translation of the center and rotation of the body. So combinedly it is pure rolling motion. So if you see your wheel motion of the car it is the example of pure rolling. But my dear there are two special conditions. One is skidding in the days of uh, yes, whenever the barsat is there, whenever the, yes, yes, yes. For that case, you are having pure translation. And if your wheels are stuck into the clay, into the sand, they will rotate, vehicle will not move further. This is the example of rotation. When both these motion combined, it is rolling. But if you want pure rolling, for that sliding should be absent. So for that, this point which can slide, because this is the point which can slide along the surface, okay. So this must have zero velocity. So when both the motions will combine this plus 5 and this minus 5 if they are equal together they will give you zero. So my dear this point is having zero velocity and this motion is said to be pure rolling. In this motion your car is moving like this. Your wheel is moving like this. Okay. So why we are saying the velocity of this point is zero? Because this is having only rotational velocity. There is no translation velocity it is having. That is why. Okay. So overall velocity of this point is becoming zero and this motion is said to be pure rolling. And when you will study engineering mechanics, there this motion will be dealt in more and more detail. But for theory of machines, we need only the velocity profile. Is it clear? Mayur, please tell me that. Ganesh, very good. Uh, wonderful, wonderful guys. So you understood Mayur, please tell me that. So be there till the end, you will get a lot more in this class. Is it clear for everyone? Very good, Bhomik. Vineet. Malesh. Jabir. Yes, good morning, Bhavya. Okay, Jabir, I will try to take that. Okay. If it is not planned before, then I will uh, surely take it. Bhavya, camps and governors, Akhir mein hoga na? Nahi, 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 Bhavya, is bar, this time I have changed it. This time camps and governor will be before. In between we are taking. After flywheel we will enter into governor and camp. Okay. Yes. Wonderful guys. So moving to the classification of kinetic pair. Next is crew pair. So my dear you would be aware. Yes Ajit Kumar fine. 
so my dear when we are talking about the screw pair you must be aware of nut bolt connection so my dear in nut bolt connection you are having a bolt like this you are having a bolt like this this is the bolt okay and you know on this bolt we will be having nut we will be having nut like this so here also students are getting confused yes sachin gautam good morning sir mai scam and governor ka intezar kar raha hu okay of course that's fine ha bilkul 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 let's move further guys so my dear like we were talking about the pure rolling motion you may feel that it is a combination of two motions but my dear no doubt if you see two motions many of you would be thinking it should be unconstrained motion because there are two motions but i would like to say my dear this is constrained because these two are not independent motion here both the motion are depending on each other because if vt is not equals to v maximum then we cannot call it as pure rolling if they are not equal then you would be having rolling plus a sliding so my dear you are getting pure rolling only for the condition when translation and maximum rotation is going to be equal so that is why this is a constrained motion otherwise you would be having a velocity profile like this here you would be having this here you would be having this then my dear this type of motion is not pure rolling this is rolling with sliding and this motion when we are talking about we are not studying right now we are studying about pure rolling so pure rolling is a constrained motion this is the one motion only now my dear we are talking about nut and bolt connection so this is a bolt this is a bolt and this is a nut so you know whenever you are going to give rotation to the nut nut is moving in this direction so here also many students feel there are two motion one is translation other is rotation but my dear you know that in one complete rotation in one complete rotation we are going to have one pitch translation so for one rotation of nut into the bolt you would be getting a translation equals to one pitch and if you are getting that this is also depending type of motion means we know for this much rotation this much translation will happen so when there are two dependent motion we will call it as one independent motion if there are two independent motion then it would be unconstrained okay so this is also constrained motion and this type of pair is said to be the screw pair i feel everybody got it maza aa gaya bahut hi badhiya so my dear next we are talking about the last type of pair in this category that is the spherical pair so when we are talking about the spherical pair here yes here we are going to have three dimensional rotation and my dear example for that is present in our body that is this you are hand with the arm it can have rotation in this direction rotation in this direction rotation in this direction so you can see rotation about three axes are present this is three dimension rotation so the screw pair has a single degree of freedom uh, dear i will say yes degree of freedom is one if it is a constrained motion okay yes there are many confusions are present okay so when we are talking about this spherical pair this is having degree of freedom to be three here degree of freedom to be three here degree of freedom to be three okay so here we are going to have spherical pair which is having three dimensional rotation and second example for this is this ball and socket joint ball and socket joint my dear you can also see your bike mirror your car mirror so bike mirror car mirror are also the example of the same so that is also said to be the spherical pair spherical pair my dear they are having the degree of freedom of 3 because here three dimensional rotation are going on is it clear for everyone so this is the example okay zobin you got it so we are talking about the types of pairs now according to the type of contact one is lower pair other is higher pair third is wrapping pair okay yes zobin mayur are you getting it or not please tell me that so in rolling pair in, in uh, sorry in screw pair in spherical pair we have seen all the types so my dear if the contact between two links is the surface contact we will call it as lower pair 
if the contact between two link is point or line contact we will call it as higher pair and if the contact is such that one body is wrapped over another if one body is wrapped over another we will call it as wrapping pair yes very good kartikeya so this is how we are going to define these types of pair so if the contact between two link is a surface contact we will call it lower pair if it is point or line we will call it as higher pair if it is one link is wrapped over another we will call it as wrapping pair sri arvind very good very good so now i am asking you about the examples so my dear you have seen surface pair in which with which with contacts for that i am showing you this in the revolute pair or turning pair like one body is rotating inside another okay this is an example of revolute pair or you have pin joint i have shown you pin joint so this body and this body are also having surface contact they are not joined at a point so this is the example of lower pair then my dear sliding pair or prismatic pair there also you can see surface contact it is also lower pair then my dear screw pair also having nut bolt like this tomato sing very good so this is also a lower pair then my dear spherical pair also having surface contact lower pair this is said to be planar pair this is also a lower pair so what are the examples of higher pair my dear higher pair is the cam and follower in cam and follower you have a point contact which is the example of higher pair in the rolling pair in the rolling pair when you have studied like this there are also point contact so rolling pair is also a higher pair very good utkarsh so deep groove ball bearing are also the example of higher pair that is a kind of rolling pair very good very good very good yes gears will also be considered under the category of higher pair okay there also point contact is there wonderful guys so these are the types of pair now i would like to ask you when we are talking about wrapping pair if in the example if in the option we do not have the wrapping pair if in the option we do not have the wrapping pair then my dear wrapping pair will come in the category of lower pair or higher pair wrapping pair will be coming in the category of lower pair or higher pair yes 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 great 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 wonderful so guys just like and share the session with others as well sujish sk midun ajay manas shreyas teju bahut badhiya bahut badhiya everybody is giving the right answer except vijay <laughs> dear it would be considered as higher pair if wrapping pair is not in the option we will be calling it as higher pair so those student who are looking it for the first time they will say lower pair only because when you see this uh, pulley and belt pulley and rope pulley and chain like that it looks like surface contact it looks like surface contact but my dear when you see the zoom view of this you will find that the surface of pulley is not what you look like with the normal eyes you feel this is the pulley but in reality the surface of pulley is like this it is having a rough surface like this okay so you would be having surface roughness is like this if you will see the surface of rope surface of rope it is also having like this type of thing so point to point contact only you will see you will not be having surface contacts so you will see many points to point contact so when multiple point contacts are present we will not be calling it as the uh, you can say lower pair we will be calling it as a higher pair i feel everybody understood this okay yes 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 so my dear some of you may be asking sir why cylinder piston is lower pair there also surface roughness is are there then in the production you must have seen cylinders we are going for micro finishing operations so when we are going for micro finishing operation in case of cylinder piston when it looks like this it is really like this only piston is really like this only so they are definitely they have surface contact only so only for wrapping pairs they will convert into higher pair if wrapping pair is not in the option very good manas okay so we have seen all these things now we are going for the third classification my dear according to the type of closure so my dear first one is self closed pair or closed pair if my dear here you can see cam is inside the follower so when cam would be rotating like this follower will go up and down but as cam is a part of follower you cannot separate them 
द मोशन बिटवीन दैम कैन नॉट बी टेकन आउट येस वेरी गुड उत्कर्ष बट होबिंग वेन यू आर राइटिंग इट इज फॉर गियर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ओके सो इज इट क्लियर येस so my dear when we are talking about this type of motion here cam is the part of follower it is a self closed pair okay then second one is my dear we are having forced closed pair here if cam is rotating like this follower will go up and the contact between cam and follower may break ha honing is the right example sujeesh is saying honing is the example what you are saying about surface finishing so what you are writing hobing is for gear manufacturing honing is the right answer okay honing is that operation what you are talking about where you are having a uh, you can say uh, this type this type of tool which is having some which is having some abrasive particles and during rotation inside the cylinder it is cleaning the circumference that is honing operation okay very good very good pratham so when this cam is rotating like this Follower will have a jump in the upward direction. Follower will have a jump in the upward direction. So when follower will be having a jump in the upward direction, so to stop this because we want continuous contact, we need to place a spring at the top. So my dear, when we are going to place a spring at the top, then when you will be giving this rotation, this spring will be always applying a force because it is in compression. so always the contact between them is maintained because of the external part springs that is why we call it as forcefully closed pair so with this we have seen the example this is the self closed this is the force closed so here spring would be there on to this follower okay i feel you got it now wonderfully okay moving to the next slide guys so we have seen all the classifications of pair now we are moving to the types of joints okay yes very good so my dear when we are talking about the types of joint there are three types uh, we are going to talk about one is binary joint if two links are connected at one joint it is said to be binary joint but my dear piston connecting rod will also come in this category and cylinder piston will also come in this category so when we have cylinder piston it is also considered to be a binary joint because here also two links connected together two link connected together two link connected together yes umar why we add spring sir because of follower weight dear follower weight is not that much which will be maintaining the motion because the pull cam is uh, the push cam is giving is very hard so there are chances we cannot take chance there ki we hamesha bana rahega because if cam would be giving a motion a, a kind of shock impact it will go up and then come back because of weight so we don't want any kind of disruption in the contact okay that is the problem okay i feel you got it now so my dear these three are the examples of binary joint now we will talk about ternary joint if three links are connected together we would be calling it as ternary joint okay very good very good uh, manas so when three links are connected together we will call it as ternary joint so if you are having this cylinder this piston this connecting rod then here three links are connected together this will also come in the category of ternary joint so vikas are you getting it vijay are you getting it yes next we are moving to the quaternary joint my dear if four links are connected together if four links are connected together we will be saying it as a quaternary joint so my dear you can see 1 2 3 4 four links are joined at one point we will be calling it as quaternary joint very good very good kartikeya bahut badhiya so guys this is the example of quaternary joint but my dear whatever the formula we are going to derive whatever the formula we are going to derive there in the formula we would be having the number of binary joints so we need to convert ternary into binary so you know that one ternary joint can be considered to be as two binary joint why because my dear if you will try to see 1 2 will make one binary 2 3 will make another binary okay so my dear this is 1 and 2 if you will make a binary with 1 and 3 you need to you need not to make it because with these two third one is automatically becoming third one is apne aap ban raha third one jaise hi aapne as you connected 1 and 2 as you connected 1 and 2 then you connected 2 and 3 
then my dear 1 and 3 are automatically connected. So we will say one ternary joint is equivalent to two binary joint. Okay. Similarly, similarly, one quaternary joint is equals to three binary joint. I am not saying equal, I am saying equivalent. Means they will be solving the same purpose. So one quaternary joint and three binary joint will solve the same purpose. Sir, piston wala repeat. Uh, okay. Dear, in this cylinder piston, this is a binary joint, piston connecting rod, this is a binary joint. So, two binary joint, you can consider as one ternary joint. Okay, so whether you go in this way or that way, the things are going to be same. I feel Jabir, you got it. Now we are talking about the kinematic chain. So guys, don't mind, first, second chapter will be taking more time. Because more weightage is also associated with that. From flywheel, cam, governor, we are going to see everything on the same pace. Okay. So don't worry about that. But first and second chapter takes more time. Like in SOM also first chapter take more time. So when we are talking about kinematic chain. First of all, we will talk about chain. What it is a chain. So my dear, whenever we are going to connect a number of links in such a way that like this is one link, second link third link, four link, fifth link, sixth link and seventh link. So one and seventh is first and last link. So my dear, if a number of links are connected together in such a way that first and last link are connected together, then this thing is said to be a chain. But my dear, whenever you use kinematic words, this is giving a guarantee of relative motion to be a constrained motion. So my dear, if relative motion is going to be a constrained motion, if relative motion is going to be a constrained motion, maybe forcefully, maybe successfully, maybe completely, then any chain will become a kinematic chain. Okay. So my dear, kinematic chain will be a chain with all the relative motions as constrained motions. So my dear, we have seen already the definition of kinematic chain. Now my dear, very good, very good Bhomik. Now I would like to say that if, if any one link, if any one link is kept fixed, then my dear, it will become a mechanism. If any one link is fixed for a chain, it will, it will become mechanism. If any one link is fixed for a kinematic chain, it will become mechanism. Sri Arvin, sir, one doubt from slider crank inversion. If piston is fixed, how does the mechanism move? Dear, I will show you, no? don't worry. At hand pump, we will see that, don't worry. So, my dear, here many students are asking, sir, why we need to fix a link? If you see, my dear, when you were using the drafter in your college first year engineering drawing subject, what you were doing with that? To use that drafter, to use that drafter, first of all, you were fixing it on the table. Because generally input and output are given with respect to the fixed link. So my dear, why we need to fix it to give input and to uh, give input and take output. So for that it will become mechanism. And my dear, when one or more mechanism, when one or more mechanism are connected in such a way that you want for some output, work output, then we will be calling it as a machine. So my dear, if a number of, if a number of links are connected in such a way that one link is fixed and it is a kinematic chain, it is mechanism. When mechanism is used to take work output, it will become a machine. Okay. This is how we are going to define it. Now, my dear, if you see uh, one more thing I would like to say, sometimes there is a term comes binary link, ternary link, quaternary link. So if one link can be connected at two places, we will call it as binary. If one link can be connected at three places, we will call it as ternary. If one link can be connected at four places, we will call it as quaternary link. Okay. So if I ask you one question on this, can you tell me how many binary and how many ternary links are there? You know, one link is this fixed link. This is the second link. This is the third link, fourth link, fifth link, sixth link and one link. You know this fixed link and this fixed link, these two will not be having any relative motion with respect to each other. 
that is why they are not different links they are one link only so my dear out of these six how many are binary how many are ternary can you tell me how many are binary how many are ternary how many are binary how many are ternary yes prayas is saying c umar is saying d malesh is saying d sujish is saying d bahut badhiya midun is saying d bahut badhiya yes guys do like and share the session very good shashank is saying d bahut hi badhiya maza aa gaya wonderful guys ragu is saying d advait is saying d hena is saying d jyoti prakash d bahut hi badhiya shreyas d answer is d because my dear you can see link number 3 and 6 they can be connected 1 2 3 1 2 3 so they are ternary links okay they are ternary links and if you see link number 2 link number 4 link number 5 and link number 1 because one is also connected with 2 and with 6 so one is also a binary link okay so my dear 1 2 4 5 they are binary okay so the answer will be d for this very good guys very good guys so guys do you know na we would be having one practice session also at midnight at midnight we are also going to have a practice session okay now my dear midnight means why 11:55 pm okay we would be meeting for uh, practice session okay so my dear now we are talking about the degree of freedom or mobility so my dear if you want to say anything is anything is a kinematic chain anything is a kinematic chain or it is a kind of frame or it is a kind of unconstrained chain so any chain can be any of these three to tell what it is we are going to consider a concept of degree of freedom very good sk aditya very good so we are going to use the concept of degrees of freedom in short form it is also said to be mobility so when we are talking about degree of freedom what it is so my dear this is not a term which is patent for theory of machines degree of freedom is a term which you have studied which you have studied in thermodynamics also you have studied this in thermo also you have studied this in material science also okay both the places you have studied this term and it is defined as number of independent number of independent intensive variable intensive variables required to define required to define the state of a system the state of a system so my dear when we were studying the thermodynamics we wanted to know the state of a system in terms of pressure temperature volume like that and even there we are interested in pressure and temperature more they were intensive variables so my dear that was the definition of degree of freedom and you have seen that we are writing intensive intensive variable so when we are saying intensive variable means pressure and temperature were counted volume was not and you have seen when you were making a pt diagram a pt diagram then what you were getting always degree of freedom was 0 for a point triple point is the example degree of freedom was 1 for a line like sublimation curve vaporization curve degree of freedom was 2 for a space like when you were showing this type of curve then this region was having degree of freedom 2 this line was having degree of freedom 1 this point was having degree of freedom 0 this is just for a quick revision of yours here this is not the degree of freedom definition for us because we are not interested in that state of system with form of energy here we are interested in the state of motion of a system so my dear here we will define it here we will define is the number of independent motions the number of independent motions so that is why i feel someone have asked me na that sir please tell me what is the degree of freedom for screw pair and i said degree of freedom is 1 for screw pair because the definition is number of independent motions 
सो देयर टू मोशन आर देयर बट दे आर डिपेंडिंग ऑन इच अदर सो नंबर ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंट मोशन आर सेट टू बी द डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम इज इट क्लियर ग्रेट ग्रेट उत्कर्ष सो दिस इज द नंबर ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंट मोशन विच वी आर कॉलिंग इट एज डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम सो माई डियर नंबर ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंट मोशन वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ए बॉडी इन थ्री डायमेंशनल स्पेस लाइक दिस इज द बॉडी इन थ्री डायमेंशनल स्पेस इन थ्री डायमेंशनल स्पेस वी आर शोइंग दिस एक्स दिस वाई एंड दिस जेड एवरी टाइम आई ऑलवेज से यू कैनोट राइट एनी एनी एक्सिस एज एक्स एनी एक्सिस एज वाई एनी एक्सिस एज जेड दे फॉलो राइट एंड थम रूल so you keep your finger towards x rotate them towards y thumb will give you z so my dear if that is the case if that is the case x y and z i am showing you so in these three dimension we can have three translation one is this second is this third is this and similarly we can have rotation about these three also so the maximum degree of freedom would be 6 for any independent body for any independent body we can say the degree of freedom to be 6 okay and my dear when we are saying the maximum degree of freedom to be 6 some people are also saying 12 generally production people will say this as 12 but why they are saying 12 are they mad or we are mad actually 12 means they are going to consider positive x1 negative x2 positive y1 Negative y two, positive z one, negative z two, clockwise one, anti-clockwise two. So in that way, they are having double the motion we are considering. So according to them, the total number of motions are twelve. So my dear, why this is the reason? In theory of machines, we are only interested to create a motion, but in production, they also need to take care that whether cutting is happening or not. if this is the work piece this is the cutting tool this motion of tool will give you the cutting but this motion will not give you the cutting because your tool is going away from the work piece so that is the reason they are considering 12 degree of freedom because one motion may give the desired thing second motion may not so there they will consider 12 degree of freedom here we will talk about 6 degree of freedom but how you will get to know whether it is production question or tom then my dear if the if they are considering 12 you will find all the options are bigger than 6 so that would be an identification that they are taking it 12 and if they are taking it 6 options would be under 6 okay that is how you can say that okay i feel you got it now utkarsh it is not about the book it is about the application okay i feel you got it now very good bahut badhiya so guys we have already seen the maximum degree of freedom in general is 6 but my dear what is happening whenever one link is connected with other whenever pairing is happening pairing always restrict some of the motion like when you are living alone in a house which you have just taken on rent and this is independent house no landlords are there your parents are not there you are living alone you are free to go outside any time you are free to come inside any time you are free to go outside with anyone you are free to come inside with anyone you are enjoying maximum degrees of freedom but when pairing will happen restrictions would be imposed so my dear if pairing would be there i will say degree of freedom will become 6 minus r here r will be the restricted motion now whenever i say whenever i say pairing majority of the students are having a feel of wife friend girlfriend so guys it is not like that only one relation is not there in this word there are many others with your parents also you have a kind of pairing with your if you are married with your wife also you would be having a kind of pairing with your children also you are having a kind of pairing and different pairing puts different restrictions like if your parents are there you would be coming home at time you will be going out from time okay that kind of restriction is there when you are living with your girlfriend different type of restriction you can go only with her you have to go according to her if you are having a wife you are married so different kind of restrictions would be coming don't take it otherwise other way it is just for uh, you can say for understanding purpose i am saying so my dear different kind of restrictions are coming and my dear that is why degree of freedom will get reduced and it is defined as 6 minus r 
उत्कर्ष नहीं है तो चांस है आपके सिलेक्शन के भी ओके यस डेफिनेटली 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 ओके वेरी गुड एस के सो लेट्स मूव फर्दर गाइस सो गाइस डू लाइक एंड शेयर द सेशन बिकॉज वी ऑल मस्ट बी एनर्जेटिक टिल इवनिंग दिस सेशन विल गिव यू अ लॉट बिकॉज एंटायर थ्योरी ऑफ मशीन वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न ओके सो गाइज लेटस मूव फर्दर दिस वॉज इन थ्री डायमेंशन नाउ माई डियर we can also talk about two dimension in two dimension we would be having only two axes okay so in two dimension if we are talking about a planar body you would be having translation about x translation about y and rotation about z because if you will try to rotate about x motion will come in z direction if you will rotate about y motion will come in z direction so either translation of x or translation of y or rotation about z or in xy plane so there are three degree of freedom at the max and if pairing is there degree of freedom will be 3 minus r okay so this is for 3d this is for 2d everybody would be aware that in our syllabus we need to study in two dimension not in three dimensions much so moving to the two dimensional example the first type of pair you study is the turning pair so my dear when we are talking about the degree of freedom of a turning pair you have seen it is a planar it is a two dimensional thing 3 minus r is the case so my dear you need to see which types of motions are possible okay i am making a table where here i am writing the turning pair okay here we will see the restrictions okay here we will say the pair restriction and then we will say here the degree of freedom which is 3 minus r okay so or you can say in general 6 minus r also you can consider 6 minus r also okay so okay let me first of all tell you about this only then we will see all examples which will help you in the paper so when we are talking about the turning pair my dear you can consider the example of your arm this connection with this okay <laughs> yes so my dear when you will see this if you are going to say okay this is the turning pair between these two so my dear if you are going to say the motion for this link because when we are finding out the motion of a link not a pair so if we are talking about this link now my dear this is a connection between these two this link cannot independently move in the x direction if it would be moving connection will break between them similarly you cannot uh, give the motion of this link to the y direction once again restriction will be there link will be bro uh, connection will be broken but you can give this type of rotation so out of three motions when we are talking about in the turning pair two motions out of three motion you can say two motions are restricted two motions are restricted which motion translation of x translation of y they are restricted but my dear you can rotate them about z axis okay yes so my dear in that case you can say degree of freedom for this is going to be 1 we can also take the example of two pens like i have taken in the class you have these two pens okay now if we see with respect to three dimension you cannot give translation of, of x you cannot give translation to y you cannot give translation to z because connection shall not break okay my dear you cannot rotate it about x axis connection will break you cannot you cannot rotate it about z axis connection will break but you can rotate it about y axis because their connection will not break because here i have considering this as y axis so this rotation is possible so only one motion is possible because there the connection is not breaking this is just like the motion you are always thinking about wife and girlfriend then my dear the motion have a restriction jahan bhi ghumenge saath mein ghumenge so you are having only one rotation possibility no other possibility is there okay so this is about the same motion you are always thinking about so turning of uh, turning pair is having a degree of freedom of 1 okay so my dear whenever we are talking about whenever we are talking about some other examples let us consider some other examples also okay let us consider about some other examples also so that you will be clear about the exam requirement okay so my dear when we are talking about some other examples here i am writing the pair restriction and degree of freedom pair restriction and degree of freedom 
let us see so we have already seen the turning pair we have already seen the turning pair turning pair is having a uh, five restriction f is 6 minus r in three dimension i am taking this is the one exa one degree of freedom now we are talking about the sliding pair so you know sliding pair when we are talking about this is in cylinder piston this is in cylinder piston so you know my dear in cylinder piston piston can translate like this piston can rotate like this because it is not connected to connecting rod piston can rotate inside cylinder and can translate other than this no other motion is possible so four restrictions are there degree of freedom are two my dear if i will take the spherical pair as an example if i take spherical pair as an example then my dear spherical pair is having three dimension rotation three dimension rotation so my dear their restrictions are three because if you will try to take this in x direction connection will break hearth will come in hearth hand will come in hand so you cannot give this translation you cannot give this translation you cannot give this translation so my dear only three rotations are possible degree of freedom are three for the spherical pair for the when we are saying sliding pair i will not say this is sliding pair this is piston in cylinder okay piston in cylinder i will say sliding pair is having degree of freedom one only because there we consider connecting road also okay so my dear now we have already seen this spherical pair also you can have you can have a cylinder present on a table you can have cylinder present on a table this is the table surface this is the cylinder you can translate the cylinder on the table like this you can translate the cylinder on the table like this connection is not getting broken but if you translate the cylinder like this then this is the breaking of the connection between them so one translation is restricted one translation is restricted one translation is restricted if you are going to rotate this cylinder on the table like this nobody is stopping you to do that you can definitely do that if you are going to rotate the cylinder on the table like this nobody is going to stop that but if you are going to rotate the cylinder on the piston about this axis then their connection is getting broken so one translation and one rotation are restricted degree of freedom would be four similarly if you have a cosco ball if you have a cosco ball onto a table then cosco ball can translate like this can translate like this but cannot translate like this one translation is restricted cosco ball can rotate like this can rotate like this and can rotate like this no restriction in rotation we will be having degree of freedom of five so please tell me how many of you understood this table so this is not sliding pair this is cylinder piston arrangement okay cylinder piston there we were having connecting road everything as well so this is cylinder piston arrangement please tell me how many of you understood these table this is a very 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 important table very good manas so this table is uh, given to you because once in exam it was asked that is why i have given you this okay wonderful guys wonderful guys so now my dear when we are talking about the uh, degree of freedom equation actually it is derived but i feel i shall not uh, explain spherical again okay ganesh are you asking about the sphere on a table okay let us say you have a table like this okay and on this you are having a bowl bowl can translate like this bowl can translate like this but this translation is not possible because connection will break you can rotate it in this way rotate it in this way rotate it in this way all rotations are possible so my dear translations and rotations only one translation is restricted so degree of freedom are five and don't worry uh, <laughs> okay this is cylinder on table cylinder can translate in x cylinder can translate in y but cylinder cannot translate in z connection will be broken cylinder can translate in x can translate in y but cannot translate in z cylinder can rotate about this axis cylinder can rotate about this axis but cannot rotate about this axis because here connection is broken so one translation and one rotation are restricted degree of freedom would be four ram ram bhai divender singh kya hua late kaise ho gaye bhai hai 
रोज समय पर आते हो आज लेट आ रहे हो बहुत बहुत गलत बात है थ्योरी ऑफ मशीन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट यस सो गाइस ऑन दिस एक्सप्लेनेशन एक लाइक like तो बनता है जस्ट लाइक द सेशन शेयर द सेशन नाउ माई डियर आई कैन डिराइव दिस इक्वेशन ऑल्सो but i feel in this marathon sessions we are avoiding the derivation because it will waste the time and there is no output of the derivation so you can directly say that degree of freedom for a mechanism till now we have seen degree of freedom of a link but when we are talking about degree of freedom of a mechanism then for two dimension the formula is 3 times l minus 1 minus 2 times j minus h so my dear in two dimension this is the formula three dimension is not in your syllabus so here l is the number of links and j is the number of binary joints and h is the number of higher pairs okay h is the number of higher pairs so this is the formula for two dimension three dimension is not in the syllabus and you need to use this formula for various cases like if we have this as a mechanism so we are going to have this abc actually this is a this is a structure given to us this is a you can say a kind of you can say the uh, three links are connected like this we are given a chain like this for which one link is fixed so my dear we don't know whether it is kinematic chain or not so this is link number 1 this is link number 2 this is link number 3 so my dear if you see the number of links they are three if you see the number of binary joint this is a binary joint this is a binary joint this is a binary joint it is 3 and number of higher pair is 0 because there is no higher pair if i am going to apply the formula it is going to be 3 into l minus 1 minus 2 into j if you remember it it would be coming out to be 0 and when degree of freedom is coming out to be 0 we will be calling it as frame or structure so my dear when i was teaching you in the classes in the youtube sessions at that time i have given you two ways one way was j is equals to 3 by 2 l minus 2 if this equation is valid then also we are calling it as a kinematic chain but then at the same time i derived that this equation is coming from this degree of freedom formula only so that is why i am not going to take this because whether you go by degree of freedom or this they are same only they are not two different things okay so if you get degree of freedom to be zero we will be getting it as a frame or a structure now let us see about this link number 1 link number 2 link number 3 link number 4 link number 5 so my dear number of links are 5 this is one binary joint two binary joint three binary joint four binary joint five binary joint so number of joints are 5 degree of freedom would be 3 times l minus 1 minus 2 into joint higher pair is absent so at is 0 you will say it as 12 minus n degree of freedom is coming out to be 2 so my dear when degree of freedom came out to be 2 just by looking at this 2 we said it is unconstrained because when degree of freedom is coming 2 it means what it means there are two independent motions possible so my dear then we try to understand what else degree of freedom is try, trying to say then we get to know that degree of freedom generally tells us how many inputs to be controlled to get a desired output so it means if you are getting degree of freedom to be 1 it means you need to control one input and if you are getting degree of freedom 2 you need to control two input you will get one output so if we control this and this together if we decide the velocity of this and this we will be getting desired output here so my dear after knowing this fact we have seen many unconstrained motion became useful for us if we see the simple gear train compound gear train epicyclic gear train reverted gear train everybody knows epicyclic gear train are the best out of that so until and unless we don't study the degree of freedom we say we need constrained motion yes we need okay so unconstrained was useless for us we were not even spitting on them but when we get to know that unconstrained means only we need to control two inputs then my dear when we tried it we found some magic to happen because when we were controlling two inputs 
you can change multiple times because sometimes you are giving one input other second input something else then you are giving one input something else second input something else based on that you get multiple outputs multiple output means with the same kind of mechanism you can get different types of output means the same machine can be used for multi purpose kind of things then we found it more useful than the constrained motion and this was the first time we utilize this and nowadays unconstrained chain are the queens of the market and they are even preferred more than the constrained chains but for that you need to control more number of inputs so now onward unconstrained are better than constrained okay so this was the beauty so my dear now we will see one more example for that let us take let us take uh, i am not finding the space let us find out the degree of freedom for a four bar mechanism let us take the degree of freedom of a four bar mechanism yes definitely umar you can get a degree of freedom negative also if you get degree of freedom negative we will be calling it as superstructure okay degree of freedom negative means it is having more rigidity more rigidity means we will call it as superstructure okay so my dear if you find the degree of freedom for this 1 2 3 and 4 so guys as this is a marathon session so i am skipping some very uh, those kind of things which are not going to be helpful in exam okay like for degree of freedom i have given you direct formula so those things are not going to be helpful so that is required for revision purpose because lesser you need to remember better will be the efficiency okay uh, yes definitely umar trusses are the example for that trusses and frames are the example of that so when you are going to talk about truss and frame every time they are not only frame they are having degree of freedom negatives also so that would be an example like if you make a truss like this if you make a truss truss like this just look at it this truss is a superstructure you can find out okay this is a superstructure okay so i am uh, i have skipped four five example also because if we go by class nature then it would be a three four days marathon okay so i am skipping those things which will never be the part of exam so if you see this number of links are 4 1 2 uh, okay number of joints number of joints binary 1 2 3 4 4 so number of joints are also 4 then degree of freedom is 3 into 4 minus 1 minus 2j okay higher pair is 0 you will get the answer to be 1 so my dear for four bar mechanism we are getting the degree of freedom to be one everybody is fine is it clear are you getting it yes are you getting it shall we move on now we are coming to the now we are coming to the exceptions part yes are bhai aa raha hai samajh we are going in a nice way i remember you will be missing these examples you would be missing these examples yes are you missing this <laughs> are you missing this yes then tell me the degree of freedom for this as well okay tell me the degree of freedom for this as well to aapka missingness khatam karte hain so in the class i have taken five cases of this also but i am going to cover them with different example i thought to give you something different okay so tell me about degree of freedom of this tell me about degree of freedom of this link number 1 link number 2 link number 3 link number 4 link number 5 link number 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so number of links are 12 am i correct or not then you see the types of joints it is ternary it is ternary it is quaternary it is quaternary it is ternary it is ternary it is quaternary you can see 1 2 and 3 3 quaternary so 3 cross 2 the number of ternary joints are 1 ternary 2 ternary 3 ternary 4 ternary okay so there are 4 ternary so 4 into 3 there is no binary i feel so so it would be 6 and 8 sorry 6 and 12 18 okay am i correct am i correct yes am i correct the number of links are 12 please tell me that 
and number of joint this is quaternary 1 2 3 4 this is ternary this is quaternary this is also quaternary so 3 quaternary 3 cross okay 3 quaternary means 3 cross 3 okay 4 cross 2 so 9 plus 8 would be 17 17 are the joint yes 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 17 are the joint so degree of freedom would be 3 into 12 minus 1 minus 2 into 17 so it would be 33 minus 34 it is minus 1 okay so what it would be frame or structure if it is coming minus 1 i will say it is superstructure it is superstructure are you getting it guys very good and a devendra rana bahut badhiya so it is going to be superstructure okay so this is going to be the superstructure now my dear we are talking about the double parallelogram linkage but before that before that when we are talking about this double parallelogram linkage we need to find out the degree of freedom for this this was asked in gate 2011 paper so can you find out the degree of freedom for this okay jabir sir ternary link se degree of freedom pe effect padta hai dear ternary pair se definitely padega but when we are talking about no 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 ternary pair se nahi ternary joint se padega ternary pair se nahi ternary joint se padega okay is it clear yes bahut badhiya bahut bahut badhiya okay guys great so my dear if you see the degree of freedom for this like teju is saying 2 manas is saying 2 midun is saying 1 okay so my dear if you see this this is the one link link number 1 link number 2 link number 3 okay link number 4 and link number 5 so if you see the number of links are 5 and the number of joints 1 2 3 4 5 6 it is 6 so if you will apply the formula 3 into l minus 1 minus 2 into j there is no higher pair if you will say it is coming out to be 12 minus 12 it is coming out to be 0 is it clear are we getting like this the number of links are 5 the number of joints are 6 2 or 0 what you are getting considering that it is redundant middle wala link is very good job in that's fine so 0 or 2 some people are saying 2 is the degree of freedom if you see the number of link this is complete 1 2 3 4 5 so my dear you are going to have these 5 links 6 joint degree of freedom will come out to be 0 okay so my dear when this question came in the gate one option was 1 other was 0 other was minus 1 other option was 2 and none of the student have ticked it one majority of them have said it 0 some of them have also said it 2 like Teju is saying so my dear that is the wrong answer why because if you see any of the railway railways then my dear there are three wheels connected in the railway you will find there are three wheels connected like this and when three wheels are connected like this they are connected with the same double parallelogram linkage and there all the wheels are rotating it means degree of freedom must be one degree of freedom must be one whereas you are finding it as zero then where is the problem so my dear the problem is with this link problem is with this link so my dear this link is useless link in terms of motion if this link is present or this link is not present the relative motion between input and output is not going to be affected every other link is affecting the motion of input and output if you will make any change in this relation relative motion will change if you put any 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 change in link number one relative motion will change but if you remove this link relative motion will not change such type of links are said to be redundant links such types of links are said to be redundant links and their presence or absence doesn't make sense doesn't make any changes so that is why my dear whenever we are going to find out the degree of freedom Kurzbeck who have given that equation he said if you find such situation and you want to use my formula then you need to remove these links before calculation so forget about this link now it will become four bar mechanism so degree of freedom for four bar mechanism will be coming out to be one is it clear or not please tell me that yes very good ajay 
why we need redundant link we don't like here we want to couple three lo three wheels of locomotive so if we want to just replicate the same motion again if we want to replicate the same motion at two to three places then we need to apply these links like if you want to couple one more wheel you need to apply one more redundant link so if you want to replicate the same motion again and again you need to apply that Uh, Jyoti Prakash, this type of examples are not infinite. There are some specific example which would be covered in the class only. Okay, so don't worry. And these things you can get by practice. But I will be covering all such cases in the class. So don't worry about that. Is it clear for everyone? Moving further guys. Now my dear, we are coming to one more case that is said to be redundant degrees of freedom. So my dear, when we are talking about redundant degrees of freedom, like... I would also like to tell you here one more example. Like my dear, if we are going to have a cam and a follower. A cam and a follower. Then my dear, you know whenever this cam will, sir, if we break top link, then also degree of freedom is 1. Aray bhai, jab top link ki hata doge to it will not be a chain. First of all, it must, it must be a chain also. Is it clear? It must be a chain also. Uh, is it clear? Fine, fine, fine. So now let us move further for this example. My dear, if we are having this cam and follower mechanism, this is link number one, this is link number two, this is link number three, and this is link number one. I can have one more example where we have a slider with this a connecting rod, with this a crank. Okay, both these example have one thing in common, one thing in common, that input link is rotation, output link is reciprocation. Rotation of cam is converting into reciprocation of follower. Here rotation of crank is converting into reciprocation of slider. And my dear, if two mechanism have same relative motion, we would be treating them same only. If two kind of mechanism we have which are having same relative motion we do not consider them different we consider them same only okay so my dear okay some question is yes sir i am having doubt in gear train relative method today we are going to cover it today we are going to cover it yes definitely even today in this session we will study this study that and tonight in the practice session we will solve numerical onto that so guys now let us see about this so if you see both these mechanism with reference to theory of machine, we will be calling them same because they are solving the same purpose. They are converting rotation into translation or rotation into reciprocation. So my dear, if you see the number of links here, here number of links are three and you can see this is a turning pair. This is a higher pair. This is a sliding pair. So total two lower pairs are there and one higher pair is there. Okay. So my dear, this is cam and follower. If you see this mechanism, link number one, link number two, link number three, link number four, link number one. So number of links are four. This is turning pair, this is turning pair, this is turning pair. And this is sliding pair. So lower pair are four, higher pair is zero. So my dear, for both of them, as they are giving the same motion, for me, both of them are equivalent. For me, both of them are equivalent. But here it is having two lower pair and one higher pair. It is having uh, four lower pairs. So we can say two lower pair plus one higher pair is solving the same purpose which is sold by four lower pair. It means one higher pair is equivalent to two lower pairs. So always remember one higher pair is equivalent to two lower pairs. One higher pair is equivalent to two lower pair. Okay. So my dear when we are going to talk about the degrees of freedom. For this cam and follower, you said number of links are 3, number of joint is 1 and 2. You know sliding pair is also a binary joint. So number of binary joints are 2, higher pair is 1. So if you will find out degree of freedom for cam and follower, it is having 3 links, L minus 1, minus 2 into 2 minus 1. So you will say 6 minus 4 minus 1, degree of freedom is coming out to be 1. So my dear, for this degree of freedom is coming out to be 1. So guys, just like and share the session. If you want to get complete confidence in the subject, you need to attend the complete subject. Okay. I'm going to cover everything from basic to detail. You can see 
so our first chapter is taking around 2 hours and 15 minutes second would be taking similarly one hour after that topics will take lesser time okay so balancing and vibration we are going to cover in the second session which is dedicated for vibrations okay let us move further so my dear here degree of freedom is coming out to be one that's fine that is why it is a mechanical mechanism but my dear we can also have a roller follower we can also have a roller follower so this is link number one this is link number two this is link number three and this is link number four and this is link number one here number of links are four higher pair is still one higher pair is still one this is ternary joint ternary joint sliding ternary pair ternary pair and sliding pair okay so number of joints are binary 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 three so my dear if i apply the degree of freedom equation here I will get 3 into 4 minus 1 minus 2 into 3 minus 1. If you will see this 3 into 3 is 9 minus 6 minus 1 is 2. So the answer is coming out to be 2. But my dear you know that you know that for a cam and follower mechanism degree of freedom is 1. So it means we are getting here wrong answer. So my dear when Kurzweil, Sir Kurzweil got the similar problems with the equation he tries to find out the solution that why such kind of thing is happening then my dear sir Kurzweil tried to find out the solution and what he found a solution he find that there is one motion which has nothing to do with the mechanism motion that is the motion of this roller so this extra degree of freedom is trying to tell us that one more motion is present in the mechanism but that motion is not useful for us. This motion of roller have nothing to do with our input and output motion. So such motions are given the name of redundant motion. So Devendra Singh don't worry and those students who are facing difficulty, sir how to find out these cases. If you are attending this session and midnight practice session, it would be covering all the cases which can come in exam where you need to check redundant motion and redundant link. So my dear you will be having one redundant motion. So then my dear this equation was refined to 3 into L minus 1 minus 2J minus H minus FR. This FR is said to be the redundant motion. So my dear all the cases of redundant motion and redundant link I am going to cover in this session or you can say plus in the session of midnight practice. So if you are covering both of them you are going to cover all the cases. Is it clear for everyone? Yes. So this is the case with redundant link. Can you find out degree of freedom for this? Can you find out degree of freedom for this? So as per your request in this session, I am not only teaching you theory, but I have kept some good questions also. Like yesterday you guys have mentioned in the telegram channel. Okay. So I am doing it for you guys. Just solve it. Till then I take, I drink some water. Yes, yes. Solve it guys. Nay, 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 Joby redundant link and redundant motions are different thing this time if you will be removing this link you will not be follower will be out of the picture so this follower is not the extra link extra link is which is replicating the motion okay so previously we were having those parallel links which were replicating the motion okay so this is not replicating this is the first motion you are getting if you replicate the motion second time that would be redundant link. Okay. Midun is saying degree of freedom to be 1. Umar is saying 3. Vikas is saying 1. Sujish is saying 1. Okay. Till you are answering. Let me, let me, let me share it. Okay. Because students sometimes forget about the session. So let me share it with others again in the telegram channel. Yes. Tell me guys, tell me, tell me, tell me. 
आई एम सोल्विंग इट फॉर यू डोंट वरी वंडरफुल गाइस नाउ लेट मी स्टार्ट लेट मी सोल दिस वेरी गुड विनीत देवेंद्र अजय सो एवरी वन इज गिविंग द आंसर सो वेरी गुड फैजल सो आई विल से दिस इज लिंक नंबर वन दिस इज लिंक नंबर टू दिस इज लिंक नंबर थ्री लिंक नंबर फोर लिंक नंबर फाइव लिंक नंबर सिक्स लिंक नंबर सेवन यस जाबीर आर यू देर और नॉट उमर आर यू देर और नॉट सो दीज आर द लिंक्स so number of links we are getting as 8 if you see the joint this is binary binary this is not binary this is link number 1 link number 3 link number 5 link number 4 so my dear if you see this 1 2 3 and 4 it is a quaternary joint okay it is a quaternary joint then binary 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 okay very good so guys if you will find out this this is number of joint binary 1 binary 2 quaternary means 3 binary so 1 2 and 3 5 6 7 8 9 10 so my dear here the number of joints are 10 higher pair is 0 degree of freedom is 3 into 8 minus 1 minus 2 into 10 higher pair is 0 It is three into seven, twenty-one minus twenty is equals to one. So Jabir have asked an interesting question, sir. Whether binary, ternary, quaternary pair will affect the degree of freedom? I said no. So as per the formula, it will not be affecting because in the formula we have the binary joints. But these joints are forming based on the connection of the link. So you can see here, link number one is connected here. 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 So link number one is a quaternary link, which is connected at four places. So the effect of this would be counted in joints. So that is why we will not be taking any separate effect here. Okay. So I wanted to answer this question as well. Yes, one is not directly connected to four, so isn't that's why I said. One is connected one, two, three, four. One is a quaternary link, but we are finding out the joints, not the links. So joint wise, I feel you got it. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Ha, that is also fine, Jabir. You can go for both of the things, but it is always easy to find out the number of joints rather than the number of pairs. Okay. That is why we go with the joint formula. can you find out for this as well teju very good akhil can you find out for this teju and everyone link number 1 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and higher pair so you can see the number of links are 7 number of joints binary 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 and binary so you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 eight so number of joints are eight number of higher pair is one degree of freedom is 3 into 7 minus 1 minus 2 into 8 minus 1 you will say 18 minus 16 minus 1 answer is 1 wonderful guys bahut hi badhiya very good kartikeya bahut hi badhiya jyoti prakash bahut hi badhiya shashank rishikesh jabir utkarsh shreyas vineet akhil malesh bahut badhiya malesh bahut hi badhiya so guys now it is one more kind of exception that we have seen when this link number 2 link number 4 and link number 5 were parallel we were considering link number 2 4 to be redundant link okay why redundant because it is replicating the same motion if this is input both of these are replicating the same output okay so that is why but here my dear if this is link number 4 like this then this is not a redundant link this time it is not a redundant link 
because it is not going to replicate the same output this time. That is why degree of freedom would be zero for this case. Okay, so that is also one more thing I would like to tell you. So everything is covered in this. Sir, is slider a higher pair? Nahi Sri when the slider is not a higher pair, sliding pair is a lower pair because slider is having a surface contact like this. Here it is a point contact. Slider is a higher pair. This is, sorry, lower pair. This is a lower pair only. Okay, is it clear? Is it clear? Bahut badia. So I feel now this is one more question I would like to ask you. Here my dear, once again you can see one thing. Link number 1, link number 2, link number 3 and link number 4. Here my dear, for 4 bar mechanism degree of freedom is found out to be 1. So ideally answer should be B for this. But my dear, you can see the motion of this link. If you will just touch it in this way, this link will go out. Because it is present in some kind of rectangular holes. It is present in some kind of rectangular holes. So if you will just push it, it will go out. So this motion is possible without any intervention of input and output. So this is a redundant motion. This is redundant motion. This is not redundant link, redundant motion. So that motion should be removed. So once again the formula here would be free into L minus 1 minus 2J minus H minus FR. There is one redundant motion. So answer for this would be 0. Everybody got it? Everybody got it? Bahut badia, bahut badia, bahut badia. Bahut ishandar guys. So I feel everybody got it. Shall we move on guys now? Shall we move on now? Okay, for this, everybody remember? For this, everybody remember? Yes. For this, there is a confusion between the student. I would like to say here, this complete is one link. This complete is another link. So if this is link one, if this is link, this is also link one. If this is two, this is also two. Then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is going to be link number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this slider is going to be nine and fixed link is link number 10. So for this case, number of links are 10. And the number of joints, this is binary, 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 binary. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is ternary. This is ternary. Are yes or no? Yes, Devendra, that's why I am telling you. Have you seen the seizure? In the seizure, we have two links connected with this pin. So they are not four links. They are the two links only connected with the pin. So similarly, this is link 1, this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 plus slider 9, 9 and fixed one 10. Joints 1 binary, 2 binary, 3 binary, 4 binary, 5 binary, 6 binary, 7 binary, 8 binary, 9 binary, 10 binary, 11 binary and 2 more binary. So binary joints are 13. So degree of freedom would be there is no higher pair. 3 into 10 minus 1 minus 2 into 13. Answer would be 1. Is it clear? So B is the right answer. No higher pair Akhil here. There is no higher pair. No higher pair. Okay, good morning Abhishek. How are you? So there is no higher pair. Structure, sir, hame kaise pata lagega Caesar ke example. Dear, actually this is a famous mechanism. This is a famous mechanism. Lazy tongue and you can see this is used by the police to stop the road. This is used by the police to stop the road. Okay, this is used by the police to stop the road. So, as I said, these are the famous things. It is not like aapko kaise pata lagega. There are some things only. It is not like infinity that they can make anything. I have made it 8. If there we made one more, then also answer is 1. 
If they make one more, then also answer is one. If they make one less, then also answer is one. So just by looking at this, you will say the answer is one. Is it clear for everyone? Good morning, BT. Yes, very good, very good. Uh, let us move further. Now we are moving for the Grubler's equation. So my dear Grubler have said that if we put degree of freedom, sorry. Grubler have said that if we want to make a mechanism without a higher pair. Grubler said if we want to make a mechanism without a higher pair. So we will put h is equal to 0. And we want a mechanism so degree of freedom should be 1. So he said f is equal to 3 into l minus 1 minus 2j minus h is given by Kurzbeck. Let us modify this. h will be 0. f will be 1. So it is 1 into 3 l minus 3 minus 2j. It will become 3 l minus 2j minus 4 is equal to 0. We can write 3 l minus 2 into j plus 2 is equal to 0. And this is the next form of the equation. So we got 3L minus 2 into J plus 2 is equal to 0. This wonderful equation is said to be the Grubler's equation. And my dear, whenever they say solve it with Grubler equation, you can use the Kurzweil equation also because some author says Kurzweil has also Grubler's. Because Grubler's have done so wonderful thing, so much wonderful thing within a small smart work which Kurzbeck have not been able to done in six years, he have done it in six months. He said that if this is the equation for a mechanism, you know j plus 2 can be odd or even, but when it would be multiplied by 2, it is going to be surely even. And you can get 0 by subtraction only if 3L is also even. Since 3 is odd, L must be even, then only 3L can be even. So he said without higher pair degree of freedom 1, without higher pair mechanism is possible only if number of links are even. So without higher pair mechanisms are possible, without higher pair mechanisms are possible only if number of links are even. Midun because he wanted to talk about lower pair mechanism. In our syllabus also we study only one higher pair mechanism that is cam and follower. All other mechanism we study are the lower pairs. Okay. Is it clear for everyone? I don't know Jabir which equation you are talking about. Okay. So you are saying about this, this equation I feel. J is equals to 3 by 2 L minus 2. I feel you are talking about this. But for Grubler, H is going to be 0 for sure. Okay, Jabir, I feel I have given your answer. Moving to the 4 bar mechanism now. We have studied everything now. Kurzbeck, Grubler. Now the real movie is going to start. Now Sir James Watt will come into picture. So today Sir James Watt has been there for a long time in the class. Mein aane mein okay. So now Sir James Watt is coming. And don't worry, I am not in a hurry. I want to complete tone and vibration in a very nice manner. If you would be there till night, I would also be there with you. So we just want to complete the subject in such a way that this revision must be helpful to you. Okay. Moving to the four bar mechanism. So my dear, if you see a four bar mechanism, you can see this is how four bar mechanism is shown. Why this four bar mechanism is said to be simple four bar mechanism? Can anybody give the answer for this? Why 4 bar mechanism is said to be the simple 4 bar mechanism? Anybody want to answer this? Yes. Why it is said to be simple 4 bar mechanism? Wonderful guys. Why this is said to be simple 4 bar mechanism? Very good. Very good. Very good. So guys when something is coming for the first time. When something is coming for the first time. We are using simple word for that. Okay, so when something is coming like first harmonic motion of the word is said to be simple harmonic motion. So my dear similarly first gear train is said to be simple gear train. Similarly first mechanism is said to be simple four bar mechanism. So 
so for the first mechanism the number of links we are getting as 4 so my dear even number 4 a mechanism starts from 4 2 cannot give you a mechanism okay great so guys now we are talking about how simple mechanism looks like there are four link this link is said to be the fixed one it is having the same powers as that of prime minister modi ji so guys this is the position which enjoys the most of power because it does not having it, its motion but it is going to govern the motion of input and output link as it is governing the motion of input and output input is given with respect to this output is taken with respect to this so this is said to be the best kind of position in a simple four bar mechanism we can have then my dear the second this this is said to be input this is said to be output you can see they are connected with the turning pair turning pair results into pure rotation <laughs> so teju <laughs> Because marriages are never simple. Okay, there are some things which are complex for the first time also. Okay, fine. So my dear, now we are talking about the four bar mechanism. So this is the input and second is this is the output. So my dear, this input and output when we are going to talk about, this is said to be the second best position. It is like for the minister of Modi ji, for the, for the, for the, for the IAS officers, for the people who are sitting at the top position they may not be able to do good for others but they their self are enjoying for sure okay so my dear in in your house this is the position of your father or mother this is the position of your elder brothers or sisters because my dear when we are talking about this position this is said to be the worst position in a mechanism why fixed link have no motion it governs the motion of input and output link. <coughs> input and output link have motion, but they have pure rotation, which is well defined motion. But the motion of link 3, when you will see, my dear, your soul will shake. You will get shocked. Because, my dear, the motion of link 3 is not a well defined motion. It is neither pure translation nor pure rotation nor pure rolling it is a wonderful combination of translation and rotation and this motion is changing at every instant so we call it as general motion so we call it as general motion when i am saying changing i am not saying its speed is changing i am saying the type of motion is changing like the motion of this link is always rotation the motion of this link is always rotation but the motion of this link is always changing that's why it is a combination of many motion like polytropic process. Like you know in thermodynamics you have studied isothermal temperature constant. You have studied isobaric pressure constant. Isochoric volume constant. Adiabatic heat transfer zero. Then you studied if the process is not out of these four we will say polytropic. Polytropic is not a process, it is a processes. Because n can be anything from minus infinity to plus infinity. Similarly, general motion is not a motion but a combination of motion where translation and rotation percentages changes at every instant. So, coupler is having that kind of motion. But why? Because its motion is decided by the father, the prime minister and the mother and elder brothers and sisters. So its motion is not well defined by himself. It is controlled by others. This is the position of ours in the country. A common man. Yes or no? Have you seen the Wednesday movie? A bloody common man. <laughs> so guys, this position is controlled by others. That is why actually the motion is not uh, a kind of, uh, you can say constrained motion. The motion of this is a general motion. It is a combination of many others. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes, 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 yes. So guys, now when we have seen this four bar mechanism, now we are talking about the inversions. So my dear, when we are talking about inversions, what do you mean by that? If you have a four link mechanism, None of the link is fixed. It is not a kinematic. It is not a mechanism. It is a kinematic chain. So this is a kinematic chain. 
नाउ माई डियर वेन यू वॉन्ट टू मेक ए मकेनिज्म फॉर ए फ्रॉम ए काइनामेटिक चेन यू नीड टू फिक्स वन ऑफ द लिंक आउट ऑफ दैम सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू मेक ए मकेनिज्म फ्रॉम ए काइनामेटिक चेन यू नीड टू फिक्स वन ऑफ द लिंक एंड इफ दिस इज लिंक नंबर वन दिस इज लिंक नंबर टू दिस इज लिंक नंबर थ्री एंड दिस इज लिंक नंबर फोर देन माई डियर फॉर फिक्सिंग यू हैव फोर चॉइसिस If you have four links and you want to make a mechanism, you have four choices. You can fix link number one, link number two, link number three, and link number four. And when you will fix link number one, you will get different mechanism. Fixing link number two, different mechanism. Fixing link number three, different mechanism. Fixing link number four, different mechanism. So this group of mechanisms which you are getting by fixing one link of a mechanism of a kinematic chain. one by one but only one at a time you will be getting these four types of mechanism this group of mechanism is said to be inversions so inversions are defined as the mechanism you would be getting from a kinematic chain by fixing a link of a chain one by one but only one at a time you will be getting these inversions so for simple four bar mechanism when we call inversions this is the group of mechanisms but you know mechanism means relative motion mechanism simply means relative motion if two mechanism have same relative motion we would be calling them same mechanisms so here what are the possibilities of motions so my dear you know that this if one link is going to be fixed other two links which are input and output they can have only rotation motion because they are fixed with the turning pair turning pair can give you only rotation motion and my dear rotation motion can be of two types one is complete rotation other is of partial rotation so my dear when we are talking about complete rotation the link which is in complete rotation is said to be crank and the link which is in partial rotation is said to be rocker so my dear either you can have crank or you can have rocker हाँ बिल्कुल बिल्कुल जाबिर आप देखते हुए भी खा सकते हो बाकी एक ब्रेक भी रख लेंगे डोंट वरी एक ब्रेक रख लेंगे दो ढाई बजे के आसपास सो माय डियर नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस इज वन पॉसिबिलिटी वन पॉसिबिलिटी मींस व्हेन इनपुट एंड आउटपुट बोथ आर गोइंग टू हैव कंप्लीट रोटेशन वी विल कॉल बोथ ऑफ देम टू बी क्रैंक एंड सच ए मकेनिज्म इज सेट टू बी द डबल क्रैंक मकेनिज्म such a mechanism is said to be double crank mechanism you can feel it i have shown you the animation here both input and output are having complete rotation okay moving further so if you see here here input is having complete rotation but output is having partial rotation so output is a rocker so my dear this mechanism is said to be crank rocker mechanism but my dear the point is you can make input as rocker and output as crank so then what you will get this is crank this is rocker double crank was this crank rocker is this if i am going to be rotated by 180 degree you are going to get rocker crank input becomes output output becomes input if you are just reversing a machine if you are reversing a refrigerator it does not convert into washing machine so my dear if you are going to rotate this by 180 degree it will become rocker crank so crank rocker and rocker crank are going to be the same mechanism that is why out of four possibilities out of four possibility one these two possibilities converted into one only so first inversion you are going to get double crank second and third inversion would be crank rocker or rocker crank and this inversion would be now double rocker so if someone ask you how many inversions are possible of a simple four bar mechanism you will call there are three inversion double crank double rocker and crank rocker very good sk so double crank double rocker and crank rocker you can see this is crank rocker this is double rocker this is double rocker okay so my dear we got to have yes very good midun very good midun bahut hi badhiya so we got my dear from a simple four bar mechanism from a simple four bar mechanism 
फ्रॉम ए सिंपल फोर बार मैकेनिज्म फ्रॉम ए सिंपल फोर बार मैकेनिज्म वी आर गोइंग टू हैव थ्री इनवर्जन्स वट आर थ्री इनवर्जन्स वन इज क्रैंक क्रैंक सेकेंड इज क्रैंक रोकर और रोकर क्रैंक एज रिलेटिव मोशन इज सेम फॉर बोथ ऑफ देम वी विल कंसिडर देम वन इनवर्जन ओनली एंड थर्ड इज रोकर रोकर इज इट क्लियर गाइज नाउ माई डियर आउट ऑफ क्रैंक 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 रोकर एंड डबल रोकर विच वन वी आर गोइंग टू गेट विच वन वी आर गोइंग टू गेट इन ए पर्टिकुलर कंडीशन फॉर दैट ग्रेशोव हैव डन वंडरफुल वर्क and greshof have given a wonderful statement that if you are looking for a continuous relative motion then the length of shortest link plus length of longest link should be less than equals to the length of other two links if this is satisfied if this is satisfied we are going to get continuous motion when we are talking about continuous motion continuous relative motion continuity is shown by crank not by the rocker so when we say continuous motion it means there is a guarantee of at least one crank there is a guarantee of at least one crank so my dear if minimum one crank we are going to get that is the guarantee of at least one crank so if we are getting the guarantee of at least one crank it means double crank and crank rocker you would be getting either of these two you may get double crank or crank rocker if this condition is satisfied so this was given by the greshof he have done a really very hard work or uh, it is uh, equivalent to phd 5 6 years he have given of his life for this and he told us this is going to be the case why grubler was given the hypothesis because grubler said that if you want to make a mechanism with even uh, mechanism without higher pair the number of link should be even you can get a mechanism with four link six link eight link 10 link you cannot get a mechanism with three link five link seven link nine link this was the grubler's contribution so if we are going to do some kind of a research work we will not be trying for odd number of links great 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 javid bahut hi badhiya bahut hi badhiya so guys now we are going to see these conditions so first condition was if s plus l is more than p plus q for, uh, for this and for this s plus l equals to p plus q for these two condition results are similar this is a you can say how greshof have given this based on the you can say based on his experiments based on his observation this law was given and my dear what he said that if this statement is satisfied it means grace of law is satisfied then my dear if shortest link is kept fixed best link at best position it is the best person of the country at best position you are going to have corruption free you are going to have the best country you are going to have the best mechanism best mechanism is double crank this is the condition when your father won the lottery and if your father won the lottery you and your brothers and sister both will enjoy because for a father children are same second condition when shortest link is becoming input or becoming output input or becoming output then my dear this shortest link when it would be present or at input or output you can call it at adjacent to the fix it means it is at the second best position then my dear this is the condition when you won the lottery when you won the lottery it is for sure you are going to enjoy whether you are brother and sister will enjoy or not depends on their relations with you so this time you are going to get crank for you for sure but no guarantee for others so crank rocker mechanism and if this shortest link becomes uh, coupler best link worst position it is the encounter specialist working in a kitchen he can do encounters with what with foods items only so he will become useless so you have the chance to create crank but you are not creating it you are going to get double rocker even though law is satisfied 
but you are not going to get a crank in this case and that was the exception to the Gratia flow. Still we call Gratia flow is a low because of its hard work and we are calling this as misutilization. Ha, huh, this should be less than or less than equals to. Okay, so it is said to be misutilization. Everybody got it or not, please tell me that. For both the cases, you will get the same thing. Very good, Ajay. Very good, Manas. Very good, Jabir. Very good. Very good, SK, Raghu. I have not seen before. Is it clear for everyone? So, for two also, you will get the same. Here, my dear, if we have S plus L is equal to P plus Q. But here S is equals to P, L is equals to Q. So we have four links, two shortest and two longest. For this case also low is satisfied if you are going to connect longest with the shortest. Longest with the shortest. You will be getting parallelogram linkage. Parallelogram linkage. So my dear, now you know whenever shortest link is fixed, let us say you are fixing the shortest link. So my dear, how you need to check? First of all, you will check whether low is satisfied or not. How you will check? You will check low is satisfied or not. So first thing you will be checking is, okay, I am telling you in the previous slide. First thing you will be checking is low satisfied or not. Once the low is satisfied, you will check the shortest link. If shortest link is present at the fixed link, you will not be checking any other link. You will be saying the answer is double crank. But, 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 if shortest link is not fixed, then you will go to step number three. You will check shortest link is input or output. If you found them on input or output, it means they will rotate. So you would be getting crank rocker. Then my dear, if you do not find shortest is not input or output, then you will check whether shortest is coupler and then you will say it is double rocker. So this is how you are going to check. So you will move to step 3 only if 2 is not satisfied. You will move to 4 only if 3rd is not satisfied. If 2 is satisfied, no need to check further. The procedure is over. Always remember this thing. So when we are talking about the parallelogram linkage, if you will check that low is satisfied, you will check shortest is fixed. You will say double crank. But when you will say shortest is present at input, then my dear for a parallelogram, shortest, if it is at input, it is also at output. So if input shortest will take complete rotation, output shortest will also take complete rotation. Once again, you will get double crank. So my dear parallelogram linkage always gives us double crank. Parallelogram linkage always gives us double crank. Mind it. Parallelogram linkage always gives us double crank mechanism. That was the beauty. So parallelogram linkage always gives us double crank mechanism. Parallelogram linkage always gives us double crank mechanism. So that is why we are going to say them as golden chain golden chain okay we are also going to have one more case when we join shortest with shortest and longest with longest this is said to be deltoid linkage and deltoid linkage will also give you either crank rocker or double crank it will never give you double rocker Sir, if long link is fixed, then coupler also give crank. No, 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 Midun. If longest link is fixed, if longest link is fixed, you will get input also shortest, output also shortest. These two positions are the second best position. Here also complete rotation, here also complete rotation. So both input and output will have the complete rotation. Is it clear? I feel you got it. So my dear, now I am talking about the deltoid linkage. It will also give you either double crank or double or crank rocker. If shortest is fixed, you will get double crank. If longest is fixed, if longest is fixed, then you will be having shortest as input, longest at output. 
so you will be getting crank rocker but every time you will get either double crank or crank rocker you will never be getting double rocker for this case so that is why both of them are said to be the golden chain mechanisms but if you have s plus l more than p plus q you will say low not satisfied it will give you a guarantee of double rocker if low is not satisfied we are going to get a double rocker mechanism no need to think about it okay guys so we are completed with this moving to the application of now you know majority part is over now within 20 more minutes we are going to complete it because now only formula based things are there okay so we will be giving more emphasis on to the concept where you need a quick good revision for crank and slotted lever you need only formula to remember okay yes let us move further so now we are talking about some practical application now the name of the god of mechanical engineering there should be some clappings for him the person who is said to be who is known to be the godfather of mechanical engineering sir james watt comes into picture okay so i will be sharing some experience of sir james watt with you guys and you will feel like i was there with him i would be telling you the man ki baat of him okay so be ready for the same so now we are talking about sir james watt if you will search on the google by the name of maybe some people do not agree with me they will say it is wrong but if you will search on the google godfather of mechanical engineering you will find one name sir james watt he is said to be that because generally it is assumed that engineering world came from the engine and to work on the first efficient engine which was having rotation to reciprocation motion the credit goes to sir james watt the work on engine started many years be before this before 90 years of this already the work have been started on engines but that engine was having not rotation to reciprocation that was giving oscillation to reciprocation so it was not that much useful for us at that time so my dear first time beam engine mechanism actually what was what happened for that there is a long story uh, and the story says like that you know that at previous time ancient time we were having the wars wars and wars you have studied pani pat ki ladai iski ladai uski ladai idhar ki ladai udhar ki ladai at that time there was too much wars are there so there was a time uh, british government uh, it was like congress and bjp some people's war in the power some people wanted to be in the power so that kind of war was there so because of that british government wanted to make them more and more strong they called sir james watt and team and they said we wanted some device by which we can reach to our soldiers in the lesser time so sir james watt given the idea to make a steam engine which would be running with a very high speed and providing that kind of speed that you will be reaching to your soldiers in a very less time so you can provide them the war material and all so for that he wanted to make a kind of steam engine this was his first attempt which is said to be beam engine here you can see this is the crank which is rotating like this this is acting like a connection between this lever you can see this is the lever so when you would be rotating this this would be uh, this would be oscillating like this so this was connected with this kind of connection so here obviously steam is there steam would be applying pressure because of this this rotation will happen but the problem was when steam was going to provide this reciprocation for this link it is oscillation so when this reciprocation would be converted into oscillation definitely this rod would be moving some motion in this direction also so because of this there was large unbalanced forces were coming onto the walls of cylinder and because of these unbalanced forces onto the wall of cylinder this crank was breaking if you are increasing the speed because reaction would be coming onto the cylinder to piston to roll to the crank so because of that crank was breaking if you are going further 60 to 80 rpm so this was a good mechanism for 60 to 80 rpm but this was not the target the target was high speed engine this was an extremely slow speed engine because that much speed we can even get more than that speed by bull cart then why to use this so that is why this was a failed experiment 
this was a failed mechanism because if you are looking for PSU with the gate exam but you reach to IIT M Tech, you got something very good but you are failed to get PSU. So I will say it was a failed attempt because you didn't get what you were looking for. But as he is said to be Godfather, his failed attempts are also very useful and the application of this is there in oil refineries and this is the application in oil refineries like ONGC are using this mechanism till now and also my dear one more application which everyone would be aware of that is the swing machine that is the swing machine everybody is knowing about swing machine I don't have any figure for that swing machine is the second application so guys just like and share the session you know that we are at the completion of first chapter then very important second chapter will also come to you okay after second chapter the speed would be very fast because then formula based thing will come okay so I would be explaining the concept and then you will see the formula second application is coupling road of locomotive so my dear when you will study balancing you will get to know that at one time we needed to couple the wheels so for coupling the wheels we have made a coupling road of locomotive so that was helping us to couple the wheel to provide to replicate the same output at multiple places so that is coupling road of locomotive this is the animation of this so this is also an application of simple four bar mechanism now my dear you would be aware of transmission angle in this simple four bar mechanism if this link is fixed you would be knowing that this angle theta is crank angle and this angle mu is transmission angle if this side is b this is c this is a this is d and this is k then my dear you can write we want to find out this transmission angle actually so my dear you know one thing that by using the cosine rule we can write a square plus d square minus 2 ad cos theta is equal to k square yes everybody remember it or not <laughs> okay umar so you also can write b square plus c square minus 2 ac cos mu this would also be k square right hand side is equal you can equate them and after equating them and differentiating them you would be getting the transmission angle to be the minimum one and maximum one for theta to be zero and for theta to be pi so my dear when theta is zero you will be having this to be the fixed link okay and you would be having you would be having you would be having you would be having this to be the input link and coupler and output link so this will give you the minimum value of mu yes teju are you getting it or not then if you are going to have the angle to be pi yes manas are you getting it or not this will give us mu maximum this will give us mu maximum when theta is 180 degree. Sir, in eccentric slider mechanism in which position maximum trans... I didn't get your question Teju. It would be better if you share on the WhatsApp the figure. Then I would be able to tell you better. Wonderful. But we cannot do this in all cases. Ha! Huh. Whatever I am doing this is for crank rocker mechanism it is for crank rocker mechanism till now there is no question in the gate from this so initially if the question would be coming first they will be asking from the simple case only but if by chance you are going to have double rocker mechanism double rocker mechanism for that also you will get one value at theta to be zero only for the second value what you need to do for that for the second value you need to see this case you need to see this case when this will beta will become 180 degree that is the position when the direction of omega is about to change okay so this case would be used for mu maximum in that case the second value of mu so first value of mu you would still be getting by theta to be zero okay so in case of double rocker you can use it 
वेरी गुड वेरी गुड वेरी गुड जॉब इन बहुत ही बढ़िया सो दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन इफ यू वॉन्ट आई विल टेक इन दू नाइट प्रैक्टिस सेशन एवरीबडी वॉन्ट इट यस 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 एवरीबडी वॉन्ट इट इफ यू वॉन्ट आई विल टेक इन द नाइट मिड नाइट प्रैक्टिस सेशन दैट क्वेश्चन ओके वेरी गुड सो माई डियर दिस इज अबाउट द ट्रांसमिशन एंगल एंड आई फील ऑल ऑफ यू वुड बी अवेयर दैट ट्रांसमिशन एंगल शुड बी नाइंटी डिग्री दैट इज सेट टू बी अ गुड क्वालिटी मैकेनिज्म एंड इफ म्यू इज कमिंग अराउंड फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री इट इज सेट टू बी पुअर क्वालिटी मैकेनिज्म यू वुड ऑल्सो बी अवेयर ऑफ द मकेनिकल एडवांटेज मकेनिकल एडवांटेज इज डिफाइंड एज पावर आउटपुट सॉरी टोर्क आउटपुट बाय टोर्क इनपुट और यू कैन राइट इट एज फोर्थ आउटपुट बाय फोर्थ इनपुट वेयर एज एफिशियंसी वी आर डिफाइनिंग इट एज पावर आउटपुट बाय पावर इनपुट पावर कैन बी रिटर्न एज फोर्थ इंटू विलोसिटी फोर्थ आउटपुट बाय विलोसिटी आउटपुट फोर्थ इनपुट बाय विलोसिटी इनपुट सो वी कैन ऑल्सो राइट मकेनिकल एडवांटेज टू बी efficiency times vi by v not if you are defining mechanical advantage in terms of force and we can also write mechanical advantage to be torque sorry omega input by omega output into efficiency if you are defining it in terms of torque output by torque input so if efficiency is given as 100% then it's great then my dear if it is not given the 100% so that case you need to put the value of efficiency to get it if efficiency is not given you will consider it to be 100% okay okay for this i would like to ask you one question i would like to ask you one question this is a single slider crank mechanism where this link is rotating with an velocity of omega can you tell me the mechanical advantage for this case can you tell me the mechanical advantage for this case this is a gate question you know that very good manas so you guys said please take some questions from pyqs also i have taken this very good jobin sk sujish jabir shreyas bahut hi badhiya bahut hi badhiya guys very good shashank avinash midun umar bahut badhiya so guys mechanical advantage would be coming out to be infinity because you know for this case slider is at its extreme position and it is going to change the direction of motion for this instant the angular velocity of this link is going to be zero so if you are going to define mechanical advantage as omega input by omega output efficiency is not given it would be omega by zero it would be infinity that's really fine now we are talking about the toggle positions my dear so toggle toggle positions you you get to know that, you get to to know know that that mechanical advantage will become infinity when output velocity of the link is going to be zero when output link velocity will be zero when its direction is going to change like we have crank rocker mechanism crank is rotating like this rocker is going like this so when rocker reaches to extreme position it is going to change the direction when second extreme once again change so whenever rocker is becoming at its extreme position then omega output will be zero and because of that advantage will be infinity those positions are said to be toggle positions i can show you this with this figure you can see two times it is going to happen you can see two times it is going to happen one it is going to happen when this is reaching at this position feel it second it is going to happen when it is reaching at this position okay so these two positions are said to be the toggle positions okay and you will get these two position when i am showing you once you will get this position at this instant when beta will become 180 degree second instant when you are getting this is when you would be having beta to be zero beta to be zero okay here beta is zero these are two toggle position everybody is clear about this or not please tell me that yes guys guys just like and share the session i don't want the number of student to be down i want everyone to be present then only we can have the entire enjoyment of the session more students 
more feeling yes hope you are getting it guys so just share it just share it guys fine 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 okay guys okay 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 so let us move further guys <laughs> great job in so this is only for your selection so just take the benefit of it move to the next thing single slider crank mechanism my dear this is one of the configuration of simple four bar mechanism when one turning pair is converted into one sliding pair then we will call it as single slider crank mechanism so you can see this is the single slider crank mechanism uh, advait actually when we are talking about the toggle positions toggle positions are those positions toggle positions are those positions for which mechanical advantage is infinite so you know output link is a rocker like this so when rocker is reaching to this position it is about to change its motion direction so when it is coming to this position its velocity is zero so this is one toggle position second when it is coming back once again here also it will be changing its direction of motion second toggle position so one toggle position you would be getting when beta is 180 degree because after that it will come here and this position it is going to away because this is crank rocker mechanism so you can remember just two values beta 0 and 180 for toggle positions this can be a one mark question for you okay so if you see this single slider crank mechanism yes manas what you have asked this is for when we have one crank right manas all these discussion are for crank rocker only okay all these discussion are for crank rocker only i already mentioned it crank rocker mechanism so my dear when we are talking about single slider crank mechanism this is one of the configuration of four bar mechanism four bar means four links are there but this is the second configuration so we are not using simple word here so my dear this is link number one link number two link number three and link number four here there are four links one link is said to be the cylinder second link is said to be the crank third link is said to be the connecting road okay and my dear fourth link is said to be the slider i feel you are aware that if you are going to fix these four links one by one we can have different types of inversion if we are going to have maximum four number of links then maximum four number of inversions are possible so number of inversion possible are equal to the number of links is it clear for everyone number of inversions possible are equal to the number of links four link four inversion six link six inversion is it clear but this is the maximum number of inversion like in the simple four bar mechanism we got only three so maximum four inversions are possible which was three in case of single uh, three in case of uh, simple four bar but here you will get all the four inversions so for this case we are going to get all the four inversions so my dear you are going to fix cylinder first when you will be fixing the cylinder you are going to have reciprocating ic engine and reciprocating compressor both of them would be different application of the same mechanism like if you are going to have a cylinder then piston then connecting rod then crank so my dear if crank is input slider is output it is reciprocating compressor and if this is input and this is output this is reciprocating ic engine so relative motion remains same in both the cases and if relative motion is same we would be saying it to be same mechanism so my dear relative motion is going to be same that is why this is considered to be one mechanism only and i will be saying this is one mechanism so this is the first inversion you are getting when cylinder is going to be fixed when we are going to have crank to be fixed this time you are going to get rotation to rotation if you are talking about relative motion when cylinder was fixed it is reciprocation it is reciprocation with the rotation one type of motion when crank is fixed you are going to get rotation to rotation 
and you would be getting two mechanism sorry two application Whitworth and rotary ice engine rotary ice engine also known as gnome engine then when the connecting rod is fixed you are going to get what you are going to have rotation to oscillation you can see things are different rotation to reciprocation is different rotation to oscillation is different here you have crank and slotted lever and oscillating cylinder engine fourth inversion when piston is kept fixed yes the vendor saying are you there or not are you getting it or not so when the piston is kept fixed you will be getting the hand pump hand pump is also known as bull engine it is also known as pendulum pump is it clear is it clear for everyone yes bhomik very good bahut hi badhiya so guys these are the types of inversions we have seen so my dear out of these for examination this is the most important okay this is the most important sir whitworth quick return motion mein doubt hai don't worry shubham i know actually even in this midnight tonight midnight session i am going to take numericals also on whitworth motion okay so in this if you are going to attend both the session today this session and tonight practice session you would be clear about every doubt here concept i will discussion i will discuss and in the midnight session i will go for the numerical also okay very good very good very good so guys very good rishab boyel is saying infinity okay you are i feel uh, you are looking at something you are before i feel okay we reach to the inversion of single slider okay let's start it guys now we are talking about crank and slotted lever mechanism if you know in the class when i was teaching you in the youtube i have taken 1.5 hours for this but now we are re revising it so we will go slightly quickly what is going to happen let us see first of all what is the meaning of quick return motion mechanism so my dear in production there are some operations in production there are some operations like shaper and planer so when we are talking about shaper and planer you know that in the forward stroke cutting happens return stroke cutting do not happen forward stroke cutting happen return stroke cutting do not happen yesterday you have studied also if you have attended the marathons also so this is cutting happen reverse mein, uh, cutting do not happen so if reverse mein cutting is not going to happen what do you mean by that reverse stroke can be done fastly because it is idle stroke do not get confused in ideal idle and idol okay so these are three different word maybe maybe some person is your ideal yes like our president who was a scientist also what was the name remember everyone yes dr kalam he may be ideal for you you want to be like him when we are saying idol idol means nikamma of no use when you are sitting without any work you are idol okay yes very good shubham and idol this word is used for the statues okay so don't get confused very good fazal bahut hi badhiya bahut hi badhiya okay uh just wait just wait wonderful guys so moving further guys so quick return motion mechanism generally used for shaper and planer so when we are talk talking about shaper and planer forward stroke is working return stroke is idle return stroke is of no use because it is not doing work so we wanted the return to be faster so we want forward stroke it should be slow 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 because cutting is happening cutting is happening cutting is happening return should be like this forward should be like slow 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 return should be like this forward should be slow 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 return should be like this so return stroke should be faster that is why we call it as quick return motion mechanism how we are going to achieve it actually we are going to convert rotation into oscillation to reciprocation how i am showing you we are going to have a motor here when this motor will be rotating with this motor we are having a crank so with the motor crank will be rotating like this motor is rotating at a constant value constant angular speed then my dear this this crank is connected with a slider so this slider will also be rotating in this circular path 
then this slider is kept inside a inside a slotted bar so because of that slotted bar will also oscillate when the rotation will happen so here comes the twist here comes the twist that we already know here comes the twist we already know omega is theta by t so you know that omega is going to be constant for the motor so if you want to increase the time for forward stroke you can increase the theta for forward stroke if you want to reduce the time for return stroke you can reduce the you can reduce the you can reduce the theta you can reduce the theta for the return stroke so i am showing you how we are going to achieve that so my dear you just feel it we are going to have a crank like this and when the crank is going to rotate from this to this the angle rotated at this time is beta and you can feel it beta is more than 180 degree and during this angle of rotation you are connecting sorry you are you are slotted bar is moving from this to this now this slotted bar is connected with the ram which is having the cutting tool which is going to perform the forward stroke so in the forward stroke beta is the angle which is more than 180 degree and you know total angle is going to be 360 degree if total angle is going to be 360 degree my dear total angle is going to be 360 degree yes okay total angle is going to be 360 degree so when my dear this crank will be rotating from b2 to b1 this time the angle traveled will be alpha so when the angle traveled would be alpha at this time which is going to be lesser than 180 because you know alpha plus beta is going to be 360 degree so my dear return stroke would be slightly faster because you have reduced the theta the time would be reduced even the omega will be same also then also you will see forward stroke is going like this return is coming like this forward is like this return is coming like this and for this my dear what are the questions which are generally asked i am telling you here this radius of crank is denoted by r this distance between the fixed center is denoted by l and my dear we are going to have this slotted bar slotted bar length is said to be ls so i am going to say these lengths once again r is the crank radius l is the connecting road length okay and we are going to have ls as slotted bar length slotted bar length then my dear the first question would be coming for the stroke length stroke length is coming out to be two times of r into ls divided by l this is the formula for stroke length and here cos alpha by 2 is denoted as r by l and you can say alpha plus beta to be 360 degree and beta by alpha which is equals to time required for forward to the time required to return stroke that is said to be quick return ratio if you remember these formulas you can solve any question please tell me everybody is clear about this or not then we are moving further yes so i feel sonu sir is also there in the comment section uh, i feel day before yesterday you have seen thermodynamics with sonu sir and you enjoyed a lot i know and you would be soon having application also application thermo application also by the sir so guys make a heart sign for the sir sir is there to motivate you okay uh, great fine 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 so guys now let us move further let us move further one more kind of question can also come guys that is related to the angle that is related to the angle if you see this angle this angle this angle is said to be the angle rotated by the slotted bar so my dear this angle which is rotated by the slotted bar we are denoted it by the gamma and my dear this gamma is given by 180 minus alpha angle rotated by slotted bar is given as 180 minus alpha this is gamma okay they can also ask you the area swept by slotted bar so you know area swept by slotted bar will be this which is the part of a circle so we can write area swept by slotted bar as as pi ls ka square the total area into 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 gamma by 360 where gamma is 180 minus alpha 
So this is how you can find out these things. They have never asked this, but can come in the exam. Okay. Yes, very good guys. Bahut badiya. So aap logo ne bahut achcha welcome kiya hai Sonu sir ka kyunki wo aapko motivate karne aaye the. To ab motivate ho jaiye zara. Okay. Let's motivate now. Okay. So let us move further. This is going to be the second mechanism. Whitworth quick return motion mechanism. So Shubham, I feel you were having doubt in that. Yes or no? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Umar, I am telling you about the gamma. If you see the gamma, you can see that floated bar is rotated from this to this position. So this angle is said to be gamma. Okay. If you will see this complete figure, then this angle is 90 degree and this angle is alpha by 2. So because of this half angle will be 90 minus alpha by 2. So the total angle gamma will be 180 minus alpha. Now you got it, please tell me that. Is it clear, Jabir? Umar, you got it? You got it, gamma? Gamma is the angle rotated by this bar like this. And this gamma is given as 180 minus alpha. Is it clear for everyone? Very good. So now I am coming to this mechanism which Shubham was asking that is related to the Whitworth quick return motion mechanism. So when we are talking about Whitworth quick return motion mechanism, here my dear, we are having this smaller circle and the bigger circle. And we have centers of both the circles. And there we have the fixed link actually. There we have the fixed link. And my dear, at this point, which is the center of smaller circle, we are going to connect a slotted bar like this. Okay, this is the slotted bar. And my dear, at the second end, we are going to have a road, which is having a slider, which is already present in this slotted bar. So my dear, here what is going to happen once again, as you know, this smaller circle, smaller circle, here point C will be rotating. One point of the slotted bar is going to rotate in the smaller circle and slider is going to rotate in the bigger circle. So my dear, you know that when this C would be present at C1, slider would be present at B1. C would be present at C1, slider would be present at C1, RAM would be present at R1. And my dear, at the same time, when this C would be coming to C2, slider is just opposite to this slider would be present at B2, then my dear, this RAM would be present to R2. This R1 to R2 is going to be the forward stroke and R2 to R1 would be the return stroke. So you know, when C1 to C2 motion is going to happen, this is forward and C2 to C1 is return. You know that C1, if this is C, this is B. So my dear, forward is related to B1 to B2. So my dear, you can see this is B1, this is B2. So when this angle is rotated B1 to B2 with the motor, we are going to have this beta forward stroke angle and this angle would be alpha return stroke angle. So once again, you can say beta by alpha is the quick return ratio. And if you want to find out the stroke length, this is going to be the dia of smaller circle. Dia of smaller circle is going to be the stroke length. Dia of smaller circle is going to be the stroke length. I feel everybody is getting it. Yes, yes, yes. Don't worry, Umar. <coughs> Tonight in the midnight practice session, I will take two questions from Whitworth. Okay. But for conceptual point of view, it is very, very simple. We have seen that. Okay. So guys, don't worry. After completion of one chapter, I will give you a small break if you want. Okay. Uh, nomenclature in this Whitworth giving confusion. Dear nomenclature is giving problem because uh, you know that when we are getting this mechanism, we are getting this mechanism when crank of single slider is kept fixed. But in this mechanism, you have one link which is rotated in the bigger circle completely. So any link which is completing the complete rotation is said to be crank. So my dear, when you fix the crank of single slider crank mechanism, you get this mechanism. But after getting this mechanism, 
this is the crank of this mechanism because it is going for complete rotation. I feel here Jabir was also having doubt. He asked me once this and when I explained it to him, then he got. Am I correct Jabir? I feel you asked me on WhatsApp the same doubt. That I will show you in the questions. That I will show you in the questions. Okay. Yes. So I know where the doubts are coming and I am going to take care of that. Don't worry. So just like and share the session guys. Now we are moving to the next oscillating cylinder engine. This is also known as wobbler. This is also known as wobbler because it is used in small ship engines. So my dear, now we are talking about this. You can see. My dear here cylinder is joined with the help of a pin. When crank will be rotating cylinder will be oscillating like this. This was the second attempt by Sir James Watt and team. Second attempt by James Watt and team to make the steam engine. This was also a failed attempt because a very heavy cylinder when you are looking for an engine which is high speed engine will be producing very large amount of power. So for producing large amount of power, my dear, the size of cylinder would be more. And that heavy cylinder, if it would be oscillating about the pin, it would be getting fail soon. So my dear, to avoid this thing, to avoid this thing, to avoid this thing, if you see, this was having a maximum speed capacity of 60 to 80 RPM. After that, the crank was getting failed again. So that is why this is also not the engine what we were looking for. This was not giving us the high speed. You can see the animation of this oscillating cylinder engine. I feel you are getting it properly. Then my dear, Wobbler is the name given to the small ship engine. This was a very, very compact engine. As I said, even failed attempt of by Sir James Watt are still in use. It is used in small ship engines and also in the twice and prototype. Okay small ship engines and prototype you can use them and the name of them is wobbler okay and it was a work between a work by sir murdich murdich is the person of one of the team member of sir james watt okay wonderful guys now we are talking about the rotary ic engine which is also said to be gnome engine here my dear i will show you the i will show you the animation for this also you can see the animation. So here what is going to happen my dear? Here what is going to happen my dear? You are going to have combustion in this cylinder let us say. And if you are going to have combustion in this cylinder there would be a pressure wave to the piston. Piston will try to move. But piston is connected with a connecting rod and connecting rod is connected with the fixed link. Because of that it cannot go in this way. So because of that it would give rotation to the entire cylinder block. Because if you are having this as center point and this as radius, then my dear, if this is the presence of piston, if it is going to rotate by some amount, like let us say this is rotated like this. So when it would be rotated to the new position, automatically some motion in the y direction is detected. When it is coming to this position, automatically the motion in y direction is detected. So it wanted to have motion like this. For that this entire cylinder block will start rotating. Now this rotated block is attached to the aircraft. Aircraft engine and aircraft is getting rotated. This engine for the first time was used by Wright brothers in the aircraft. But my dear nowadays, nowadays this is not used. Nowadays turbines are used for the same purpose. So for these mechanisms you just need to remember the applications. We are reaching to the last point. Then we will see double slider crank mechanism in 10 more minutes. First chapter will be over. In 10 more minutes, first chapter will be over guys. Okay. So we are talking about the hand pump. Hand pump we are getting when slider is fixed. Okay. So my dear, anybody want me to explain the hand pump? Anybody wants me to explain the hand pump? How slider is getting fixed? Jabir, Shaik. Umar, Teju, Manas, Mani, Kartikeya, Kalyan, Sujish, Midun, 
ग्रेट 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 विनीत बहुत ही बढ़िया सो माई डियर वेन यू आर गोइंग टू सी दिस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू हैव ए सिंगल स्लाइडर क्रैंक मैकेनिज्म दीज आर द लिंक्स इन द सिंगल स्लाइडर क्रैंक मैकेनिज्म सो वेन नन ऑफ द लिंक इज कैप्ट फिक्स वेन नन ऑफ द लिंक इज कैप्ट फिक्स इट इज अडामेटिक चेन सो इट इज हैविंग फोर लिंक्स वन टू थ्री एंड फोर सो इफ वी आर गोइंग टू रिमूव द सिलेंडर फॉर सम टाइम then we are left with this piston connecting rod and crank now my dear this is the first step we have removed the cylinder now we are going to fix the slider like this and we are going to make the slider hollow now the next position slider will look like this as slider is now hollow so we are going to connect the connecting rod at the outside okay we are going to connect the connecting rod at the outside like this now this is the connecting rod this is the crank okay so now as we have removed the cylinder in place of cylinder we are adding a plunger and plunger rod we are going to add a plunger and plunger rod okay so definition is maintained definition is maintained and when we have this my dear when we have this my dear now what we are going to do we are going to provide extension here and when you are going to give oscillation to this then this point is not fixed this will move above but this length between these two point is fixed this will reach to this so connecting rod will move to this by some angle because of this slider is also coming up so because of this some vacuum is being created so because of this vacuum water will come up and you will take the water out and this is the picture of the mechanism how it is going to happen okay so why in some of the books they are saying cylinder is fixed because my dear if you have a slider hollow like this then this hollow slider looks like a cylinder so that is why they write it cylinder but how it is cylinder i am telling you in reality you will say this mechanism you are getting by keeping the slider to be fixed so when you have fixed the slider of single slider crank mechanism you got hand pump now for hand pump you can call it as cylinder because now once you got the mechanism it is on to you what name you want to give it so those books who are writing this in this way they are not perfectly wrong i will say okay they actually writing with respect to this mechanism actually okay otherwise it is slider for single slider crank mechanism only but for hand pump it is acting like a cylinder so that is the purpose they are writing it that is how they are writing it okay moving to the double slider crank mechanism now guys before that you can see some of the question on gresho uh what would be the answer for this one this is a question where students are getting confused yes navin jyoti rishikesh sk just like the session guys and share it with others try to solve this question then i will yes try to solve it try to solve it guys try to solve it guys yes what would be the answer what would be the answer guys what would be the answer very good bahut badhiya very good so here comes the confusion to the student i am telling you they are saying pq 2 meter qr 3 meter pq 2 meter qr 3 meter so i am making pq pq qr rs and ps they are saying pq 2 meter then qr 3 meter then this is 2.5 and this is 2.7 first of all you can see low is satisfied or not so shortest is this longest is this 
तो टू प्लस थ्री इज फाइव वट अबाउट अदर्स टू पॉइंट फाइव प्लस टू पॉइंट सेवन इज फाइव पॉइंट टू दिस इज लेस लो सेटिस्फाइड इफ लो इज नॉट सेटिस्फाइड देन यू कैन फिक्स एनी वन टू गेट द डबल रोकर मैकेजम यू नीड टू फाइंड आउट वट लिंक शुड बी फिक्स टू गेट डबल रोकर फॉर डबल रोकर शोर्टेस्ट शुड बी कपलर सो दिस लिंक शुड बी कपलर कपलर इज द लिंक विच इज जस्ट इन फ्रंट ऑफ द फिक्स लिंक सो आंसर फॉर दिस वुड बी आर एस आर एस शुड बी कैप फिक्स आर एस शुड बी कैप फिक्स वेरी गुड जाबीर बहुत ही बढ़िया मूविंग फर्दर टू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कैन यू टेल मी फॉर द मैकेजम टू बी क्रैंक रोकर वट शुड बी द लेंथ ऑफ पी क्यू वट शुड बी द लेंथ ऑफ पी क्यू फॉर क्रैंक रोकर यस What should be the length of P, length of PQ for crank rocker? You can see this is going to be the longest link. This is going to be the longest link. Yes, guys. <coughs> yes, guys. What would be the answer for this? you can see my dear if this is longest link you can see these two link lengths are 300 and 400 here if you will be considering the 300 300 would be the smaller one low will not satisfy because you want to have crank rocker low must be satisfied okay so for low to be satisfied you need to consider pq to be lesser than lesser than not only 300 it should be shortest link it should be shortest then only it would be crank rocker so s plus 600 should be less than p plus q p plus q is already 700 so it should be 700 it is s plus 600 so s should be less than 100 80 will be the right answer very good very good teju bahut hi badhiya guys bahut hi badhiya okay i feel now you can do this last part of the first chapter is double slider crank mechanism last part of the chapter is double slider crank mechanism So when we are talking about double slider, this time two turning pairs are converted into two sliding pairs. Two turning pairs slide uh, converted into two sliding pairs. Very good. So when that is the case, you can see here this is one link which is said to be the slotted plate. This is the slider one. This is the slider two, and these are connected by this link. So there are four links overall. And my dear, if there are four links, one is slotted plate. one is slotted plate then we have slider 1 and slider 2 then we have connected road connecting road can be said to be the coupler also can you tell me if there are four links the maximum number of inversion possible are maximum number of inversion possible are yes advait we have seen the numerical on gracho i feel so the maximum number of inversions r equals to 4 do you want me to repeat the numerical do you want me to repeat the numerical uh, advait please tell me that do you want me to repeat the numerical so my dear maximum number of inversions are 4 okay maximum number of inversions are 4 so 4 is the possibility but when we are going to fix the slotted plate we will get elliptical tremble when we fix any one of the slider we will get scotch yoke mechanism so my dear fixing slider 1 and fixing slider 2 you are getting the same relative motion so this would give you only one inversion and when you will fix the connecting rod you will get old ham coupling so actual number of inversion here you are getting is equals to 3 so my dear when you are going to say n4 4 bar you will say 3 when you say n4 single slider 4 n4 double slider 3 remember this you may get question on this in 2019 question was asked from this moving further when you are going to have slotted plate to be fix when you will be doing slotted plate fix you are going to get elliptical tremble what do you mean by elliptical tremble my dear if you see this ab link ab link you know when slider this a will be coming down b slider will be going in this direction 
when this a will be going in this direction b will be coming back so my dear both sliders are reciprocating like this and if you see the motion of road ab if you will see the motion of road ab you will see any point of ab would be would be plotting an ellipse and that is why we are giving the name to this as elliptical tremor and you can also derive this equation if we are keeping this road like this this is a this is b we are going to see the locus of any point p onto this road which is x comma y you know one thing that this angle is theta and this angle is also theta so this distance is x and this distance is y so you can say one thing that from this smaller triangle you can write from this smaller triangle you can write x by ap is equals to cos theta from this second triangle you can say y by bp to be sin theta now from mathematics you know sin square theta plus cos square theta is 1 so you can say that x square by ap ka square plus y square by bp ka square is equals to 1 which is the equation of ellipse but except ap should not be equals to bp can you tell me when ap will become equals to bp then what it will become when ap and bp are equal then what will become what you will get in place of ellipse then you will get a circle so my dear if ap becomes equals to bp this will result into a circle then the name should be circular tremel but the point is on this road we have infinite points so out of infinite if one point is giving us circle others are giving us ellipse we will be calling it as elliptical tremel second inversion is scotch yoke mechanism if we are going to fix a slider like this now if you are going to give rotation to this link this link will rotate to this position so slider will also come to this position if slider is moving slotted plate has to move so my dear because of that slotted plate slotted plate will be moving to the new position like this because slider is inside the slotted plate so slotted plate is moving to the new position like this so because of this you can see slotted plate is going in this way similarly when with the complete rotation it will be go coming back also so you will feel this mechanism can also be shown by this this mechanism can also be shown like this it would be having this motion which is going to be simple harmonic motion this type of motion you can find in the power hexos so if you want to draw an ellipse you will go for elliptical tremel if you want to produce sine curve you will be going for scotch yoke mechanism if you are going to fix this slider then my dear only the axis of shm will change nothing more will change that is why both the slider will give you the same mechanism that is said to be scotch yoke mechanism okay so my dear this is the animation of scotch yoke mechanism you can see this okay yes moving further this is one more example for scotch yoke mechanism i feel you are aware that if we have a circle and if any of the ball is having a circular motion if any of the ball is having a circular motion into this then if you take the image of this circular motion onto any of the diameter it would be shm so that is why it represent shm motion okay i feel everybody is getting it then my dear we are going to have if connecting road is kept fixed if connecting road is kept fixed initially this was your slider you rotated the slider like this because of which slotted bar will also rotate like this slotted bar is this type of connection if this is rotating to this position this part will also rotate to this position yes jabir are you getting it or not so if this part is rotating to this position 
then this part will also rotate to this position. Then this slider which was like this has to rotate like this. So if you have one shaft connected to this slider, other shaft connected to that slider, on rotating this, you would be getting rotation of the second slider. So if you are having one shaft here, one shaft there, it is going to transfer the motion from one shaft to other, which are at some, which are at some lateral gap. So my dear, if one shaft is like this, other shaft is like this, you want to transmit motion between them, this is said to be the lateral misalignment. And for lateral misalignment, you can use this arrangement, which is said to be old hams coupling. My dear, if you are going to have two shafts like this, flange coupling will be used. Angularly misaligned shaft, U joint will be used. Laterally misaligned shaft, laterally misaligned shaft, you need old ham coupling. If you find anywhere any difficulty, Avinash, Jobin, uh, Devinder Singh, any difficulty, you can ask me that. I will help you out. Okay? Is it clear for everyone? We have seen this old ham coupling. This is one of the figure for that. With this, the chapter is over. You can see that to have the rotation motion about two axes. Because you can see that there are two shafts. One is having this axis, other is having this axis. And one is rotating about this axis, other is rotating about this axis. But coupling has to rotate about both the axis. So when one body is rotating about two axis, it has to slide also. So if you want to find out the sliding velocity of the old M coupling, I feel you can better understand the sliding here. Can you feel it? How it is sliding? How it is sliding? Yes. So if you want to find out the sliding velocity of this old M coupling, it is given as D into omega. Here D is the offset between two axes and omega is the angular velocity of input shaft. This is the sliding velocity formula. You can get a question from that as well. A Jobin flange coupling is used to join two collinear shaft. If you want to join two collinear shaft, then we are going to use flange coupling. If you are going to join angularly misaligned shaft, it is said to be U joint. Okay. So with this guys, we have completed this. Whitworth numerical we will be having uh, in the night session. Don't worry. So now I am just showing you one to two questions of gauge type. Then good questions we will see in the midnight practice session. So you can see for this, this is the crank R. This is the distance from the fixed center L. Okay. So they are asking you the ratio of forward to return motion. You need to find out beta by alpha for this. I will give you the shortcut for such question. When you see any of these questions, you would be starting from cos alpha by 2. Cos alpha by 2 is given as R upon L. R is 2, L is 4, you will get 0 0.5. So alpha would be coming out to be 120, beta would be coming out to be 240. So beta by alpha would be 2 is to 1. Why we are getting it? Because when alpha is 120, you know alpha plus beta is 360. So answer would be B for this. Very good, Manas. Bahut badia. Bahut hi badia. And go, don't worry guys. Today also at the end. Why at the end? I will be starting some questions. And I am going to give you five questions for the prize today also. Okay. And uh, I feel uh, like we have done in the strength of material. Manas, today you would be, give, you would be getting your prize. Okay, and like we are going to have this question session, so I would be giving you today also five questions and out of those five questions, there would be one winner today because on that day there were two branches, today only one branch. So today also that one student would be getting a cash prize. Okay, so let us see today who is going to get. 
नहीं 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 तेजू दे कैन चेंज ऑल्सो ये स्टिल नाउ वट एवर गेट क्वेश्चन हैव बीन देयर दे आर गिविंग द सेम आंसर तो नाउ आई वुड बी स्टार्टिंग फाइव क्वेश्चन वी विल बी हैविंग टिल टू नाइट एंड आउट ऑफ दोज फाइव क्वेश्चन we will see the topper like we have seen in the som session topper would be getting the cash prize okay topper means i will just see uh, who are the students who are giving more accurate and faster answers okay sir when they say quick return how will we understand well dear they mention it they mention it okay witworth was the first time which was used for shaper and painter after that nowadays we are using only crank and slotted lever if they do not mention they give you figure so this figure is for crank and slotted lever only okay if they do not give figure they just say you assume it to be crank and slotted lever i feel you got it so can you find out the length of the crank for this case you need to find out this this is not for price for price we have some good questions tell me what would be the answer for this we are about to complete this chapter now very good teju jyoti umar shashank yes 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 very good guys bahut hi badhiya so answer would be 250 for this how you will start cos alpha by 2 R by L. You are given one is to two means you know that alpha is to beta is given to you. So when alpha is to beta is one is to two, you know alpha plus beta is three sixty. For this case, alpha is one twenty, beta is two forty. So we are going to have alpha by two to be sixty. So R will be coming out to be point five times of L. Two fifty is the answer. Very good, guys. okay now we are moving to this question we are moving to this question very good amir adwat rishikesh shreyas solve it now guys so we will be taking a break after i center okay after i center we will take the break okay that would be fine amir if we take lunch break from 2 to 230 okay we will take the break at 2 will it be fine for everyone 2 to 230 we will take the break from 2 to 230 will it be fine for everyone very good okay very good very good ashutosh malesh great vikas sk so if you see this if you see this first of all you need to check whether low is satisfied or not so you know this is given as 60 this is given as 160 so this distance would be 100 this is 240 so if this is 200 this is 100 you can find out this you will get 260 so if you will find out x plus l it is 60 plus 260 is 320 p plus q is 240 plus 160 which is 400 so s plus l less than p plus q it means low is satisfied it means low is satisfied if low is satisfied we will see where is the shortest link shortest link is not a fixed link shortest link at input so we would be having crank rocker mechanism i feel everybody got it very good guys so my dear now we are moving okay everybody know the degree of freedom for this last question for first chapter 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 so you know this is link number 1 link number 2 link number 3 link number 4 so number of links are four <laughs> binary joint binary joint okay but this is not binary this is ternary joint because link number 1 3 and 2 are there this is binary so there are three binary joint higher pair is 1 degree of freedom is 3 into 4 minus 1 minus 2 into 3 minus 
one is the answer b would be the answer this is epicyclic gear train is it correct no is it correct no answer will be two epicyclic gear train the answer is coming out to be two is it clear for everyone this is nine minus six minus one nine minus six minus one two will be the answer so what do you understand by two degree of freedom you need to control two inputs you need to control two inputs is it clear for everyone please tell me that so guys show some energy we need 30 minutes more at 2 we will take the break from 2 to 2 30 we will have the break then once again from 2 30 to 6 30 we will continue okay and if you want we will complete everything today there is no problem to me wonderful guys moving further to the next topic instantaneous center now the things will not be taking that much time okay first chapter was very very big that's why it took a lot of time so guys we are entering into second chapter now we were thinking of velocity analysis because without, without knowing the velocities we cannot use them in the manufacturing because we must be knowing the velocities of the different links then only we can find out the material removal rate and everything so my dear that is why when we have seen the velocity first of all velocity of first mechanism would be checked first mechanism was simple four bar mechanism you know this was link number one which was fixed for fixed there is no velocity then you see link number two and link number four they are having pure rotation motion so if you want to find out their velocity you know input is janma siddh adhikar input is the birthright so you would always be given the angular velocity of link 2 as omega 2. So if you want to write down the velocity of point A, everybody can write velocity of A with respect to O is OA into omega 2. We can write this OA into omega 2. So my dear, you will get the velocity of A with respect to O. Similarly, if you want to find out velocity of B with respect to C, you can write BC into omega 4. So these two links are in pure rotation. So it was very easy to find out their velocities. But my dear, when we have seen link number AB, which is said to be coupler, the motion of this coupler was neither found to be pure translation nor found to be pure rotation. The motion of coupler was found to be some combination of translation and rotation. So as it was some combination of translation and rotation, we have given the name of this motion as general motion. So my dear, do you know who is known to be the godfather of this field of velocity and acceleration? Do you know very good Raghu? Do you know who is known to be the godfather of this field of velocity and acceleration? Who is said to be the godfather of this field? Sir Arnold Kennedy, very good Teju, Sir Arnold Kennedy is said to be the godfather of this field. And when we are saying Sir Arnold Kennedy, when he has seen the motion of coupler, he was having a lot of dynamo because he was knowing about two motions. One is translation, other is rotation. He was not aware of much for such motions which are changing at every instant. So he thought either I shall derive the equation for this motion which was next to impossible because motion was changing every instant. So he thought why not to convert this unknown motion into some known type of motion. For that he went to the intense study of translation and rotation and when he have given the intense study of rotation he get to know an important point that in a rotation motion velocity is perpendicular to the radius velocity is perpendicular to the radius so he said if motion is rotation velocity perpendicular to rotation he invert this point if we sit perpendicular to the rotation direction if we do sit perpendicular to the velocity direction we will feel the motion to be rotation just feel it the statement is if motion is rotation if motion is rotation velocity perpendicular to radius he said if I will sit perpendicular to the direction of velocity, I will feel the motion is rotation. He just changed the feeling. Ekdam se inhone just baat badal diye. Samaj rahe ho na that that example of uh, when India Pakistan match was there. So instantly he have changed everything. 
he said i will be sitting in the direction perpendicular to the velocity then i will feel the motion is rotation so my dear when he went like this he was having problem with only ab link so to see this ab link to see this ab link specially he got the feeling of arjun i feel everybody would be aware of arjun he is famous for one thing chidiya ki aankh when guru dronacharya asked all his student that if you want to make if you want to make target that eyes of one bird then he asked what you are able to see someone says i can see whole sky i can see tree i can see many other birds but arjuna said i can see only one thing that is the i of that bird so sir kennedy was looking at only this link ab he said at some time t link is at this position at some t plus dt link is at this position this is how the position of link is changing from ab to a dash b dash and he said from a to a dash from b to b dash when we went like this then this is the direction of velocity of a this is the direction of velocity of b and he said if i am going to sit perpendicular to the direction of velocity of a along this line i will say a is in pure rotation along this line i will see b is in pure rotation and he said if we are going to have intersection of these two line then this intersection at this point i can see the entire link ab to be in pure rotation and this point was given the name of instantaneous center of rotation and the axis passing from this is said to be instantaneous axis of pure rotation so my dear if you want to write down the velocity of a now you know that velocity is r into omega about this point it was in rotation so you can write a i into omega of a b you can write b i into omega of a b if you want to write velocity of b so now with this i center you can find out velocity of any point why this is said to be instantaneous center because my dear this center keeps on changing because we got this by sitting at perpendicular direction every time the direction of velocity of a and b are changing so every time these perpendiculars will also change every time i center will also change so if i center is moving it is going to follow some path path is said to be locus so locus of i center is said to be centroid and locus when point will change the axis passing through that will also change so locus of i axis of rotation is said to be axoid please tell me everybody understood what is and what is axoid what is centroid please tell me that everybody got it or not yes fazal sk umar jabir teju manas shubham raghu ajay malesh yes 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 i feel people are going for lunch midun very good shashank advait yes devendra are you there or not many are leaving for lunch now i feel so raghu jyoti prakash very good so my dear we get to know this now so when we are talking about centroid and axoid centroid and axoid you must have seen one table for objective question that if we are going to have pure rotation turning pair pure rotation of a link about a fixed point then centroid is a point axoid is a line if you are going to have if you are going to have if you are going to have a motion of this center the centroid sorry this i center in a straight line which is going to happen in the case of rolling pair which is going to be happen in the case of rolling pair then centroid is a line and axoid is a plane surface axoid is a plane surface if i center is moving in a curvature then centroid would be a curvature and axoid would be a curved surface based on that curvature yes or no so you know this is the three dimension or two dimension view of this centroid when this is point this is line this is line this is surface this is curved this is curved surface so this type of thing can also be asked from you guys okay let us move further 
ओके सो मैं लंच ब्रेक दे देता हूं आई फील सो बिकॉज वेन यू आर गोइंग टू लंच बेटर आई विल ऑल्सो सो शेल वी टेक द लंच ब्रेक फ्रॉम हेयर शेल वी गो फॉर द लंच ब्रेक फ्रॉम हेयर Shall we go for the lunch break from here? Class will resume at two p.m. Is it clear then? <laughs> okay, okay. So we will resume at two p.m. Okay. You can take four or five minutes extra. Is it clear? No issue, no issue, dear. Uh, I feel chronology hogi because we have just started. Okay, so don't worry. Chronology tab nahi hoti agar aap abhi instantly join hue hote. Or ya fir ye course hota jab aap ek saal pehle ho paper ke. Thik hai? Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, don't worry. So you can leave for the lunch. Uh, I am taking the doubt of the student. Once centered, dear, I center is not a fixed point. I center keeps on moving because you know I center is coming for an instantaneous motion. So when I center is moving, it will follow a path. Like if I am moving, I am going to follow a locus. Locus means the path traveled by me, the path taken by me. So I center would be having some path. That path is said to be the center road. So if I center is a fixed point, then locus would be a point. If I center moving in a straight line, then center road would be a straight line. If I center is moving in a curvature, then center road would be a curvature. Is it clear, Naveen? Is it clear, Naveen? So we are meeting at 2 p.m. Okay, we'll continue from here only. Do not miss because you have already went through the most important chapter. Now these chapters will not take that much time. This chapter we will be completing in one hour or one hour fifteen minutes. Okay, like that. So we are going to cover majority portion here. Only balancing vibration we will have in the second session. So. We will meet again, okay? Advait, uh, now if you want, I will explain Whitw uh, Whitworth at the end of the class for you again, okay? Because otherwise lunch break will be over now and when I will take lunch, okay? So don't worry, we will see Whitworth at the end of class again for you.
Yes, guys. Are you ready? 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 Yes, guys, so we are starting within two, three minutes. Uh, let me share it with you, the students so that they get to know the class. So please tell me till now whatever we have discussed, everybody got it or not, then we are moving further. Yes. Please tell me, guys. Yes, Ade, Raghu, uh, Javir, SK, Pazal. Everybody is available. Shall we continue now? Abhishek, very good. Yes, Teju, power nap pura hua ki nahi. Yes, Sashank, great. So I feel power nap pura ho gaya, so shuru karte hai. So we were at velocity analysis now. Okay. Yes, guys. Wonderful guys. Yes, Naveen. Hi. Fine guys. So now we are moving further. So we were talking about the eye centers. Okay. So we were talking about the eye center. So we are continuing our discussion from there only. Great, fine. So let me apply the mic. Okay. Fine, guys. So here we are continuing. So just once again, like and share the session so that other student can get it. So we get the concept of centroid and exode. We go to the concept of centroid and exode. Okay. Already we have discussed that. Yes. Manas. Very good. Azruddin. Shubham. Everybody is ready. So guys, now we are going to see how many number of eye centers are present in a mechanism. When we are talking about the number of eye centers. When we are talking about the number of eye centers. If L is the number of links in a mechanism, if L is the number of links in a mechanism, then my dear number of I center would be given as L into L minus 1 divided by 2. Number of I centers would be L into L minus 1 divided by 2. Wonderful guys. So this is the formula for number of I centers. So you know when we are talking about a 4 bar mechanism, the number of I centers would be 4 into 4 minus 1 divided by 2. Then you would be having 6 I centers. If number of links are going to be 6, the number of I centers would be 6 into 6 minus 1 divided by 2. You would be having, I feel, 15 I centers. Why I have taken 4 and 6? Because, you know, even number of links will give you the mechanism. 
okay so that is how we are going to get the number of i centers now i would like to tell you that if there are four number of links then out of these three minimum four i centers would be known to us okay so for a six link mechanism minimum six i centers would be known to us even we may be knowing more than that but we will never be knowing less than that so if l is the number of links then minimum l number of i centers are always known to us very good shashank so guys if that is the case how we are going to represent i center we are going to represent i center as i m n okay and this tells us about a point point about which point about which the relative motion of link m and n is going to be pure rotation so if that is the case my dear i m n i m n and i n m represent the same so in that case when we are saying the number of links are four and number of i centers are six then how we will be representing these i centers we would be showing these i center to be one two one three one four then two three two four then three four so this is how we are going to represent the i centers some people can see that one two three four five six so it is always in this decreasing order some people have doubt here they ask sir why you are not writing three two why you are not writing two one so as i said one two or two one are same one four or four one are same two three or three two are same so that is why we are writing one of them so if we are hello teju so uh puri ho gayi neend yes so guys if we have these six i centers one two three four five and six for a four bar mechanism out of these thing these six minimum four will be known to us so minimum four are going to be known to us and in general if you will ask me sir which one would be known to us in general the known ones are in this row 1 2 2 3 3 4 and 1 4 generally these four are known to us that we will see from the example so we must have an idea of the known i center so that with the help of known i centers we can find out the unknown i centers okay so first of all you may have some turning pairs in a mechanism so whenever you are going to have some turning pairs in a mechanism then my dear turning pairs if you see in a mechanism then for a turning pair like this is link 1 this is link 2 you would be having i 1 2 at the pin joint so pin joint is becoming the i center i 1 2 so my dear i 1 2 will be the i center so this pin joint would be acting as the i center for this case abhishek uh yes 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 very good you can say that you can say that so i12 is going to be the i center and this is lying at the pin joint so if you have any turning pair you can directly identify the i center there if you are going to have rolling pair pure rolling motion then my dear for pure rolling motion the point of contact is the i center how we find out the i center we need to sit perpendicular to the direction of motion you know that so if in the pure rolling motion you have seen the velocity profile you know in pure rolling every point is having one translational component other rotational component so if you want to find out the i center let us say you will be sitting at this point for this point this is the translation velocity this is the rotation velocity okay and this would be the resultant of them and you know that if you this is the resultant you will sit perpendicular to this velocity this is passing from this you know for this point translation rotation both are in same direction sitting perpendicular to this you will reach here if we are going to have velocity of this point you have translation in this direction rotation in this direction resultant would be like this sitting perpendicular to the resultant will once again reach you here so this point my dear when you are reaching at this point this point is going to be the i center this point is going to be the i center so my dear this body is having pure rolling motion 
बट इट कैन बी थिंक एज रोटेशन अबाउट द आई सेंटर ओके सर दो के लिए दो होगा और लिंक एक के लिए एक होगा अरे नहीं नहीं भाई आई सेंटर इज डिनोटेड लाइक दिस इफ दिस इज लिंक वन दिस इज लिंक टू देन वी विल बी सेइंग दिस आई सेंटर टू बी आई वन टू और आई टू वन ओके आई सेंटर इज नॉट द लिंक नंबर आई सेंटर इज द पॉइंट व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय आई वन टू आई वन टू इज अ पॉइंट अबाउट विच द रिलेटिव मोशन बिटवीन दीज टू लिंक्स वुड बी अ प्योर रोटेशन Relative motion between two links is same only. It cannot be different. Like rotation to reciprocation and reciprocation to rotation is considered as one motion only. It is not considered as two motion. Okay. Now if we see the sliding pair, you know it is in pure translation. So if you take velocity of this point and velocity of this point, sit perpendicular to both of them, then these two parallel lines will meet at infinity. So you will be getting I one two at infinity. so you will be getting i12 at infinity okay so for sliding pair i12 will be coming at infinity okay i12 will be coming at infinity you can have sliding on concave and convex surface if you have sliding on concave surface you know that when you will sit perpendicular to the direction of velocity it would be coming to the center so center of this curved surface will act like i12 this time similarly for this case also if you will sit perpendicular to the direction of velocity then center point will become i12 here one is the surface two is the block okay so this is how i12 is defined <coughs> i12 means about which the relative motion between one and two is pure rotation motion okay now we are talking about this simple four bar mechanism so my dear you have this is link number 1 link number 2 link number 3 and link number 4 so if you want to use i center approach to find out the velocities you need to first find out the i center so you need to see first of all it is four bar mechanism so my dear link is four you get to know i center would be six what are those six i center 1 2 1 3 1 4 2 3 2 4 2 3 2 4 so these are the six i centers we have these are the six i centers we have okay out of these six we would be having four known minimum four will be known so let us find out the known i center you know turning pair means i12 is known to us turning pair means 2 3 is known to us turning pair means 3 4 is known to us turning pair means 1 4 is known to us so out of these six i center my dear 1 2 is known to us 2 3 is known to us 3 4 is known to us 1 4 is known to us so my dear as four are known to us we would be making a circle and in this circle we are going to make a polygon which is having the same number of sides as the number of links so here number of links are four so we would be making an we would be making a polygon which is having the four sides okay so here we can give even the numbering 1 2 3 and 4 you can give the numbering like that also i would also like to say one thing here i would also like to say one to uh, one thing here that this 1 2 solid line represent 1 2 is known to us this represent 2 3 is known to us this represent 3 4 is known to us this represent 1 4 is known to us so my dear now if you want to find out the unknown i center first of all you will make a tick mark on the unknown i center okay unknown are these through 1 3 and 2 4 we would be starting from the first row in first row 1 3 is unknown in first row 1 3 is unknown so if 1 3 is unknown you would be making 1 3 by the dotted line so 1 3 is unknown to us we have made it with the dotted line and to get 1 3 what we are going to do there are two ways to reach from 1 to 3 one way is y 1 2 to 2 3 1 2 to 2 3 is the one way to go and 1 4 to 4 3 is the second way to go 1 4 and 4 3 is the second way to go so these are two paths actually these are two paths actually okay so if these are two paths 1 2 and 2 3 so we are going to extend the line joining 1 2 and 2 3 2 and then we are going to extend the line joining 1 4 and 3 4 actually what it says it says that if we are finding out 
वन थ्री विल बी प्रेजेंट एट द लाइन ज्वाइनिंग दीज टू वन थ्री इज प्रेजेंट एट द लाइन ज्वाइनिंग दीज टू इट मीन्स वन थ्री विल बी प्रेजेंट एट द इंटरसेक्शन ऑफ दीज टू लाइन सो वेन इट इज प्रेजेंट एट द इंटरसेक्शन ऑफ दीज टू लाइन we would be saying this to be 1 3 okay so this is how we get to know the first i center uh, in this question velocity of link 3 with respect to 2 and i 3 4 point with respect to i 2 3 these were velocity calculation approach missing i will tell you that don't worry okay so my dear we got i 1 3 okay now similarly we got i 1 3 now if we want to find out the second unknown that is 2 4 for that also there are two paths possible One path is two one and one four. Second is two three and three four. It means two four is present in the line joining this two one and one four. So if you see two one and one four, two one and one four are present on this line. Okay, then we are going to have the second line. Second line is the line joining two three and three four. You will extend this as well. So you would be reaching to this point. This point is said to be two four. So this is how we found out all the six i centers. Out of six, four were known to us. Two were unknown to us. So we have made all the six I centers. Okay. Abhishek Bhavya came, and now he will be coming in the topics like cam and governor. He came in the morning. So we are having six I centers, and now what is the meaning of finding out these I centers? Now, my dear, the point is how we will find out the velocity. So you have seen we were having this mechanism. Always remember. For any mechanism, input is always given to us. Input is always given to us. This is one, two, three, and four. Input is our birth right. So this omega two was given to us. So if this is O A B C, if this is O A B C, omega two is always given to us. So we can definitely find out. Yes. Good afternoon, Midun. Welcome again. So if you want to write on velocity of A, we can write it as O A into omega two. so finding out this velocity is very very easy but the problem is how we can find out the velocity of the link number 3 because this is coupler so velocity of a we can write with respect to link oa okay we can also write velocity of a as based on this ab because a is the part of ab also you know ab is a coupler and before the break we have seen when ab reached to the new position a dash b dash we got to know that there was a i center and from that i center you have taken this distance and you have written va is ai into omega of ab ab is link number 3 so i will say omega 3 so by this way also my dear no 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 this is not theorem of angular velocity so by this we can find out the velocity of a so velocity of a is already known to us because oa is the link length omega 2 was given to us let us say we got it as 5 meter per second so my dear we already know va so here ai and omega 3 now you would be having a question into your mind like the question asked by jabir that what is this i because we have a lot of options for i we have six i center which i i shall take so my dear first of all you tell me for which link you want to find out the velocity for which link you want to find out the velocity you want to find out the velocity for link number 3 so my dear this i center should be associated with link number 3 this is the first point now with 3 also there are three options 1 3 2 3 3 4 so these are three option out of these which i shall take so my dear now the question comes do you want to find out absolute velocity or you want to find out the relative velocity do you want to find out the absolute velocity or you want to find out the relative velocity so i would like to say there are two methods for velocity one is i center other is relative velocity approach it means relative velocity approach is already famous for finding out relative velocity so i center must be famous for absolute velocity absolute we are getting always with respect to fixed one you tell me out of 1 out of 1 2 and 4 which one is fixed link one is fixed link 
सो माई डियर वी वुड बी गोइंग फॉर आई वन थ्री सो माई डियर दैट इज द रीजन वी आर सिलेक्टिंग वन थ्री इफ यू वुड बी टेकिंग टू थ्री और थ्री फोर then you would not be getting absolute velocity you would be getting relative velocity so i feel everybody is getting this yes jabir uh, manas i feel you got it so this would be a i 1 3 into omega 3 so my dear a i 1 3 is the distance a i 1 3 is the distance so this is a so this distance would be known to us once you get this distance this is known this is known we can find out omega 3 and once you get omega 3 on the similar node we can say vb is equals to omega that is 3 into a a ki jagah ho jayega b i 1 that will give you the velocity of b because now omega 3 is known to us this is the distance and once you will get vb vb can also be written as bc into omega 4 bc is link length we will be finding out omega 4 so my dear sir kennedy have given you everything now is it clear is it clear or not yes so this is how the things are coming is it clear for everyone this is how i center approach is used for simple four bar mechanism now my dear we can have the same approach for single slider crank mechanism also if you see there are four links once again Four links means there are six i center once again. So i centers can be written as one two, one three, one four, two three, two four, and three four. So once again we have some known i centers one two, two three, three four, and one four. You know this is turning pair one two. This is turning pair two three. This is turning pair three four. and this is sliding pair so 1 4 will be at infinity 1 4 will be at infinity 1 4 will be at infinity now my dear you would be making a circle in which polygon will be made with the side equals to number of links so 1 2 3 4 dark lines are showing the known i centers now we will be going for first unknown i centers for that i will make a dotted line to get 1 3 i have two paths 1 2 2 3 and 1 4 4 3 3 so 1 2 2 3, 1 2 2 3 are on this line you would be extending this line like this so this is the line joining 1 2 and 2 3 similarly you want a line joining 1 4 and 4 3 4 3 is this 1 4 is on the same line at infinity so you can say this is the line joining this is the line joining 1 4 and 3 4 so my dear both the lines are going to intersect at some of the point that point is 1 3 so 1 4 at infinity 1 3 at this similarly you can go for second unknown 2 4 to find out 2 4 we have two options one is 2 1 1 4 other is 2 3 3 4 so if you want to see the line joining 2 3 3 4 so it is going like audio book audio book or not <laughs> it is going like audio book or not So when we are talking about two, three, and three, four, so the line joining two, three, and three, four is this. Okay. Now the line joining two, one, and one, four. Two, one is this. One, four is at infinity on this line. You know, parallel lines meet at infinity. So if one, four is at infinity on this line, one, four must be at infinity on this line also because parallel lines are going to meet at infinity. So if one, four is at infinity on this line. One four must be at infinity on this line, and my dear, wherever these two lines are joining, we are going to get this as I two four. So this is how we got all the I center. After knowing all the I center, we can find out the velocities of a known point. I feel everybody got the procedure. So now we will see what is the Kennedy's theorem. I told you, Sir Arnold Kennedy is said to be the godfather of this field. so how he have said that you can find out the velocity with this i center he said that if we are having three links m n and p so if there are three links m n and p then related to these three links there would be three i centers one i center would be denoted as m n second would be n p third would be m p so he said if you want relative motion between the three links If you want relative motion between the three links, 
then these three eye centers must be in a straight line. These three eye centers must be in a straight line. So if these eye centers are in a straight line, then definitely, then definitely, then definitely the relative motion would be present between these three links. So my dear, this was the Kennedy theorem we were using from the first case itself. How we have used? What we were saying? We were saying that, we were saying that 1, 3, 1, 2 and 2, 3 will be in a straight line. We were saying 1, 4, 4, 3 and 1, 3 will be in a straight line. So the same thing we were doing but without naming, without giving credit to the Kennedy. Please tell me how many of you understood that how I used Kennedy theorem in this. Then we will move on to the theorem of angular velocity also. Everybody got it? Shall we move on now? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Wonderful, wonderful. So you can see this chapter is towards the completion. Now we are moving about theorem of angular velocity. So my dear, I can also go for derivation, but you know, we are avoiding the derivation to save the time. So theorem of angular velocity says omega m i m n i 1 m is equals to omega n i m n i 1 m. First of all, why this theorem came? Actually, whatever Sir Kennedy have given, he was not happy with that. Because to find out, to make that kind of thing, what we are going to do? We are moving from link 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6. But if in a mechanism, we are going to have, let us say, 20 links. Then my dear, for 20 link problem, if we are going from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, it will take a lot of time. Because skipping of link was not allowed here. So my dear, to avoid this, Sir Kennedy have given this equation. If you see this equation, let us say you already know the angular velocity of link number 2 because link number 1 is fixed. Then you can directly find out the angular velocity of link number 20 if you have plotted all the I centers. You might be saying, sir, how it is possible from this equation. You can write omega 20, sorry, omega 2 which is known to us. You will be putting m to be 2 and to be 20. So then you would be having this is I220, I12 is equals to omega 20, then I220, I120. So my dear, if you know all the I centers, you would be knowing this distance and this distance. Omega 2 is given to you birthright, you will directly be getting omega 20. So my dear, you can skip the angular velocity of link number 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7 and so on, so on, so on up to 19. So my dear, directly omega 20 will come with the help of omega 2. You can skip the angular velocity of other links. Sir, the equation only we write in 4 bar mechanism. Yes, 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 dear. So uh, actually when we are talking about theorem of angular velocity, it is not for 4 bar, it is for any number of links is possible. Okay, similarly I center approach also can be done for any number of links. Every time you would be doing like this. If six bar mechanism, you would be making a hexagon. But the point is your syllabus says that it is only velocity and acceleration analysis of simple mechanism. So simple mechanism would be having four links only. But still I am giving you the reason why it came into picture. Here also, if you want to find out angular velocity of fourth link, you can skip link number 3 in 4 bar mechanism. So it came for general, but we are having syllabus up to 4 bar. That is the point, okay? So this is theorem of angular velocity. Still there was a problem that we get to know what would be the magnitude of omega 20. Direction is still not known to us. So you know that when we are considering link number 1, 2 and 20, all three links can have three I centers. 1, 2, 220 and 120. So all three I centers must be in a straight line. So my dear, I want to say there are three I centers. If I am saying there are three links, 1, M and N. So with that three I centers, there are, with these three links, there are three I centers. 1M, 1N and MN. You know, 
as per the Kennedy theorem, all three I centers must be in a straight line. So we can have them in a straight line like this. Like we are having 1m here, 1n here and mn in between. This is one possibility. We can also have 1m on this side, 1n on this side and mn this side. So my dear, with these possibility, you need to understand how we will decide the direction. So my dear, you need to sit on IMN. When you will be sitting on IMN, you know I1M is on this side. I1M is on this side. I1N is on this side. So can you tell me both are in opposite direction or same? Both are in opposite direction or same? Both are, is, are in opposite direction or same? Both are in opposite direction or same. Both are in opposite direction or same. Both badia. So my dear, opposite direction means, opposite direction means, means omega m and omega n will have opposite sense of rotation. Means if omega m is clockwise, omega n will be anti-clockwise. And if omega n is clockwise, omega m will be anti-clockwise. Similarly, here if you will be sitting on Mn, you can see both are on the same side. So when 1M and 1N are on the same side, then my dear M and N will be having same sense of rotation. Same sense of rotation. Is it clear? Is it clear for everyone? Is it clear for everyone? Is it clear for everyone? Yes. So this is how the things are going to happen. We have seen about the directions now. Okay. Okay. Now we are moving further uh, to this type of question. So when they ask this type of question, they have given the velocity of A. They are asking the velocity of B. For such question, you need to Yes, guys, uh, sorry for the inconvenience. So, as I said, this velocity of A was given to us as 1 meter per second. We need to find out, we need to find out the angular velocity of the road. Whenever you get this type of question, so guys, uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, sometime actually power went for 1 minute. So, if also this happens again after some time when the power will come, don't worry, it would be occurring within one minute only and within one two minutes the things would be fine so guys you can see we are given the velocity of a is given in this direction then my dear when we are talking about point b obviously it would be moving in this way this is going to be the velocity of b okay so if you are going to say this velocity is this direction we will sit perpendicular to the direction of velocity here also we will sit perpendicular to the direction of velocity Wherever these two perpendiculars are going to meet, we will be getting the I center. We will be getting the I center. So my dear, we can write velocity of AI is written as AI into omega of AB. Velocity of BI can be written as BI into omega of AB. Okay, so this is how we can write it. Now you know that this AB is given to us as 1 meter, this angle is 60 degree, so this would be 30 degree. So because of that you can find out AI and BI. So my dear, when you want, it is given to as 1, 
so you would be getting omega a b is equals to 1 upon a i you will be getting 2 radians per second and answer will be a for it is it clear for everyone please tell me that okay yes dear if uh, you are talking okay are you asking umar umar your question varun is saying something sir can you please give best advice to me about preparation i just totally lost and confused about my preparation uh, varun i am giving uh, okay if that is the case uh, my telegram channel link is mechanical by dheeraj sardana you join me there i will share you the contact number that we can discuss on call if you want okay that would be better i feel so umar shaikh when we are talking about absolute velocity absolute velocity is only with respect to the fixed link okay so if you are talking about the fixed link then it is fine if it is not with the fixed then it is not like that okay so this is how we are going to see so there we have only one link and if you are talking with the fixed link it would be absolute otherwise it is going to be going to be relative so what about this this is o2 over fixed link this is one more type of question on i center after this we will enter into relative velocity approach very good guys so once again i am saying guys sorry for the inconvenience caused because of power cut it may happens one time more also but if it happen don't worry it would be only for two to three minutes not more than that so we are talking about this one more question this is the second type and this is the last question on i center approach then we will be moving with the relative velocity approach then we will be moving with the relative velocity approach i am sharing the telegram link also i am sharing the telegram link also so that you can join it to get the pdf to get the pdf yes tell me guys okay great 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 fine wonderful guys ganesh this is the telegram channel link there is no password for that okay so now let us see this question many of you have already answered it so guys this is a special type of question where they are saying link o to p where they are saying link o to p this is rotating with an angular velocity of let us say mentioned as 2 radian per second so because of this at some other instant you would be having this link to be at this position and when this is at this position this is o2 o4 p and q for this particular instant they are asking they are asking that the angular velocity of coupler pq this is link 1 this is link 2 this is link 3 velocity of link 2 is known to us link 3 is asked from us you will go for theorem of angular velocity i2 3 i12 this is left hand side omega 3 i23 i13 so guys this is going to be the theorem of angular velocity this is given to us as 2 we need to find out the i centers now so if you say this is link number 1 this is link number 1 link number 2 this is i12 this is i23 okay this is i34 and this is i14 so here my dear we need i23 i12 i23 i13 so i23 is this one okay i12 is this one and i13 is required for us so you know that when we are talking about link number 1 2 and 3 kennedy theorem says that 1 2 2 3 and 1 3 one way to solve this problem we have already discussed before this is the second way 1 2 2 3 1 3 would be in a straight line so 1 2 2 3 1 3 would be in a straight line means 1 3 would be on this line only then you also know if we take link number 2 3 and 4 then you can also say 2 3 3 4 and 2 4 must be on the same line so this is 3 4 this is 3 4 this is 2 3 okay we are not interested in uh, I, we want 1 3 actually 
we want actually one three so we want one three so if we take link number one three and four then my dear one three one four and three four should be on the same line this is one four this is three four so my dear one three one four and three four should be on the same line so you are saying that one three must lie on the this line so once you are saying that one three is lying on this line now you are saying one three is lying on this line so intersection will give you one three so one four and one three are coinciding here if one four and one three are coinciding you know that this is one three now so i two three i one two i two three i one two this distance they are already given a and a so this would be two a this would be this distance would be two a so we can write omega two into two a is equals to then we are going to have second thing i two three i one three I two three I one two I two three one three. Okay, I feel this is a I two three I one two is a. So this is a into omega two two a into omega three. You know omega two is two, so two a will get cancelled out with two a. So omega three would be coming out to be one radian per second. I feel everybody have given the right answer. Very good, Avinash, Advait, Manas. Uh, didn't you get the telegram link, guys? Please tell me. Uh, let me share it once again. I don't know why it didn't come. I am sharing once again. Now are you getting it? This is the telegram link. You can join it to get the PDF of this session also to connect with me. Now we are moving to the relative velocity method. Now we are talking about relative velocity method. Okay, very good Ganesh. So now we are talking about relative velocity method. So my dear, in this case, as I center was famous for absolute velocity, relative velocity is famous for relative velocity. But there is a confusion. Student feels that we cannot find out absolute velocity by this method. Some feels that we cannot find out relative velocity by I center method. So guys, it is not true. It is like, let us say, maybe Bikaner Mishtan Bandar is famous for Kachori, but you can get other sweets also from there. Let us say some sweet shop is famous for some special sweet like Gulab Jamun, but other sweets are also available there. Similarly, my dear, by relative velocity approach, also you can find out absolute velocity and by eye center approach, also you can find out the relative velocity. So when we are talking about relative velocity approach, once again, we are talking about the same link AB. Okay. So my dear, the point is this AB was having the general motion. General motion means translation and rotation both. So my dear, if translation and rotation both are present, you know what is the property of translation? Translation property is every point will be having the same velocity. Every point will have same linear velocity. Every point will have same linear velocity. So my dear, if we are saying the translation component of AB, then translation component of AB is let us say 2 meter, then every point would be having the same component that is 2 meter per second. Because in translation, every point is moving with the same velocity. On the other hand, when we are talking about the rotation, if every point is rotating with the same angular velocity that is omega, then my dear velocity is r omega, you know that. So velocity will be follow following the linear profile. So this is the case of linear velocity. This is the case with angular velocity. So every point is having the same omega. Every point is having the same omega. Is it clear for everyone? I feel everyone is getting it. This is translation. This is rotation. And let us say this value is 5. If you are going to join both the components, it would be 2 and it would be 7. Okay, and it is varying linearly like this. So this is the velocity distribution I feel you can understand for link number AB in general motion. Now what Sir Kennedy has said, Sir Kennedy was not happy with the I-Center approach because it was a lengthy one. So he said if we are going to sit on point number A and if you will see point number B, then my dear you are also having 2 meter per second velocity and you are looking at a point which is having 7 meter per second. Can you tell me what would be the velocity of B 
with respect to Sir James, uh, Sir Arnold Kennedy. What would be velocity of B with respect to Sir Kennedy who is sitting at A? Can you tell me that Ganesh, Shreyas, Avinash, Advait, Jabir, Teju, Manas, Shubham, Umar, yes, everyone, Midun, Sujish, Bhot Badia. So you guys will say, sir, this velocity is 5 meter per second, which is same as this velocity. So it means what I want to say, when you would be sitting at point A, you will feel that point B is in pure rotation. When you would be sitting at point A, you will feel point B is in pure rotation. And if you will feel it is in pure rotation, then you can definitely write the same formula once again, that is R into omega. So according to you, the velocity of B with respect to A is going to be perpendicular to link AB, AB in sense of omega, in sense of omega. So this is what you get to know about the velocity of B with respect to A. This is how we will see velocity of B with respect to A. I feel everybody is getting it and this is the concept of relative velocity approach. Now you can apply this approach to this simple four bar mechanism. You know that this link is fixed. So for that we are going to plot the velocity diagram. Let us say this is point A, this is point D which are fixed one. So my dear fixed one will not be having any velocity. So for velocity diagram I will be showing it with small letters A and D because they both are fixed. Now this is moving let us say in this sense of rotation with an angular velocity of omega. Let us say that omega is 5 radian per second. Okay. And let us say this side is 2. Okay. This is a, let us say 2 meters. So let us say my dear you are going to find out the velocity of B with respect to A. Then velocity of B with respect to A will be coming out to be R into omega. So when you will be applying AB into omega, you would be getting let us say 10 meter per second. So you get this velocity. This is the magnitude. What is the direction that velocity of B, velocity of B with respect to A is perpendicular to the link AB in the sense of omega. Sense of omega is this. So we get this direction of velocity, you would be making this velocity like this and you go to the next point B. Now my dear, once you get the velocity of B with respect to A, now you would be sitting at B. When you would be sitting at B and you would be looking at C, actually you don't know the angular velocity of BC. So as you don't know the angular velocity of BC, you don't know the angular velocity of BC, but we know one thing that velocity of C with respect to B would be perpendicular to the link BC. So if that is the case, we don't know magnitude, but we know possibilities of direction. So either velocity of C with respect to B would be in this direction or in this direction. We have made both the possibilities. Now my dear, we didn't get point number C. But we know point C is also present on CD. So velocity of C would be perpendicular to CD with respect to D. So we got to know the velocity of C with respect to D would be either in this direction or in this direction. We got possibility. We don't know omega of CD. We cannot find out magnitude, but we got the possibility. So if we are going to plot this possibility with respect to D, then my dear, we would be getting the point C. So if you are going to show this arrow, this will show you velocity of C with respect to D. If you make this arrow, this will give velocity of C with respect to B. And once you will calculate, let us say you have made this 10 centimeter. 10 centimeter indicate 10 meter per second. You measure it, it comes out to be 5 centimeters. So it means this is 5 meter per second. And if you will find this is coming out to be 6 centimeters. So it means it is 6 meter per second. And if you find omega, then my dear VCD can be written as CD into omega 4. VBC can be written as, okay, you can find it BC into omega 3. And my dear, this is equals to 6. We can find out omega 4. This is equals to 5. We can find out omega 3. So everything we can find out using this method also. Please tell me all of you, are you getting it or not? This is the beautiful wonderful relative velocity approach. 
please tell me guys are you getting it or not then we will move further and just like and share the session we are still at the second chapter which is about to complete now now my dear there is one question sometime coming as velocity of rubbing you know that when we have link number one and link number two this is link number one link number two joined in a turning pair so you know in turning pair when they are going to rotate like this then there is a relative motion there is a relative motion between this and a relative motion will be there wherever two pins are connected like this so my dear here rubbing is going to happen so if you want to find out the velocity of rubbing then my dear you can see they are moving opposite to each other so when they are moving opposite to each other you know that relative motion of a with respect to b would be omega a plus omega b because they are in opposite direction so relative motion generally will be denoted as minus sign but opposite direction minus minus will become plus how you can write it omega a minus of minus omega b so you will be getting this okay so if you want to write down the velocity of rubbing it is the radius of pin into omega of a b so you would be getting radius of pin into omega a plus omega b is it clear guys for everyone this can be asked in engineering services in gate chances are very less for this but i feel you guys are getting it properly that's really wonderful i may be going slightly faster okay so guys now i am telling you two special cases from which question will come this i am not doing because we are going to see this in velocity analysis of single slider crank mechanism okay so here my dear if you will see if you will see there are two special cases if you are going to have two links like this in such a way that this is ab this is cd if you are going to have ab is parallel to cd if you get this condition then my dear obviously this is link 1 2 3 and 4 omega 2 would be given to you from the velocity analysis i can derive it but here we are avoiding the derivation to save the time i can derive that velocity of b with respect to a will be velocity of d with respect to c which can be written as a b into omega 2 c d into omega 4 a b link length c d link length omega 2 birthright you can find out omega 4 this question have been asked five times in gate yes sujish shivnada shubham naveen shashank malesh midun bhomik are you getting it or not please tell me that ashutosh are you getting it or not so we can go for derivation also but it is not required and when we are getting this velocity of b and d are same it means this link bd every point has the same velocity every point has same velocity that is the characteristic of pure translation so the motion of this link is pure translation the motion of this link is pure translation the motion of this link is pure translation very good very good guys bahut hi badhiya moving to the second special case you already know this is quick return motion mechanism here this is link number 1 link number 2 slider is 3 and this loaded bar is 4 here 2 is crank and crank is input because motor is rotated fourth one is slotted bar and slotted bar is output link so they are generally asking you the maximum velocity of slotted bar during forward stroke and return stroke you know when forward stroke happen forward stroke is happening slowly slowly return is happening fast forward happening slowly slowly return is happening fast but that slowly slowly also at these two locations of slotted bar it is changing the direction of velocity so here velocity of uh, slotted bar is zero here also velocity of slotted bar is zero 
velocity of floated bar is becoming maximum at this position so it is coming slowly becoming maximum once again going to zero then maximum zero maximum zero maximum zero maximum zero maximum zero but forward maximum and return maximum are different forward stroke is slow return is fast so if you are going to write down the omega 4 maximum in the forward stroke it would be coming out to be r by l plus r into omega 2 here r is the crank length l is the connecting roll length okay Similarly, if you want to define omega for max for return stroke, after this we are going to flywheel, okay, your favorite flywheel L minus R into omega 2. So, this is how we can define the velocity for forward and return stroke. Is it clear for everyone? I hope everyone is enjoying it. Shall we move on? Yes, so guys do like and share the session and okay, I am sharing the telegram also in between. Dear, you know that slotted bar is having this motion. This is the initial point, this is the final. At both of these positions, it is changing the direction of motion. So here also velocity 0, here also velocity 0. So my dear velocity is going to be maximum at the center by symmetry. But in forward it is coming slowly, in backward it is going fast. So maximum at forward will be different, maximum of backward will be different. So that is why for forward stroke this is the formula for maximum, for backward stroke this is the formula for minimum. Is it clear for everyone? Ha 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 ha, offset also we have. Offset also we have Shubham, don't worry about that, okay? And if you want me to explain it in more depth, that also I am telling you. You know that crank is rotating with an angular velocity, okay? So because of that, there would be, there would be a perpendicular, okay? Let me show it with different color. I am showing it with green color. So, you know, this is the radius perpendicular. So, whenever motor will be rotating the crank, motor will be giving the direction to the velocity in this way. This is the direction of slider velocity. This is the direction of slider velocity. Okay, but this is the net velocity of the slider. Now, it can be converted into two components. One component can be taken as perpendicular to the slotted bar which is denoted as V perpendicular. And other component can be denoted as parallel to the slotted bar which can be shown as parallel. So my dear, if, 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 if this is V perpendicular, this is V parallel. What do you mean by that? The velocity of slider which is R into omega 2, it is having two components. One is perpendicular to slotted bar, other is parallel to slotted bar. Parallel to slotted bar is said to be the sliding velocity of slider. And what do you understand by this velocity? This velocity component is giving velocity to this slotted bar. So you can write if the distance from this center to this is Lx, then I can write V is Lx into omega of connecting row, omega of slotted bar. Because omega of slotted bar is coming because of this velocity only. This is just I have explained to give you more depth analysis. Otherwise, this is not required for questions. For questions, you will be requiring this only. You can see if questions are coming from this only, but this is the in-depth thing which I have just given to you. I feel you are getting it. And my dear, when we have made maximum velocities, forward and return stroke, at the forward stroke, velocity would be maximum when slider is at this position. At the return stroke, velocity is maximum when slider is in this position. So here the complete velocity will be going to the slotted bar only. So that is why 
here you can say when this v this this v this v total is becoming equals to this v v perpendicular at two places this v total will become v perpendicular at this location and at this location so my dear you can write v total v total is r into omega 2 and v perpendicular at the top can be written as l plus r into omega 4 from here only we got the formula of omega 4 as r by l plus r into omega omega 2 i don't want you to show this derivation but you guys insisted me that's why i have shown you similarly you can do the other derivation i feel everybody got it so if you got it you are brilliant if you didn't got it leave it because for exam only this is required is it clear so for exam we need only this much but for your learning purpose for your curiosity i have shown you this is it clear for everyone shall we move on to the next thing so guys now i would be asking you i would be asking you this question uh this is from relative velocity yes relative velocity approach solve this question solve this question very good yes 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 wonderful guys so just like and share the session and also join the telegram channel to get the notes and pdfs and ppts and all yes vineet are you getting it or not please tell me that very good shashank yes solve this question now you need to find out the ratio of omega 4 and omega 2 okay jabir have given the answer to be root 2 so you can write velocity of a o2 velocity of b o4 so you can write o2 a into omega 2 o4 b into omega 4 okay then omega 4 by omega 2 can be written as o2 a by o4 b okay and you know o2 a is l o4 b is root 2 yes are we getting root 2 or 1 by root 2 yes root 2 or 1 by root 2 root 2 or 1 by root 2 ajay shreyas jabir advait root 2 or 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 so jabir that kind of mistakes also can happen very good bhomik very good shreyas bahut hi badhiya bahut hi badhiya so answer would be 1 by root 2 so guys this type of question i already told you now i want you to do this by your own the hint is perpendicular to the vp is this perpendicular to the vq is this and this is going to be the i center so you already know if this is 20 this is 70 this is 20 this is 45 this is also 45 okay because 70 plus 65 is 135 you just need to apply the sign rule now okay just solve it what is the answer tell me that very good malesh ajruddin bahut badhiya solve it guys solve it we are about to complete this chapter we are moving to acceleration and then we are entering into the flywheel okay so after flywheel we will see governor after that we will see cam then gyroscope then gears okay and then balancing and vibration in the next class okay because they are related chapter so we will complete on the same pace because that is why i have kept vibration and balancing separately even if required we can shift one more chapter there because that is uh, hardly four to five hours work is there on that day okay but we will do on the same pace so that everything can be understood by even a new student also ajay krishna saying d shreyas saying c let us see what would be the answer 
we need to find out the magnitude of the resultant acceleration okay no 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 acceleration we need to find out the velocity acceleration we have not seen we need to find out the velocity of q so you can say that velocity of p direction is given magnitude of velocity of p you need to calculate velocity of q is 1 meter per second that is the given thing so you know what we can write velocity of p can be written as pi into omega pq vq is qi into omega pq this is 1 meter per second this is you need to calculate you can divide both of them then you need ratio pi by qi which is equals to vp by 1 that is what you need to find out you can apply the sign rule pi by sine 65 qi by sine 70 pq by sine 90 sorry 45 you need to find out the ratio of pi by qi tell me the answer Sir, by relative velocity method engineering mechanics. Ha, ah, you can go with any way. That is totally your choice. But I am teaching you Tom, so I will be going with the Tom way. Okay, 0.96 would be the answer. You will get Pi by Qi, sine 65 by sine 70. It is less than 1, only D option satisfies. Very good. बहुत बढ़िया बहुत बढ़िया भाई मजा आ गया यस तेजु हैव यू डन इट और नॉट मूविंग फर्दर नाउ दिस इज अबाउट द ऑफसेट स्लाइडर क्रैंक मैकेनिज्म ऑफसेट स्लाइडर क्रैंक मैकेनिज्म ओके दिस इज अबाउट द ऑफसेट स्लाइडर क्रैंक मैकेनिज्म व्हेन यू गेट दिस टाइप ऑफ थिंग व्हिच इज सेड टू बी ऑफसेट स्लाइडर क्रैंक मैकेनिज्म हाउ टू सॉल्व दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन यू नो दिस इज द क्रैंक you know this is the crank first of all when the center of crank and line of motion of slider are different then we will call it as offset slider crank quick return motion mechanism here this distance is said to be the offset okay so my dear we will see how the motion is going to happen here and why it is the offset slider crank mechanism we will see this there would be a position when crank would be here. I am making this as crank. Okay. When crank would be here. When crank is here. And correcting road would be continuing with this. Then slider will be at this position. So this is the starting point of the slider. This is the starting point of the slider. This is S1. Okay. And if you see this, if you see this, if you see this, here is an angle theta 1. You can write down this is O, this is A, this is B. So you can write sin theta as AB by OA. Here AB is the offset. OA is connecting road length minus crank length. Is it clear for everyone? Yes, your answer is correct, Jobin. Then we will see the second position. Then we will see the second position. The second position would be like this. When crank would be like this. And connecting road would be like this. Slider would be at this position. This is for S2. For this case, the angle will be theta 2. For this case, the angle will be theta 2. For this case, the angle would be theta 2. Okay. So, if the angle is theta 2, we can write sin theta 2 as equals to x divided by. This time, this is r plus l. So, this you will get by theta 1 and theta 2, you will be getting like this. Okay. You will be getting theta 1 and theta 2 like this. Now, you know, if you see this is the forward stroke. This is the forward stroke angle. Forward stroke angle is denoted by beta. 
and this is the return stroke angle which is denoted by alpha. So you can write from here that beta is 180 plus theta 1 minus theta 2 and alpha is 180 minus theta 1 minus theta 2 and you can write the quick return ratio Shubham is it clear quick return ratio to be beta by alpha. You can see in the forward stroke angle is more than 180 degree beta is more than 180 degree alpha is less than 180 degree so it can act like a quick return motion mechanism sir transmission angle in the case dear in this case transmission angle they will not ask you this is single slider crank mechanism transmission angle they are asking in the simple four bar mechanism okay is it clear kis level par chale gaye ho aap teju is it clear yes so we are moving further guys so we have completed this also and for this if you will find out you can do the question as things are given to you so can you solve it now first of all you will be finding out sin theta 1 sin theta 1 would be 10 divided by 40 minus 20 then you will find out sin theta 2 sin theta 2 is 20 divided by 40 minus 20 after getting these two values theta 1 and theta 2 you can find out theta 1 minus theta 2 i am saying this as phi so you will get something then beta by alpha is quick return ratio which is which is which is 180 plus phi and 180 minus phi this will, will be your answer you can solve it now 1.2557 is the correct answer 1.2557 is the correct answer 1.2557 is the correct answer wonderful guys bhomik okay very good bhomik shreyas both badia everyone guys shall we move on now guys we have completed it now this is a time to enter into this case this is related to double slider crank mechanism i center is it fine jobin yes 10 by 40 plus 20 it's fine it's fine maybe i have done uh, put it wrong but i feel you are doing it correct 10 by yes 40 plus 20 correct moving further guys this is the case of elliptical tremor money have asked the question on this i feel money is not there in today's class so from this also generally students are getting the doubt so my dear here if i ask you the number of link you will say four the number of i centers are six okay so you know this can be written as i12 this can be written as i14 okay no it is not correct okay that is the mistake generally students are doing that's why i have written like this so i am telling you how you will write the i center here first of all you know this is link number one link number two so between one and two there is a sliding pair so one two will lie at infinity on this line somewhere i one two is at infinity on this line somewhere very good umar so if i am asking you about this i center where turning pair is there between slider and coupler this is said to be i23 then my dear we are going to have one more turning pair as i34 then i14 would be lying on infinity like this i14 would be lying on infinity like that is it clear for everyone please tell me that okay so my dear now when you get this you know there are six i center 1 2 1 3 1 4 2 3 2 4 and 3 4 out of six i center always you know minimum four i centers would be known to us the number of links ke barabar and all the four you already know we have seen so if you make a circle and make a quadrilateral which is showing the four i centers known one then to find out the first unknown i center which is one three so to go for one three there are two ways one two two three one two is on this line at infinity two three is this one so line joining one two and two three is this only 
line joining 1 2 and 2 3 is this only then for second choice is okay second choice is 3 4 1 1 4 4 3 1 4 4 3 1 4 4 3 like we are writing for 1 3 there are two option 1 2 2 3 and 1 4 4 3 so 1 4 and 4 3 so you know 1 4 is at infinity 4 3 is this line joining these two so this i center is i 1 3 m is i 1 3 but the point is they are not asking you i 1 3 they are not asking you i 1 3 they are asking you i 2 4 so my dear to get i center i 2 4 this is generally doubt of the student given wrongly in the books if you are going to find out i 2 4 to get 2 4 we have two options one is 2 3 3 4 other is 2 1 1 4 2 3 3 4 this is 2 3 this is 3 4 this is the line joining 2 3 and 3 4 this is the line joining 2 3 and 3 4 so this is the line joining 2 3 and 3 4 if this is the line joining 2 3 and 3 4 we are getting it and this is the line joining 2 3 and 3 4 when we are talking about 2 1 and 1 4 you know 2 1 is at infinity 1 4 is also at infinity I am saying, I am saying, I am saying, where is Ahmedabad, you will say, sir, in Gujarat? Where is Vadodara, sir, in Gujarat? Where would be the road joining Vadodara and Ahmedabad in Gujarat? Obviously, so line joining, line joining this and this will be at infinity. And as per the rule, line joining, line joining these two, and line joining these two, their intersection will give us 2, 4. So we are having Agra in UP, Mathura in UP. The road joining Agra, Mathura is also in UP. So we want to make intersection between the road of Agra, Mathura with the road of Ahmedabad, Vadodara. Then we need to go to Gujarat. So if we want an intersection between these two lines, as these two points are present at infinity, and this line is there on this board. So when this line will be going to infinity, then only it can meet. So my dear, that is why I center would be lying at infinity. In other words, where is God? Infinity. Where are us? Here. Atma ka Paramatma se milan. How it will be when Atma will go to Paramatma? So if you want to meet God, what you need to do? Yes. Anybody wants to meet God now? Yes. Are, are you getting it or not? Just I am kidding. So answer is infinity for this. Are you getting it or not? Please tell me that. Wonderful guys. Bahut badia. So guys keep on liking, sharing. We are still in between. We have completed velocity analysis now. Moving to the acceleration diagrams. These questions you can done by yourself because I already taught you the concept of these questions. Okay, moving further. Now we are talking about the acceleration diagram. Wonderful guys, now we are talking about the acceleration diagram. Yes, yes, yes. So we are entering into this and once we will be able to complete this, we will start the flywheel. Okay. So we have already completed simple mechanism we completed velocity diagram simple mechanism over velocity analysis over now we are going for acceleration then we will go for flywheel then governor then cam after that gear and gyroscope this is the two days list okay so I will go until you will not say to stop me. Okay. So let us see कौन पहले थकता है आज. देखते हैं कौन पहले थकता है. पढ़ाने वाले या पढ़ने वाले. In strength of material there was one problem that we were two faculties. You were single students. So you may be thinking that sirs are taking interchange. So they are getting some in between rest. Today we and you. Me and you are at same condition. Even you are sitting and listening. I am speaking. Okay, so let us see today who is going to sit longer, me or you, who have more 
potential for <laughs> the examination let us check it so we are going for acceleration diagram now so my dear you know we were always having the problem with link ab which was coupler okay so my dear we were always having the problem with link ab which was coupler if you see this simple four bar mechanism we were having problem with this coupler only okay because this coupler's motion was a general motion so when coupler's motion was general motion it was a combination of translation and rotation it was a com uh, combination of translation and rotation so if that is the case that great job in fir mai de aata hu paper aapki jagah hai <laughs> that's fine so when we are talking about translation and rotation we have converted general motion into the pure rotation so we converted general motion into the pure rotation so my dear if we are going to see the motion of ab like pure rotation only i am showing it separately to you so this is link ab for which we are assuming it is having the pure rotation so my dear you need to understand about the circular motion there is a beauty of circular motion that whenever we have a body to be in circular motion maybe the body is going to rotate with a constant omega and you will be knowing velocity is given as r into omega so that velocity magnitude will also be constant but when this body will be reaching here the direction will change to this when the body will be moving here direction will change to this when the body will be moving here direction will change to this it means direction of velocity is always changing so when direction of velocity is always changing it means that the velocity in circular motion is always variable so if velocity of a circular motion is variable we would be calling it as it, it always a accelerated motion means circular motion can never be a non accelerated motion so there should be some acceleration who is changing the direction of velocity so my dear in engineering mechanics we see that in detail with derivation that this acceleration is said to be the radial acceleration which is acting towards the center and this radial acceleration is acting towards the center and this radial acceleration is given as omega square r or v square by r this is how the magnitude is defined so that type of acceleration is responsible for change of direction of velocity so my dear this acceleration is responsible for change of direction of velocity at the same time if there would be some angular acceleration alpha also will present it will try to change the magnitude of the velocity also and then my dear for that the tangential acceleration would be coming perpendicular to the link length and that is given as tangential acceleration is r into alpha you know that that can be derived in 1.15 hours i have also shown you with a great great detail during the uh, subject classes when we started the preparation for 23 but here it is marathon revision going on so i am going slightly faster and i am just telling you that if you have a link which is in pure rotation if you have a link which is in pure rotation then my dear if this link is ab and it is moving in this direction velocity of b with respect to a this is the omega direction this is the alpha direction means it is a accelerated motion then we will be talking about two types of acceleration one acceleration is said to be the radial acceleration which is acting towards the center of rotation and it is denoted as ar and ar will be written as ar will be written as omega square r or v square upon r it is acting towards the center acting towards center then my dear you would be having a tangential acceleration also you would be having a tangential acceleration also tangential acceleration would be acting in the direction of alpha in the sense of alpha it is given as at as r into alpha okay so you can see that ar and at they are perpendicular to each other so the net acceleration can be defined as square root of a radial ka square plus a tangential ka square this is how the net acceleration is defined please tell me how many of you understood the concept of this acceleration 
please tell me then we are moving further guys i feel everybody is getting it so this is the concept of radial and tangential acceleration so my dear in this we can even go for the four bar mechanism but that four bar mechanism is not useful for gate so we need not to go into that completely okay so we need to see now two more things one is coriolis component of acceleration so my dear this coriolis component of acceleration whenever comes i ask one question that is this a theoretical or practical is this real or imaginary so this coriolis component of acceleration is this real or imaginary is this real or imaginary is this real or imaginary please tell very good teju abhi bhi neend mein ho kya yes is it real or imaginary okay ayush very good guys whenever this comes generally student feels it as imaginary the problem is the things we are not looking at uh, you can say the things we do not see we feel they are not there if something we have not seen like if we have not seen burj khalifa it doesn't mean burj khalifa is not there okay so if we have not seen taj mahal it doesn't mean taj mahal is not there okay so the point is the point is this coriolis acceleration is the real one only we do not have that much time we will be making an imaginary acceleration and we will study it it is real only but it acts only in some special conditions it acts only in some special conditions when it acts it acts if one body slides over another rotating body so already already one body is in rotation on this the second body starts sliding then it acts on the sliding body like if we are going to have a case when one link is rotating with an angular velocity of omega and a slider is at rest yes <laughs> so guys you are getting break without asking you are getting break without asking hai na sorry once again uh, actually i was not knowing that that much disturbance will be coming today from the electricity side uh, because generally do not go in the winter days today it is happening a lot okay so just once again share the session so that students can rejoin it again so as we already have seen that when we are talking about coriolis component of acceleration this is a real component and this is coming into picture when one body when one body slides over another rotating body another rotating body okay so this is the condition when coriolis component is coming into picture so coriolis component is given as 2 times v into omega here v is the sliding velocity v is the sliding velocity of slider sliding velocity of slider and omega is angular velocity of rotating body angular velocity of rotating body so my dear if we have a case like this when this body is rotating with omega but slider is at rest 
you will say Coriolis component will be zero. We can have another case when this body is rotating with omega and slider is moving with V, we will be having Coriolis component as 2V into omega. We can have a stationary link on which body is sliding, we will be having Coriolis component to be zero. So Coriolis component will come only when both rotation of the rotating link and sliding of the slider is present. If both are present, then only we can talk about this. Please tell me guys, are you getting it properly or not? Then we are moving further. And let me share it to the telegram channel again. I feel many students are just getting the chance to sleep. Okay, so don't sleep. This is very important session going on. Okay. Yes. So we are moving further guys. We are moving further. Yes, thank you Sashank. So guys, now if this is not an imaginary component but a real component, then we must have a feel of it also. We must have a feel of it also. To get a feel of it, my dear, to get a feel, feel of it, my dear, let us separate both the motions. So my dear, you can say if we have a body at this position, this body is rotating like this and this body is also sliding with the velocity of V. Then my dear, then my dear, what you will find, I am telling you, if we have a body rotating like this with an angular velocity of omega and a slider is moving with the velocity of V, then what you will find, the slider will reach to this position. So my dear, from this position, slider is reaching to this position. And if you are going to give both the motion individually, separately, first you will give this rotation, then you will give this linear motion, then slider should be at this position. So here slider is getting some extra motion. This is the extra motion which slider is getting. And the reason for this motion the reason for this motion, we are calling it as Coriolis component of acceleration. Because if it is a separate acceleration, different force, there should be some different motion also. So this is the Coriolis component of acceleration. Now if it is an acceleration, it is a vector quantity, it must have a direction like Asutosh is asking. So my dear, I am telling you the direction of Coriolis, for that I would be considering four cases. To tell you the direction of Coriolis, I would be considering the four cases. To tell you the direction of Coriolis, I will be taking the four cases. I would be taking the four cases. Because if you will see these four cases, you will not be making any, any, any mistake in that. Okay. So my dear, if you are going to say that this body is rotating with this omega and slider velocity is this. Here rotating with the same omega sliding velocity is this. I am taking all the four possibilities. We will be having omega like this and velocity like this. We would be having omega like this and velocity like this. So my dear, you need to check. Omega is clockwise or anti-clockwise. We are at the end of this chapter. Then we are entering into flywheel. So be ready for that. So my dear, if I ask you this omega is clockwise or anti-clockwise, please tell me. This omega is clockwise or anti-clockwise, please tell me. This omega is clockwise or anti-clockwise, please tell me. Clockwise or anti-clockwise, please tell me. Clockwise or anti-clockwise, please tell me. This omega is clockwise. And we have velocity direction in this. Velocity vector is having this direction. So this is moving in clockwise and this is the direction of velocity. So my dear, I would like to say that just rotate the velocity vector. Just rotate the velocity vector by 90 degree in the clockwise. Imagine a clock, you are having the time to be 3 p.m. Can you tell me after 90 degree rotation, what would be the time? Can you tell me after 90 degree rotation, what would be the time? Can you tell me after 90 degree rotation, what would be the time? 
आफ्टर नाइनटी डिग्री रोटेशन वट वुड बी द टाइम सिक्स और ट्वेल्व इट वुड बी सिक्स तो माय डियर दिस इज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ कोरियोलिस दिस इज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ कोरियोलिस वंडरफुल गाइस दिस इज हाउ वी विल डिसाइड द डायरेक्शन फॉर कोरियोलिस दिस इज हाउ वी विल डिसाइड द डायरेक्शन फॉर कोरियोलिस नाउ माय डियर वी आर हैविंग दिस इज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ वेलोसिटी हियर वंस अगेन इमेजिन अ क्लॉक दिस इज द टाइम इज नाइन राइट नाउ एंड कैन यू टेल मी इज इट क्लॉक वाइज और एंटी क्लॉक वाइज दिस इज क्लॉक वाइज so if it is clockwise can you tell me if i rotate this vector by 90 degree in the clockwise direction what would be the time if i rotate this vector by 90 degree what would be the time if i rotate this vector by 90 degree what would be the time it would be 12 so my dear the acceleration direction would also be this ओके नाउ वेरी गुड भौमिक बहुत ही बढ़िया आप भी सुबह से बने हुए दैट्स रियली ग्रेट नवीन बहुत बढ़िया बहुत ही शानदार गाइस मिथुन बहुत ही बढ़िया नाउ कैन यू टेल मी व्हाट इज दिस डायरेक्शन क्लॉकवाइज और एंटी क्लॉकवाइज क्लॉकवाइज और एंटी क्लॉकवाइज क्लॉकवाइज और एंटी क्लॉकवाइज श्रेयर्स आई फील यू गोट इट नाउ सर इफ टेंजेंशियल एक्सेलरेशन एंड कोरियोलिस वी आर गोइंग टू सी दैट एज वेल डोंट वरी वेट फॉर इट यस सो इफ यू सी दिस इज एंटी क्लॉकवाइज सो नाउ दिस इज द विलोसिटी वैक्टर when you are imaging that clockwise is this obviously anti clockwise will be this so in this case this would be the coriolis component similarly here this would be the coriolis component everybody got it everybody got it how to do everybody got it how to do that everybody got it how to do that coriolis ka direction sabhi ko samajh mein aaya कोरियोलिस का डायरेक्शन सभी को समझ में आया वंडरफुल गाइस सो वी हैव सीन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ कोरियोलिस कंपोनेंट। नाउ माय डियर ए स्पेशल केस आई एम गोइंग टू कंसीडर विच विल क्लियर यूर ऑल कॉन्सेप्ट सो माय डियर लेट अस कंसीडर वी आर हैविंग ए लिंक लाइक दिस एंड दिस लिंक इज रोटेटेड विद एन एंगुलर विलोसिटी ऑफ ओमेगा it is rotated with an angular velocity of omega it is rotating with an angular velocity of omega and an angular acceleration of alpha and we are going to have a slider on to this we are going to have a slider on to this and my dear if that is the case if that is the case we are also given the slider velocity as this sliding velocity of slider in this way so my dear now we need to see the total acceleration so my dear first of all you know that if omega is given radial acceleration will be there so if you see omega radial acceleration will be there so if this is o this is a we can write radial acceleration is oa ka square okay omega square r r into omega square is it clear this is going to be the radial acceleration and this will be acting in this direction this will be acting in this direction wonderful radius is clear to everyone now we will talk about the tangential acceleration now we will talk about the tangential acceleration alpha is given in this way tangential will be coming like this tangential can be written as this is coming because of alpha it is r into alpha oa into alpha now my dear you know that omega and v both are there so i will say when v and omega both are there then you would be having coriolis also coriolis is given as 2 into v into omega 2 into v into omega but what is the direction omega is in clockwise rotate the velocity vector in the clockwise i feel this would be the tangential sorry coriolis because you would be rotating velocity vector in clockwise direction okay imagine the clock time is 1 it would be 4 after 90 degree rotation clockwise so my dear you will get the direction now if you will say this is the direction of radial this is the direction of tangential this is the direction of coriolis 
tangential and coriolis are in opposite direction so my dear if tangential is more than coriolis then we will be having this to be radial this to be sorry if tangential is more than coriolis na if tangential is more than coriolis this would be at minus ac and net acceleration would be coming out to be square root of a radial ka square plus at minus ac ka square okay similarly the second case will be if we are having this as a radial and this time i am saying a coriolis is more than a tangential this is ac minus at then net acceleration would be coming out to be a radial ka square plus a coriolis minus tangential ka square everybody got it or not please tell me that everybody got it or not please tell me that everybody got it or not please tell me that yes bahut badhiya everybody got it teju this was your doubt i feel it is cleared now so now i feel we can move further everybody okay so let us solve one question find out this this question you please solve it do like and share the session guys at the end we are having cleans construction to complete this topic then we will enter into the fly wheel okay so guys shall i ask how is the josh yes so i will mujhse zyada aap log thak gaye ho kya yes tell me the answer ha huh, if same direction then it would be plus if you are going to have this to be the radial this to be the tangential this to be the coriolis then my dear you would be having the summation then a net would be equals to a radial ka square plus a tangential plus a coriolis ka square i feel you got it now wonderful guys great so josh abhi hi hai do logo ka ajay and navin what about others hai huh? is it clear for everyone are you getting it guys acceleration is about to complete give me the answer for this question then we will move on to the fly wheel great manas navin ajay bahut badhiya amir so amir aap the ya main dhoond raha tha amir kahan gaye ajay is saying yes midun very good bhomik very good the answer would be zero because you know that at this position this is the extreme position of the slotted bar because this angle is 30 this is 60 and this is 30 it means this is 90 at extreme position of the slotted bar for this link omega is going to be zero so coriolis component is going to be zero i would like to tell you my dear when we are talking about a when we are talking about a crank and slotted lever mechanism they can ask you that in the question if this is a crank and slotted lever mechanism okay if we are going to have this as slotted bar like this and we have this as slider then my dear there are four position when coriolis component is going to become zero my dear there is one position when the slotted bar will be reaching to this position at this position omega of slotted bar will be zero at this position also omega of slotted bar will be zero so at that time slider would be at this position so when slider will be here or slider will be here these two times we will be getting coriolis component of acceleration to be zero and when slider will reach to this position at this position this sliding velocity of slider will become zero and at this position also the slider velocity of sliding will be zero so because of these four positions at four times four times coriolis component will become zero because here slider is sliding on a rotating body that is why coriolis component of acceleration is coming here so guys let us see the last part now and then we will move further this is the last question from my side on this topic then we will see clins construction 
and after cleans construction we will enter into fly wheels yes bhavya welcome main cam and flower ka wait kar raha hu main bhi main bhi i am also fine 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 great wonderful guys so let us move further this is the question after which we will enter into fly wheel then governor and then cam okay don't worry we will be completing everything but if still we want to shift one to two topic i would be covering up to cam today only okay we can shift gyroscope and gear with vibration because that day is only 3 4 hours work is there okay what would be the answer here wonderful what would be the answer here we want to know the acceleration of block what is the acceleration of block a okay you know that omega is given alpha is not given so there would be one radial component and when coriolis component tangential is not there wonderful shreyas is saying answer is c yes bhomik bhavya teju amir umar jabir umar jabir gayab ho gaye kya malesh shashank sujish ayush okay so you guys are saying answer to be 5 wonderful first of all my dear let us see the a radial a radial is omega square r you know omega is given as 2 radian per second 2 ka square into r oe 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 what is oe oe is 1 this is 4 meter per second square 4 meter per second square okay then you will find out the coriolis 2v omega 2 into 0.75 into omega is 2 it would be 3 meter per second square so my dear when you will be finding out the net acceleration you know both are going to be perpendicular to each other a radial ka square a coriolis ka square answer would be 5 still if you want to know the direction of coriolis this is anti clockwise this would be the coriolis acceleration both are perpendicular to each other always because coriolis is perpendicular to link and radial is parallel to the link bahut badhiya moving further guys so now we are moving to cleans construction so guys in this cleans construction shall i directly tell you about velocity and acceleration yes how to do that i am directly telling you what does cleans construction says cleans construction was given for single slider crank mechanism from this never question have been asked it is given for single slider crank crank mechanism can anyone give the condition for this cleans construction okay okay bhavya so please tell me that please tell me that this is single slider crank mechanism do you remember the condition for which we are going to define the cleans construction yes this is for tangential component of acceleration of crank to be zero radial is never zero tangential is zero minus okay so tangential acceleration of crank can be zero only if alpha of crank is zero so when alpha of crank is given to be zero then this is going to be there and it says you need not to draw the velocity and acceleration diagram this says that we can find out velocity and acceleration diagram from the configuration diagram only so my dear if you are going to put a perpendicular on a if we are going to put a perpendicular on a and we are going to extend it then my dear if you would be extending it then take this this point is p take this bp as radius and plot a circle is it like that is it like that or i have done some something wrong yes take this bp as take this bp as radius and plot the circle like this one circle this circle is having radius as bp 
एंड प्लॉट एनदर सर्कल प्लॉट एनदर सर्कल बाय टेकिंग बी सी एज डायामीटर प्लॉट एनदर सर्कल बाय टेकिंग बी सी एज डायामीटर वेन यू आर प्लॉटिंग दीज टू सर्कल्स माई डियर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यूनिट टू अंडरस्टैंड वेन यू आर गोइंग टू प्लॉट दिस सर्कल वट इज द नेक्स्ट स्टेप इन द नेक्स्ट स्टेप you would be joining the two intersection points like this and you will extend it up to the line of motion of slider and now i am going to give some wonderful nomenclature to define this is a b p and i am saying this is q r s t so here my dear there are two wonderful geometries are present we are going to have one triangle this is one triangle this triangle which is apb triangle apb is the velocity diagram for which the scale factor is omega oriented by 180 degree and similarly the second geometry is similarly the second geometry is second geometry is this rectangle this rectangle for this rectangle sorry not rectangle quadrilateral b r s a the scale factor is omega square and orientation is sorry here orientation is 90 here orientation is 180 degree i feel everybody is getting it so my dear what do you mean by this what do you mean by this we must understand that it simply means that if i want to write down the velocity of b with respect to a then it would be given as there is a scale factor of omega it means what this is ab i will write ab into omega this is how we can find out if i want to find out velocity of slider Velocity of slider. Then, my dear, you know, slider की velocity के perpendicular is this 90 degree oriented view. It means we can write a p into omega. Okay. So, if you want to write down the velocity of velocity of b with respect to a, is it clear? Everybody is getting it or not? Please tell me that. I am writing once again. If you have any doubt, first of all, tell me. If you have any doubt here, then we are moving further. Please tell me that. आयुष मानस भव्या तेजू मलेश श्रेयस श्रेयस भौमिक सुजीश शशांक प्लीज टेल मी इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट हेयर प्लीज टेल मी इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट हेयर सो हेयर स्केल फैक्टर इज ओमेगा हेयर स्केल फैक्टर इज ओमेगा स्क्वेयर हेयर एंगल इज 90 डिग्री हेयर एंगल इज 180 एटी डिग्री टिल नाउ ऑन दिस देर इज नो क्वेश्चन बट इफ सम क्वेश्चन इज गोइंग टू बी फ्रेम्ड you must remember these two datas from this only the question will come i feel everybody got it now we are talking about kinematic analysis of single slider crank mechanism kinematic analysis of single slider crank mechanism are you ready for that this is the starting point of flywheel kinematic analysis of single slider crank mechanism kinematic analysis of single slider crank mechanism this is the starting point of the flywheel that is why we have not seen the velocity diagram for this because we need the formulas which we are going to get from this method so my dear you know that one thing this is the crank of radius r this is the connecting rod of length l connecting rod angle is beta crank angle is theta okay and my dear when we are talking about this position b when you would be moving from b to b1 when you would be moving from b to b1 this is let us say is the displacement of piston so my dear if this is the displacement of piston x we can find out x from the trigonometry and then we can also find out the velocity and acceleration so after doing all the calculations after doing all the calculations what we would be getting i am showing you the direct formula this is the formula for displacement of piston anybody wants this derivation as you know we are skipping the derivation otherwise it would be wasting the time so we are going to have r into 1 minus cos theta 
प्लस एन माइनस स्क्वेयर रूट ऑफ एन स्क्र माइनस साइन स्क्र थीटा इज इट क्लियर फॉर एवरी वन दिस इज द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर द डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ पिस्टन सो माई डियर नाउ इफ वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट विलोसिटी वी नीड टू फाइंड आउट डी एक्स बाई डी टी वी कैन ऑल्सो राइट इट एज डी एक्स बाई डी थीटा इन टू डी थीटा बाई डी टी वी कैन ऑल्सो राइट इट एज ओमेगा इन टू डी एक्स अपॉन डी थीटा सो वेन यू वुड बी पुटिंग एंड डिफरेंशिएटिंग दिस विद रिस्पेक्ट टू थीटा देन माई डियर यू वुड बी गेटिंग दिस यू वुड बी गेटिंग दिस so after differentiating this you would be getting this as the velocity of the piston then when you will differentiate you will get acceleration of the piston after getting this acceleration you can find out angular acceleration of connecting rod this you would be getting by putting l sin beta is equals to r sin theta i feel you know this is the vertical component So when you would be putting L sine beta is equals to R sine theta, then you would be getting this, and by putting the values, you would be getting the connecting rod acceleration like this, and connecting rod alpha like this, minus omega square and by sine theta. So shall I go into the derivation, or you understood that? I feel here we shall not waste the time by going into the derivations. otherwise i have done these derivations in many sessions on youtube also you can see that if you want is it clear for everyone everybody clear about this formula can you tell me what is the value of n here yes bhomik what is the value of n here can you tell me what is the value of n here wonderful midun bahut badhiya can you tell me the value of n here can you tell me the value of n here very good sujish रघु मिदुन बहुत ही बढ़िया एन इज एल अपॉन आर एल इज द लेंथ ऑफ कनेक्टिंग रोड आर इज द क्रेंक रेडियस बहुत बढ़िया वंडरफुल गाइस सो गाइस नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द डायनामिक एनालिसिस सो इन द डायनामिक एनालिसिस वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द फोर्सेस सो यू नो माय डियर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल सी द फोर्सेस ऑन टू द पिस्टन एवरीबॉडी रिमेंबर दैट इफ वी हैव अ पिस्टन लाइक दिस इफ वी हैव अ पिस्टन लाइक दिस on this side there would be some gas because of it some pressure p1 will be coming this side may be some air is there or in case of steam engine some steam will be there because of that pressure would be p2 so my dear we are taking a case when slider is moving in this direction so when slider is moving in this direction the first force is said to be the gas force which is given as p1 a1 minus p2 a2 so force in the direction of motion will be positive opposite to the direction of motion would be negative so p1 a1 minus p2 a2 is the gas force acting there my dear something called as inertia force also inertia force fi is given as m you know that it is going to be m into m into the acceleration we have found out and what is acceleration we have found out acceleration of piston it is m r omega square is it it is going to be cos theta plus cos 2 theta by n this is the inertia force okay and my dear what is inertia inertia is always going to oppose so my dear till now if you are going to find out the force on to the piston we can write it as f gas it is going to oppose so f inertia would be the minus force i feel everybody is getting it is there any buffering guys Sir, velocity of slider is maximum at ninety or sixty-seven point eight something. Dear, actually, for that I have given you two conditions. When you are given the n value, then you need to find out by differentiation. But if n values are not known to us, okay. So for that case, the things would be varying like that. We have done questions on that. I, I feel so. Yes or not? we have done questions from that i feel so okay then my dear when we are talking about friction force friction is always opposing force so if you are going to consider this then force on the piston would be gas force minus inertia force minus friction in general when you are writing velocity of piston it is r omega sin theta plus sin 2 theta upon 2n okay so we have seen when we are going to put uh, like 
if you are going to have any degree, uh, value near than 90 when you are going to put that so if you want to find out the maximum value when everything is given then you must go for dvp by d theta to be zero when you will be going by this then you would be getting the maximum value of velocity okay is it clear so if you are not given the n value then for in general case we are going to write it by 90 degree i feel we have seen that okay great 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 so this is the net force on the piston will be like this then we are going to have piston effort which is denoted by f piston it can be written as the gas force minus inertia force minus friction force and we would be having plus minus gravity force which is given by m into g now we need to see what is the gravity force we need to see what is the gravity force so if this is the piston like this this is the connecting rod this is the crank okay like this for this case you know this is the direction of motion of piston gravity force is also acting like this so that is why for such cases we would be considering the plus sign for the gravity force okay but if we have a case like this if we have a case like this like this if we have a case like this then my dear when piston is moving in this way gravity force is acting in this way this time gravity force is acting in opposite direction to the direction of motion so for this case negative sign will be coming so we are considering both of them but if you see the history of gate examination my dear if you see the history of gate examination till now whenever they have asked it then the net force they have given you directly means you need not to calculate by p1 a1 minus p2 a2 they are giving you this force directly so my dear now when this net force is directly given onto the piston obviously obviously there would be the force transfer to the connecting rod so when the force would be transferred to the connecting rod like this then my dear this connecting rod will be transferring the force to the piston as well so when the force would be transferred to the piston it would be having two components one component will be along the along the crank and second component would be perpendicular to the crank so my dear this component which is along the crank second is perpendicular to the crank this along the crank is said to be the radial component and perpendicular to the crank is said to be the tangential component and my dear you can see one thing that if this angle is beta this angle is theta then you can say this total angle is going to be theta plus beta so from that you can write ft ft is nothing but fcr this is the connecting road force into sine component of theta plus beta and you can also write radial component to be fcr into cos component of theta plus beta you also know that if we have net force this then my dear this is the connecting rod force we can also write f net is equals to fcr cos beta because here will be the cos component so fcr is nothing but f net by cos beta now the problem is always f net will be given to you beta will be given to you if beta is given to you f net is given to you you can find out fcr so you can write down the tangential force as f net by cos beta f net by cos beta into sin theta plus beta so when we have this value sin theta plus beta then you can find out the twisting moment to be ft into r so ft into r is given as a twisting moment for this i feel everybody is getting how we can find out the twisting moment please tell me uh, i feel teju you got when gravity force will be positive and gravity force will be negative okay so i may be fumbling somehow because speaking from last six hours okay so itna to hota hai okay so don't worry is it clear twisting moment is ft into r everybody got it please tell me that wonderful guys very good midun so my dear now if you will see twisting moment is 
given as i into alpha and this is given as f net upon cos beta into sin theta plus beta into sin theta plus beta into r okay because this is ft into r now my dear you will be telling me now my dear you will be telling me one thing you will be telling me one thing you will be telling me one thing that theta and beta are they constant or variable theta and beta are constant or variable please tell me that theta and beta are constant or variable please tell me that theta and beta are they function of time or not please tell me that with that time theta will change or not with that time beta will change or not wonderful guys yes shashank are you there or not very good ashutosh bahut hi badhiya bahut hi badhiya so my dear yes theta and beta are the function of time theta and beta are the function of time so if theta and beta are the function of time we can say i into alpha will also be a function of time but we know that i is always a constant i is always a constant then we can say yes alpha is a function of time we can say yes alpha is a function of time if alpha is a function of time my dear we can say that acceleration is changing with time acceleration is changing with time and if acceleration is changing with time for such condition we will say jerk will exist jerk will be there we will say for such cases jerk will be there and my dear if jerk is there if jerk is there it produces vibration because of that your crank shaft would be vibrating like this and if you are going to attach that vibrating crank shaft to the entire assembly it may create blunder and within 30 40 minutes your crank shaft may get broken and if crank shaft is going to break like that every time we cannot go for the change of entire assembly because crank shaft plus crank plus connecting rod per slider all these are the same same one 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 body only so if you are going to have breaking of crankshaft you need to change entire assembly my dear and if you are going to change this entire assembly my dear for that case it is going to be very very costly and time taking just imagine you have run the bike for 60 km okay you need to go to 60 km and after 20 km you need you get the breaking of shaft you need to stop the bike for 3 days there so then such bikes we don't want better than that is bull cart at least we are going continuously with our will and all we need not to stop at some service center again and again so my dear for that purpose we wanted some energy absorbing device because of that because this alpha is becoming variable torque is becoming variable we need some device which can absorb the fluctuation so we needed some instantaneous fluctuation control devices so we needed some instantaneous fluctuation control devices so we needed some instantaneous 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 fluctuations control devices instantaneous fluctuations control devices and my dear we are going to see there are two devices which we are going to see as per our syllabus can you tell me the name of those two devices can you tell me the name of those two devices which we are going to study yes can you tell me the name of those two devices can you tell me the name of those two devices
yes so guys please tell me am i properly audible and visible to all of you or not please tell me that yes <laughs> sorry guys i feel i don't know today what is going to happen what is happening again and again again and again so uh, same uh, problem this this doesn't happen generally today it is coming <laughs> sorry for that guys so guys uh, don't worry uh, let us uh, before we go continue the discussion on flywheel so today we have seen the simple mechanism one thing then second thing we have seen velocity analysis then we have seen acceleration analysis then we have seen kinematic and dynamic analysis so we have completed these four chapters now we are moving to the next chapter that is flywheel after that we are left with governor then we are left with gyroscope cam okay so these are the chapters we are left with gear okay so uh, please tell me guys are you enjoying the thing okay just uh, don't talk about the electricity problem which happened other than that have you enjoyed the session uh, was it useful uh, time waste to nahi laga aapko ye was it a good revision that i want to know is it clear uh, shashank malesh vijay teju manas uh, maybe some students are gone because of this problem yes tell me midun great 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 so guys uh, let us continue with flywheel now what we are going to do what i thought is actually what i found is majority of the students are interested in governor gyroscopes and camps these are the three topics where students are more interested into okay yes great great ajruddin great uh, ganesh bahut badhiya bhavya so majority of the students are interested in these three topics okay so first let us complete the flywheel after completion of flywheel i will ask you whether you want them to continue today only otherwise uh, we will go for when when the vibration class we are planning on that day we will be starting from governor gyroscope and cam i am not saying i will start with vibration and then at the end i will be going for those topic otherwise you will feel sir every time you are leaving these three topics so not like that after completion of flywheel as the problem is coming again and again so in the second part when we are already going to have vibration we will be starting with the cam okay then governor then balancing then vibration and then gyroscope okay so i would try to uh, take that session with proper preparation means electricity problem <laughs> should not be there okay is it clear for everyone shall we move on now shall we move on now with the flywheel yes everybody is it clear so bhavya don't worry that session will be coming in 2 3 days only if today is 7th we would be coming on 9th or 10th not more than that so tuesday or wednesday i am going to take the second session okay so it is not going to be after 15th okay great 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 so i am taking this decision on behalf of you only okay so uh, manas everything i don't feel once again if uh, same issue will come then there would be problem okay so can we put gears in next because i having yes 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 i would be having gears in next so we will just complete flywheel today last topic is flywheel okay because if the same problem will come again then demotivation comes to the student that why it is happening every time okay okay malesh i will try to take that practice session slightly before in camps formula initial part is enough that formula initial part is enough teju for cam okay yes sir camps b ha dekhte hain manas agar koi problem nahi aayi then we will continue okay if there would be no problem then we will continue so let me share the session by mentioning that flywheel is starting okay 
so that if anybody is interested in, uh, in that topic he can join it okay otherwise don't worry we are soon going to meet uh, for the second session also it would not be too much delayed so don't worry i feel on tuesday or wednesday we would be having that so let us continue with that you also share it uh, with your friends so that if anybody is interested in that topic they can get to know okay flywheel starting fine guys great 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 wonderful guys wonderful guys so guys first of all tell me tonight you want practice session or not today shall we go for the practice session or not okay 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 even i have one better idea even i have one better idea so like today we are covering up to flywheel okay then second session we will go for governor gear cam gyroscope and balancing and then md and vibration we will go together okay because both are small topics so guys this is this is this is this is the uh, opinion of mine if everybody is agreed on that i am continuing with flywheel please tell me is it clear yes so today we will be covering up to flywheel and tonight we will be having a practice session also so uh, can we go for a practice session at 11.30 as per your request I will try to change the time. 11.30 pm would be fine. Great because there are two points. I don't want to just take it in such a way that you are not going to get something from that. I would be going on the same pace one thing. So everybody should be benefited from that one thing. Second thing my dear I need to cover every topic at the same level. Okay. So that is why if you are coming for this two more days. Your tom plus vibration plus md would be at top level. I am saying that. And if you are going to talk about the weightage of this. Tom vibration plus md. This is going to be more than production for sure. You are going to reach. 17 to 18 marks more than production okay and that is also with surety of solving the problem so i feel everybody agreed now let us start okay 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 manas let us uh, continue with the flywheel first so my dear now we are talking about the successful attempt by sir james watt Single slider crank mechanism was the successful attempt by Sir James Watt. It is also given the name of double acting steam engine. Why it was given the name of double acting steam engine? Because it was acting from both the sides. So we are going to have a cylinder. Like this is the cylinder. In this slide, you are going to put the steam from this side first. This steam is coming with high enthalpy, high energy, which is pushing the piston on other side. When piston is reaching to this position, we are providing the steam from here. And this steam will again applying the pressure and piston is again moving to the other side. And the steam for the other side, which is becoming low enthalpy is going out. So the point is when piston is going in this direction, work is done. When piston is coming back, work is done. So we are going to have not one but two working stroke. We are not going to have one but two power stroke. So guys, here we are getting actually two power strokes. We are going to get here two power stroke actually. We are going to have two power strokes actually. Okay. So when we are going to get two power strokes, two power strokes, that's why it is said to be double acting steam engine. 
and when we are going to make a t theta diagram for this we are going to have this diagram t theta diagram is said to be the turning moment diagram on which y axis is having turning moment x axis is having the crank angle so you know that my dear for this case we are going to get this type of curve and you can see here the curve shows torque is variable so you can get torque is a function of theta so you have just seen because of that alpha is a function of theta and because of that acceleration is variable jerk is coming crankshaft is having this type of vibration and to absorb those vibration we wanted some instantaneous fluctuation control device which is said to be flywheel and i would also like to tell you when we are talking about instantaneous fluctuation control devices instantaneous fluctuation control devices then my dear there are two devices when we are talking about one type of device is going to control one type of device is going to control fluctuations from inside and the device which controls the fluctuation from inside is said to be flywheel what do you mean by fluctuations com coming from inside you know that there is a suction stroke compression stroke power stroke and exhaust stroke in ic engine in power stroke we are getting the power in other three stroke we are not getting the power even we need to spend some amount of power so when we are getting here and we are spending other times obviously variations would be there it is similar to on the first of every month you are getting pocket money from your parents on other day you are going to spend them so my dear this is what is going to happen and because of these variation we need a fluctuation control device which is said to be flywheel what does flywheel do flywheel is going to store the energy during the power stroke and going to provide it during the other strokes similarly when we are talking about the second it is going to it is going to it is going to control the fluctuations coming from outside the cycle coming from outside the cycle for that i would give you an example like my dear let us say here electricity has gone definitely some generator was running because of which the electricity came so my dear when generator was coming let us say right now these are the electricity board everything is running you know that after some time i feel it is literally hot so i thought to start ac so when i want to start ac my dear now that generator is not knowing that i am going to start ac because when i will be starting ac there would be an increase in power load on to that generator so that generator is not aware of that so it is not like that i would be first doing a call to the person that be informed to the generator that i am going to start my ac load will increase i am not going to do that i will be switching on the ac generator would be immediately getting the effect of load increase load increase will happen you know that when torque will increase speed will reduce change of speed is said to be fluctuations so now fluctuations are coming because of change of external load like i started ac after some time i thought it is too cold i will be switching off the ac because of that the load on load on load on generator will get reduced so my dear this is how the loads are changing from outside the cycle for that generators ic engine cycle is not responsible for this i am responsible my changes of mood are responsible so for that we need a device that device is said to be the governor that device is said to be the governor okay so my dear right now we will be talking about flywheel only in the next session we will start from the governor only so right now we are talking about flywheel so if someone ask you flywheel is used for you will say flywheel controls the fluctuations coming from inside the engine flywheel controls the fluctuations coming from inside the engine so for that you have seen t theta diagram is coming like this this is the t theta diagram we are getting this is the t theta diagram we are getting so my dear you can see here this is coming without the use of flywheel so this is coming without the use of flywheel and if i want to find out the work done in the cycle then this area will be said to be the work done in the cycle so you can write work done in the cycle 
इज इक्वल टू इंटीग्रेशन टी डी थीटा फ्रॉम जीरो टू टू पाई तो इंटीग्रेशन टी डी थीटा फ्रॉम जीरो टू टू पाई इज गिवन एज द वर्क डन इन द साइकिल ओके बट माई डियर दिस इज वट वी आर गेटिंग विदाउट द फ्लाईवील वी वॉन्ट वेन फ्लाईवील वुड बी यूटिलाइज फ्लाईवील मस्ट डू समथिंग बिकॉज ऑफ विच टोर्क बिकेम कॉन्स्टेंट सो वी वॉन्ट ए कॉन्स्टेंट टोर्क फ्रॉम द फ्लाईवील सो फ्रॉम द फ्लाईवील वी नीड दैट द टोर्क मस्ट बिकम कॉन्स्टेंट एंड वी आर कॉलिंग दिस एज मीन टोर्क सो वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग द वर्क डन इन द साइकिल in the terms of mean torque as t mean into 4 pi because we do not want to increase the work done from the flywheel we are not saying to the flywheel please increase work done no we want the same work done at the constant torque so this is what we are getting without flywheel this is what we are getting without flywheel and this is what we are getting what we are expecting from the flywheel This is what we are expecting from the flywheel. Is it clear, Ganesh? Are you getting it? And my dear, when flywheel is going to work for us, in reality, flywheel is not going to give us the green curve. In reality, flywheel is going to give us the red curve. Means flywheel is just reducing the fluctuation, not completely eliminating that. Yes. Is it clear for everyone? okay 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 so this is pi this is 2 pi so for double acting yes for double acting is it clear whether it is 2 pi or 4 pi for double acting it is 2 pi or 4 pi please tell me that 2 pi only for double acting 2 pi only 4 pi will be coming for ic engines okay manas you got it teju you got it Yes, two pi only. Four pi will be coming only for the IC engines, for four stroke IC engine. I feel you got it. Now, my dear, you know both the work done are equal. So T mean into two pi is equals to integration T into d theta from zero to two pi. So, my dear, from here we can also find out Ganesh. What is your doubt? Uh, constant fluctuation will result into vibration the system yes that is why we don't want fluctuations that is why we wanted some device to control vibrations so my dear tm will be coming out to be 1 by 2 pi into integration 0 to 2 pi td theta so this will be the value of mean torque this will be the value of mean torque is it clear for everyone please tell me that is it clear for everyone please tell me that yes when torque will be doubled speed will be half but that we will see at the time of governor for the timing this is what we are expecting mean torque will be 1 by 2 pi work done in the cycle you can also write it as work done in the cycle divided by 2 pi this is how we are going to define it so my dear you get to know one thing that mean torque is what we are expecting and this blue line what we are getting without the flywheel okay yes so my dear you can see here the requirement is this much but we are getting this much it means some fluctuation is the, is there here the requirement is this much but we are getting this much so this is the fluctuation here the requirement is this much but we are getting this much so there is a fluctuations so any deviation from the mean line is shown as deviation positive and negative sign are showing the deviations okay so my dear if you see the summation of all the positive areas will be equal to summation of all the negative areas but why this will happen the reason behind the equal area of positive and negative is that is that we are saying the total work done is equal whether we are calculating about t mean or you are calculating with the original torque that is why all positive areas will be equals to the negative area so we can say that energy is conserved 
एनर्जी इज कंजर्व अबाउट टी मीन लाइन बिकॉज ऑफ दैट वी विल बी गेटिंग सम वर्क डन आफ्टर एवरी साइकिल प्लीज टेल मी एवरीबडी इज गेटिंग इट और नॉट देन वी विल मूव फर्दर प्लीज टेल मी दैट एवरीबडी गोट इट और नॉट प्लीज टेल मी दैट यस so guys just do like and share the session we are moving further once again is it clear for everyone very good ganesh bahut hi badhiya bahut hi badhiya guys so my dear we have already seen these things now we are going to define some things like you know that when we are going to get this extra energy when we are going to get this extra energy what is going to happen because of that let us say my dear this is our crank shaft and let us say this is rotating at some speed of 600 rpm so my dear now let us say some power stroke is happening some extra energy is coming so when this extra energy is coming the speed is going to increase from 600 to 2000 rpm so how this is increasing whatever the uh, let us say 200 joules are coming so this energy is going to be stored in the form of rotational kinetic energy because crank shaft cannot store in the other form so as the energy will come the speed will start increasing so my dear because of this energy when this energy will come here the speed will be maximum but when this negative energy will come here the speed will be minimum so we would be having variation of speed here we will get minimum speed here we will get maximum speed so speed will increase after every power stroke and decrease after every those kind of stroke which are not producing the power so if that is the case going to happen in case of ic engine you can feel better let us say you are going to have a crank shaft you know when we are talking about an ic engine what is going to happen this is the piston in the suction stroke we are taking our piston back because from outside we want fuel air mixture to come in for that we need to produce vacuum so that the so that the air fuel mixture can come in so we are reducing the pressure we are taking the we are taking the piston back we are doing the work which is a negative work done that is why if initially crank shaft is moving at 600 rpm in the suction stroke it is going to spend some energy because of this its speed reaches to 500 rpm okay in the suction stroke then my dear when the suction stroke will be over now the upcoming air fuel mixture needs to be compressed that compression would once again will be done by us we are going to do some work done so whatever the work done we are doing crank shaft would be giving that because of that the speed will further reduce to 300 rpm let us say okay now my dear you know combustion will happen power stroke will come because of that a lot of energy will come and once again the speed will be reaching to 700 rpm in the power stroke okay then my dear once again exhaust will come where outside gases needs to be taken out exhaust gases needs to be taken out once again we are doing the work so because of that my dear because of that my dear because of that my dear speed will once again reduce because some work would be going from the system so we will once again reach to 600 rpm so in one cycle speed changes from 600 to 300 and 300 to 600 even i will say the change is happening from 300 to 700 300 to 700 700 to 300 this is one of the example i have taken so in one revolution this is going to happen so if if something is rotating with 1000 rpm so my dear you can see how many times this changes will happen 600 rpm how many times this changes will happen so this is why the fluctuations are coming okay so my dear these fluctuations are coming because of energy variation i feel everybody got this so my dear it means all the time speed is changing so we are going to define coefficient of fluctuation of speed as n maximum minus n minimum divided by n mean okay it is written here so this is how we define coefficient of fluctuation of speed it is delta n by n mean then my dear similarly you would be having at higher speed the energy would also be maximum and is given by half i omega max square and at minimum speed we will be having the minimum energy as half i omega minimum ka square 
सो माई डियर वी कैन डिफाइन को एफिशियंट ऑफ फ्लक्चुएशन ऑफ एनर्जी टू बी चेंज ऑफ एनर्जी डिवाइडेड बाई वर्क डन इन साइकिल और यू कैन ऑल्सो राइट इट डेल्टा ई बाई मीन एनर्जी सो दीज आर दर्म डिफाइंड फॉर द न्यूमेरिकल पर्पज and everybody would be aware that the mean speed is given as n max plus n minimum by 2 everybody is got it please tell me that so any deviation from the mean line are said to be the fluctuations like if this is the mean line this is positive fluctuation this is negative fluctuation so please tell me everybody got it then we are moving further so this is for the ic engine what we were talking about for the suction stroke we have seen it is going like this why initially it is coming negative because you are providing some suction because of that the pressure is getting reduced and reducing the atmospheric pressure after that the upcoming mixture is increasing the pressure compression is negative you know that you are in, you are providing the work done in power stroke we are getting the work because it is work done is coming work done is done by the system then in exhaust once again we are doing the work so this is the t theta diagram for the this is the t theta diagram for ic engine for four stroke ic engine so here work done is defined as 0 to 4 pi okay 0 to 4 pi pi suction pi compression pi power pi exhaust it is 0 to 4 pi td theta so you can find out the work done from here i have confusion in question when he gives energy value that is which value we have to take Dear, when they give energy value in general, it is the वैसे तो ये mean होती है, but better I would be able to explain by looking at the question. So don't worry in the practice session I am going to take a lot of question from flywheel because now the questions would be only from three topics: simple mechanism, velocity acceleration, and flywheel. Uh, only these three topics questions would be there. Okay, actually there are five topics, but I am saying them in the three ones. so my dear this is the total work done in the cycle so teju don't worry today in the practice session your confusion will automatically be sort out so my dear this is the mean torque if we are saying we can also write it as t mean into 4 pi so in the same way we can define t mean as work done in a cycle divided by 4 pi so we can also write it as we can also write it as 1 by 4 pi into 0 to 4 pi t d theta i feel everybody is aware of that okay so let us move further guys let us move further so we have seen this now we are talking about a uh, energy equation energy equation you know we can write delta e to be e max minus e min e max minus e min then my dear we can write delta e to be 1 by 2 i omega maximum ka square minus 1 by 2 i omega minimum ka square so my dear in that case we can write delta e to be 1 by 2 into i and we can write omega maximum minus omega minimum into omega maximum plus omega minimum then my dear we can also write delta e to be 1 by 2 i 1 by 2 i we can divide this omega max minus omega min by omega mean and we can also if we are dividing it we need to multiply also max plus mean into omega min you know that this omega max plus mean divided by 2 is also omega mean so you would be getting this to be i omega mean square and this value is cs so we are getting delta e to be i omega mean square cs so my dear this equation which i have just written delta e to be i omega mean square cs this is said to be the fundamental equation of flywheel every year questions are coming from that only uh no actually dear when they ask you the relation then you can say it is c is two times cs okay then you can say that but in general in questions we are not using them so when we are saying delta e is i omega mean square cs it is fine yes so when we are writing this i omega mean square cs here i is defined as m k square where k is the radius of gyration k is the radius of gyration 
k is the radius of gyration and my dear there are generally uh, when we are talking about the types of flywheel there is one is said to be the rim type of flywheel rim flywheel rim type of flywheel for this this k is given as r and we are having disc type of flywheel as well for disc type of flywheel k is r by root 2 okay k is r by root 2 so you can also remember in other ways that for this i is mr square for this i is mr square by 2 is it clear for everyone is it clear for everyone please tell me that wonderful jabir if uh, gyration not given what we assume <laughs> so jabir lunch mein chale gaye the ki dinner mein yes this is the case of multi cylinder engine when we are going to have more than one cylinder in which case which one is used dear i already told you if they say rim type of flywheel then you will use mr square if they say disc type of flywheel if they say disc type of flywheel then you will use this and if you are talking about the conditions practically then rim type of flywheel can be used up to 1200 rpm only up to 1200 rpm and disc type of flywheel can be used for lakhs of rpm okay is it clear for everyone ashutosh you got it yes please tell me if nothing is mentioned you will consider it to be disc if nothing is mentioned you can consider it to be disc actually you would be finding out radius of gyration for that case okay jabir no issues you are doing it nicely with the exam you are attending that's really clear yes asutosh i told you the reason na okay reason you are talking about that we are going to prove at the end of the chapter that will be the part of design of flywheel actually okay that is the part of design of flywheel actually okay so that actually covers in the machine design part okay so if you will be attending my machine design session there design of flywheel i will be teaching you so don't worry about that okay so my dear now we are talking about the multi cylinder engine so my dear now you can see when we are using the multi cylinder engine so you know that when we have made the curve for ic engine the t theta diagram comes like this t theta diagram comes like this like this pi 2 pi 3 pi 4 pi like this let us say here you are spending 10 joules here you are spending 20 joule here you are getting 160 joule here you are spending 10 joule so in the cycle you are getting 120 joules because 40 joule is your spendings you are getting 140 joules every cycle yes jabir you are correct that we have done already but in the class uh, i was trying to have it at the end okay because design of flywheel will be covered at the end even i cover it in machine design also so minus 10 joule minus 20 joule plus 160 joule minus 10 joules this is 120 joule so this 120 joule we are getting okay so asutosh you got it or not you got it or not so what you are asking is for that we have a derivation so with that derivation you will understand it better but in between i can not go into that derivation i will cover it for sure ha hoop stress is the reason very good so jin logo ne padha hai unko yaad aa gaya so 120 joule you are getting it okay so my dear if you are going to have the four cylinder if you are going to have the four cylinder and in all the four cylinder we are going with the same trend first suction then compression then power then exhaust then you know my dear everything would be multiplied by 4 okay everything would be multiplied by 4 this minus 10 will become minus 40 this 160 will become uh, i will say uh, 400 and uh, 640 i feel so so my dear because of this this peak will also become four times this bottom will also become four times so because of this this fluctuation will also increase 
and if this is the t mean line you know more fluctuations means more need of flywheel so we would be requiring a bigger size of flywheel for such case we would be requiring a bigger size of flywheel for such case yes bhomik are you getting it or not please tell me that asutosh bhomik okay is it clear so my dear if we are going to have four cylinders then my dear everything would be multiplied by four so because of that fluctuation will increase and because of that we need to have a bigger size of flywheel so we do not want more inertia for flywheel we want to reduce it we want to reduce it so if we want to reduce this inertia my dear for that what we have thought we have thought to change the firing order what we made the plan is to change the firing order what do you mean by the change of firing order we were making a plan like this if initially we have t theta diagram for one cylinder like this then we thought for the second cylinder we will change it like first cylinder is having suction air compression air power air and, and exhaust air then we said the second cylinder would be having second cylinder would be having like in this way here that would be having the power stroke here it would be having the exhaust okay so before power we would be having compression and here it would be having the suction stroke like this so because of that you know that because of that what is going to happen now one power is here one power is here then for the third cylinder then for the third cylinder then for the third cylinder we thought power stroke would be given here before power compression before compression suction before suction is going to be exhaust then my dear we thought for the fourth cylinder for the fourth cylinder we would be giving power here and then it would be going to be exhaust then suction and then compression so now in every 0 to pi we are having all the four stroke so now my dear in every pi we are going to have plus 160 minus 10 minus 20 minus 10 overall plus 120 so now everywhere 120 120 120 120 uniformity would be achieved and now if you will make the resultant diagram it would be coming like this so this type of diagram would be coming out and if this type of diagram is coming it means fluctuations have reduced much so just by changing the position of the crank by changing the power stroke timing in the different different cylinder we achieved the reduction of size of flywheel because now fluctuations are very very less so in the multi cylinder engine if we are using the concept of concept of firing order we can definitely get this beautiful thing by changing the firing order by changing the firing order we can reduce the need of flywheel there so once the flywheel need is reduced the inertia of flywheel gets reduced many people are thinking that multi cylinder concept came into picture for the same i will say no it is not like that multi cylinder concept came because when we are talking about locomotive we need more amount of power to produce same amount of power from one cylinder it is becoming very very bulky so if we are using multi cylinder with that we are going to resolve the issues of inertia and all so when we are talking about this flywheel reduction in size that is just an extra benefit we are going to have because when we are using the multiple cylinders then my dear we want to increase the power actually okay so to increase the power we are using multi cylinder to make it this power uniform we are using the concept of multi cylinder are you getting it because my dear if you are going to add one cylinder you are going to add a lot of inertia to the system so if you already have one cylinder which is enough to produce the power we cannot add three cylinder arrangements just to reduce the mass of flywheel reduction of mass of flywheel is just an extra benefit it is like you went for the shopping into some mall where some sale was going on you said i would be purchasing 10000 rupees thing and there one person is saying if you would purchase uh, 10000 kitchen utensil and thing from me i would give you 1 kg sugar free so when you are using multi cylinder engine when you need more power you need uniformity of power 
but if you are going to change the firing order you are reducing the size of flywheel so this is just an extra benefit otherwise multi cylinder concept didn't come for the reduction of flywheel size so for the multi cylinder engine you are going to get, get this type of curves so you would be having very less reductions so when we have just derived the equation delta e is equals to i omega mean square cs you can use this equation you can use this equation is it clear jabir which statement you are talking about you can use this relation here also if we are assuming the energy at this point to be e then my dear you can write down energy at a is e energy at b is e plus now this is the area given 1 mm square so you can just add this area e plus 1 you can write energy at c will be e plus 1 minus 2 you can write energy at d to be e plus 1 minus 2 plus 1.5 likewise we can define up to energy at n point so when we are going to define the energies up to all these points okay 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 jabi sorry for that i have not seen don't worry if you uh, find uh, where i said you can tell me i can repeat it if i remember that so these are the energies we are going to say by looking at this we can find out the maximum energy then we can find out the minimum energy by subtracting we can find out delta e and here in the question it would be given that 1 mm square is equals to that much joules so when they give that you can convert that energy into joule equate it with i omega m c s you will be getting the mass of flywheel inertia of flywheel or whatever be the unknown is it clear bhomik teju ganesh everyone fine so this is how we are going to see you will get energy like this you can see which one is maximum which was in minimum i feel by looking at this we can say e plus 1 is the maximum which we are getting here also and e minus e minus 1.5 is the minimum so we can find out the delta e by e max minus e minimum okay so my dear now i feel you got it now we shall move to the next thing the last topic is punching press jobin <laughs> great so guys uh, don't worry we are going to see a lot of questions also onto that some things you would be getting from the questions as well okay so jobin uh, you were not present from some time or you were there continuously we are talking about the punching press now so my dear when we are talking about the punching press what is going to happen so in the punching press let us say you are going to have this crank you are going to have this crank this connecting rod and this would be having a punch and we are going to have a sheet like this we are going to have a sheet like this the sheet in which we want to make a hole okay i will be showing it with the different diagram like this you are having a sheet like this in which you want to produce a hole for producing that hole we are going to have a punch like this and this punch is having a correcting rod a crank okay and my dear when this crank will be rotating this punch will be going down and produce a hole and then it will come back then it will come back okay then it will come back so my dear we have seen how flywheel is going to work okay no issues sir where we multiple of losses in power loss case explain in this where we multiply of losses okay no issues i am telling you now once again so my dear first of all we must know how flywheel is working so you are having this crankshaft you are having this crankshaft 
फर्स्ट टू फोल पावर स्ट्रोक हैपन विच हैव गिवन अस 160 जूल ऑफ एनर्जी इनिशियली इट वाज रोटेटिंग एट 600 आरपीएम बिकॉज ऑफ दिस 160 जूल्स द स्पीड वेंट टू 2000 आरपीएम ओके दिस इज विदाउट फ्लाई व्हील देन माय डियर इन द एग्जॉस्ट स्ट्रोक 10 जूल वेंट because of that speed reduced to 1800 rpm okay then my dear in the compression stroke 20 joule went because of this said speed reduced to 1200 rpm let us say then my dear in the suction stroke once again let us say 12 joule is spent because of this speed reduced to 600 rpm so you can see the variation of 600 to 2000 to 600 is happening when we are not using the flywheel now my dear what is the concept of flywheel we say that we would be having a heavy body which is flywheel and we will be keeping this flywheel over the over the crankshaft now what will happen previously this 160 joule was stored by half i of crankshaft into omega square now the same 160 would be stored by half i of crankshaft plus i of flywheel into omega square as both are one body both will be rotating with the same speed so that is why my dear 160 is equals to half i of cs plus i of flywheel into omega square as this value have been increased definitely my dear because of that now the fluctuation will reduce previously if we were reaching to 2000 now we will be reaching only 2000 previously we were having a reduction of 200 now we would be having a reduction of 100 here we were having a reduction of 600 we may be having the reduction of 200 and from here once again you will reach to 600 so previously we were going for 600 to 2000 now we are going for 600 to 1000 this is what flywheel is doing for us but how flywheel is doing it for us when energy is coming flywheel is storing some energy when when energy is going flywheel is giving some energy but how flywheel stores energy by increasing its speed how flywheel gives the energy by reducing its speed in suction compression power exhaust i am telling you ganesh these are not there in the punching machine ruko teju we will come to that also we will come to that also this is i am telling you the use of flywheel before punching press this is not punching press this is the normal use now i am telling you what is happening in the punching press case now we will see what is going to happen in the punching press case so what is going to happen in punching press i am telling you punching press we are going to have a motor that motor is having a power rating of p it is rotating at some speed and giving the power and my dear it is rotating for complete cycle time so it is giving some energy e1 this is the energy supplied by the motor e1 now my dear what is going to happen when this entire rotation is going to happen the cutting will happen only for a particular angle like whenever this punch is moving from this to this position only in that cutting is going to take place so out of the complete 2 pi rotation out of the complete 2 pi rotation cutting is happening hardly in delta theta angle so this delta theta angle divided by 2 pi angle this ratio is equals to the time of punching but a time of cycle time this ratio is also equals to the energy provided by energy provided by the motor in the punching time to the energy provided by the motor in the cycle time so my dear if you ask me what is the energy supplied by motor in the cycle time it is power into cycle time what is the energy provided by the motor in the punching time it is power rating into punching time okay so this is the total energy supplied this is the energy supplied during the punching time so what is going to happen let us take an example till now you were taking money from your parents and now you got a job after getting a job you thought you thought after getting a job that from now onward i will be giving a i will be giving gift to my parents and you thought 
After one year of job, I will be giving a car to my parents. And that car cost 12 lakh rupees. So you want to give this in 12 months. So every month you need to, you need to save 1 lakh rupees. So what you have done, your salary was 1.5 lakh per month. So you are getting 1.5 lakh. You are putting 1 lakh into the bank. 1 lakh into the bank. Okay. For 11 months. For 11 months, you would be putting 1 lakh into the bank. And in the 12th month, in the 12th month, what you will do? You will take this 11 lakh from the bank and put your 1 lakh into this and purchase the car of the 12 lakh. So here also, out of total E1, during the punching time only we are going to require the more energy. So at this 12th month you are not going to give your salary to the bank. You are going to use this salary with the 11 lakh of the bank. So here also during the cycle time whatever energy is coming from the motor except punching time flywheel is storing the energy because flywheel is acting like a bank. In the 12th month, in the punching time, what is going to happen? In the punching time, in the punching time, in TP time, what is going to happen? E2 energy will be coming from the motor. Plus, E1 minus E2 which is stored in the flywheel. Why E1 minus E2 is stored in the flywheel? Because flywheel is storing the energy for which time? Cycle time minus punching time. And cycle time minus punching time into power rating is nothing but E1 minus E2. So this energy will be provided by flywheel. Total will become E1 which is nothing but power into the cycle time. Please tell me now the story is clear to everyone or not. How you are going to give the gift of a car to your parents. Please tell me you got the story or not. This is a wonderful story. I always used to make you understand. So my dear E1 is the energy from motor in cycle time. E2 is the energy from motor in the punching time. Please tell me that. Ha Jabir definitely kar sakte hai and I will be taking one question from that as well. Okay. I will take that question. But question I am not taking in this session. Question will be there in the night midnight session. Okay. So my dear now you have seen this. E2 by E1. Is it clear for everyone? Is it clear for everyone? So this ratio should be equal. This ratio can also be written as, this ratio can also be written as, you know that one thing. This is E2 by E1, Tp by T cycle, delta theta by 2 pi. And you also know that when cutting is going to happen for the thickness of plate, so P divided by 2 times of length of stroke. Okay, length of stroke is going and coming back. And LS length of stroke is 2 times of radius of crank. So you can also write it as P by 4R. So everybody is getting it. How the things are going to happen? Please tell me that. Please tell me that. Yes. Jabir, I am going to repeat it. What I said is, what I said is, what I said is, E1 is the total energy stored, total energy provided by the motor. Power into cycle time. Then power into punching time is E2. Okay. So if cycle time is 5 second, punching time is 1 second. So for the 4 second energy would be stored by the flywheel. Energy would be stored by the flywheel for the 4 second and in the 5th second energy would be coming from flywheel plus motor together will be doing the punching because we need energy only at the time of punching. Array in the 12th month you want to give gift then whatever you have saved in 11th month will be taken out from the bank and whatever the salary you are getting in your hand that would be mixed up and will be resulting into a car. Is it clear now? Is it clear now? 
Is it clear now, guys, for everyone? Great. Great for everyone. So, guys, this is the flywheel in the punching press. Now, my dear, one more question which was coming from your side is related to what? Yes, Chaitu, wonderful. So, there was one more issue which was coming from your side is related to the, related to the speed. Yes, am I correct? So, my dear, whenever you are going to use the rim type of flywheel, whenever we are going to use the rim type of flywheel, actually, whenever we are going for the designing purpose, what we get to know is, we are going to get is the maximum velocity has to be less than equals to density by sigma maximum or sigma permissible. Please tell me, am I correct or not? This is coming from the derivation. So, I am doing this Asutosh for you. It is sigma permissible. Am I correct or not? Please tell me that. Very good, Jobin. Is it correct or not? Please tell me that. So, we are getting this. V can be written as R into omega. Less than equals to this value. So, my dear... For rim type of flywheel, we are having all the material at maximum radius. That is why the speed is restricted to 1200 RPM. Okay. But my dear, when we are going for the disc type of flywheel, then material is shifted towards inside. And as material is shifted towards inside, because of that, now the radius of center of mass will reduce. R will reduce, that is why we can increase the omega because the restriction is on the product. So that is why disc type of flywheel can be, can be run for lakhs of RPM. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It is sigma permissible. Bhai, mujhe lag raha hai ki aap log jeet gaye, main aap se pehle thak gaya. <laughs> sigma max by rho. Yes, now it is fine. Now it is fine. Yes. Uh, Teju, when we are going to say number of holes, for number of holes, you will be using cycle time. For number of holes, you would be using cycle time. Is it clear for everyone? Is it clear for everyone? Okay. So my dear, with this, we have completed the flywheel. Questions we will see in the night. Now just listen to me properly. I am saying you something, you need to tell me any change if you want. So now we would be having Tom 2, where we will start with Governor, Cam, Gyroscope, Gear, Balancing. Then we will have Vibration plus machine design. Okay. Will it be clear for everyone? Are 60 by N means what? 60 by N. That is mentioned. I feel if they are saying in second or minute. Based on that, we are going for 60 or not. Okay, Teju, do one thing. I will be taking 4-5 questions on flywheel in the midnight session. There, your doubts will be cleared automatically. Because whatever you are asking, you can ask better by the questions. Okay? Yes. Will it be fine for everyone? Sorry for the inconvenience you got today and thanks for your lovely response. 
so guys uh, today we are not moving further so first of all i would like to say uh, ha midnight mein ajay we will try to keep uh, 20 questions 15 to 20 questions okay fine so guys before leaving do like and share the session and i want the same response like i got today in these two sessions if you will give the same response in these two i will be taking material science in one go as well because if i will take material science in one go it will hardly take 4 to 5 hours and it may confirm your marks because sometime material science may come for 2 to 4 marks also okay you can see in 2019 it came so who knows nobody knows everybody can predict only okay so why to go with prediction when in 4 hours we can resolve our purpose okay sure 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 so guys once again i will say thanks for your wonderful response i'm really happy to see you all there and we are going to meet once again and uh, tonight we are going to have midnight session and tonight i will tell you about the schedule for these two sessions as well i will tell you the detail of these two sessions tonight okay and i will try to keep it on weekend so that everyone can attend okay we will try for that okay so we will meet tonight again i will try to keep that session at 11:30 goodbye guys do revise this we will have only the topic from question from those topic which we have covered thanks for that uh, lovely response uh, very good bhomik shashank jabir ganesh ajay uh, midun navin malesh umar ganesh uh, teju i wanted to take everyone's name who were there bhomik yes so thanks guys for your lovely response and we will meet at midnight session again goodbye guys thanks for joining bye shreyas yes